I can't bring myself to regret the decision to leave home. This will be a good thing, I think. Meet Bella Swan. She's the newest student at Forks High. Nice ride. Hey, you're from Arizona, right? Whoa! Aren't people from Arizona supposed to be, like, really tan? Bella, look. It's a worm. It's a worm. <laughs> Just when she was about to give up on finding new friends. Who's he? That's Edward Cohen. <laughs> totally gorgeous. She met Edward, the hottest boy in school. Tell me more about your school. Are there any cute guys? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Bella is hoping to get Edward's attention. <clears throat> Things are off to a rough start. Oh my God. <laughs> but Edward is more than just a pretty face. He's also got a big secret. You were smart, but stay away from me. Yeah, because Cohen's a freak. You got that right. Okay, well, let's take for argument's sake that I'm not smart. Did you tell me the truth? No, probably not. Until the day their lives came crashing together. How did you get over to me so fast? You stopped the van. I had an adrenaline rush. It's very common. You can Google it. You know what you are? Vampire. I want to kill you. I don't care. You know, everybody's staring. Not that guy. Uh, you no, know, he just like. I have a date with Edward Cullen. All right. Bring him in. I'm gonna take you to my place tomorrow. Here comes the human. Robert Pattinson. What? Kristen Stewart. I can't dance. And Anna Kendrick in the romantic comedy about love at first bite. Twilight. All right, everybody. What is going on out there? Episode 204 is always coming at you live. I feel like we haven't even left the studio since last week. Let me explain. I feel like Dave Z got really, really old and decided he needed to go take a nap. We finally kicked Jeremy the fuck out of here, replaced him with Dave, and Lacey stuck around with me and JP. What is going on, everybody? Well, first of all, <laughs> This this is this is a Valentine's Day special episode. <laughs> is that what this is going to be for? See, I don't well, I don't, I don't celebrate, celebrate Valentine's, Valentine's Day than is, talk about something like you absolutely yeah, and I, hate. And I'm married Can too. Can I just say that I'm very happy to be back uh, recording with you, Whispering Eyes? Right. Awesome. <laughs> well, welcome <laughs> we back, Lacey. Welcome eyes. back. Welcome back to the show, man. It was. Uh, I thought the uh, the show went really well until you f just pulled a phantom at the end of the show last week. That was. Oh, interesting fuck. you ghosted no, us man you, you you like we literally were joking about it you're like man Lacey got sucked into the uh into the tunnel into the fucking uh, ghost dimension it's crazy I, no i literally like closed my eyes for like two fucking seconds and i woke up and i was like my you head didn't have to admit that they didn't <laughs> but now I do. But, now, but now we can call you mike merriman jr right no no, like, okay, so, like, my hours <laughs> at work have changed, so I'm on a completely different schedule, so I've never done that before. It was, like, literally, like, two seconds, and, like, I was sitting up forward for, like, six hours, you guys, like, just hunched over, like, the computer, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna rest my back for a second, so, like, I leaned back, and, you know, I think Jeremy was probably talking, and he just bored me to death, so... <laughs> So that's, I just that's closed a, my eyes. Killed you. Well, I mean, in your defense, Lacey, I mean, we at that point had been recording for seven, seven and a half hours. Like we'd been on Skype for that long. So, I mean, it was a long night. So, I mean. But the yeah. thing is, like, I woke up and like my headphones were still on and I looked in and it said call ended. I was like, what the fuck? So I messaged JP. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, I closed my eyes for like two seconds. <laughs> and. Um, he was like, oh, we thought you just uh, lost internet connection or something. And I was like, oh, no. I, I mean, the fuck out. I was like, it, did I snore? <laughs> no, that was the no, thing. Like, didn't I, I didn't even, yo, know, like, we totally didn't hear, like, that's why we thought you got sucked into the ghost dimension because there was literally no sign of Lacey anywhere. It's not I like wish the time. There was video. It, it's not like the time that Mike, I, I remember, I'll never forget, I remember the movie I was doing, but we were doing a What We Watched review or whatever, and all of a sudden I could hear the snoring. Like, that's how bad Merriman is on. It was fucking was, crazy. Was I not on that show? Uh, no, no, you were on there. Because remember, I started out with the show with the sample of us talking in between. <laughs> I'm like, that was a real fucking snore. And you're like, yeah, he's fucking oh snoring on the show. Oh, my God, yeah. Right? Because it was like literally in the middle of the show. It was just hilarious, man. But yeah, you, you just ghosted us, yeah. man. 
Yeah, no, I don't. Well, I feel like I wasn't asleep for very long. I feel like yeah. I just like kind of nodded out. Um, cause like I said, my work hours have changed, so I'm working three hours earlier, so I'm not sleeping in as late as I normally would. So I was probably, and I only had like four hours of sleep. Yeah. Right. I'm fucking right. dead. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, so and now I you're going to be so known as Eminem 2.0. Mike Merriman 2.0. So, no. no, I am not Mike Merriman. Eminem 2.0. It's great. <laughs> no. no, I'm LL. Okay. Um, one, one time, me, I don't think I'll ever fall asleep on a show. Like, me and Jeremy went 24 hours straight once and didn't fall asleep. And if I could do that, I think I, I could... almost did on 200. I'm not going to lie, but I didn't. <clears throat> yeah, but you also wake up at like 3 a.m. Yeah. Was... I did not mean to do it, and I felt so bad. But then you're like, oh, we, you were only gone for like five minutes. The rating. So... It was like literally the rating. <laughs> yeah. So I was did like, did you rate Tokyo, the Tokyo Nights? She uh, sent it to me privately. It was four and a half out of five uh, out of ten. Four point really. five, and I think that was like me in like my sleepwalking state because that movie fucking blows. Yeah, dude, that one was that was vile. That was vile for the for the eyes. It was bad. Like I felt like four point five is really generous. Like I didn't even get to mention the part to where like how they change it from salt from you know the flour, and it yeah. really just looks like. Uh, you know, a gust of wind pushes it over. It's not even done as effectively. So you know what? I'll give you my rating right now, and it's a fucking two. Two. Oh, you came yeah, in. You came in vicious. You came in vicious. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that changes anything. I don't think that in makes a whole of... pain. Yeah, I don't think so. Because I think I was well, the lowest before at a four. Yeah. So the lowest, uh, basically the three lowest ratings, if they equal under a nine point five or under, it yeah. makes a hollow paint, right? Yeah. So no one right. had a three and a half. Oh. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> we might have some hollow painters tonight. Uh, I don't no. know. <laughs> you know, speaking of this, uh, yeah. So as everyone knows, that's clicked onto this episode, we are obviously tackling the Twilight franchise, and I just want to, I just want to stress it out there because sometimes we kind of forget. Like even last week, I don't even think I mentioned that the Paranormal Activity franchise was, um, you know, given to us on the Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the case this week too. It's not like we went out of our ways to actually decide willingly to do the uh, the um, the Twilight franchise. As you guys know, this is, doesn't really fit the format of the show, but well. We probably made a mistake, honestly, because yeah, yeah. we did. Here, here's the thing: we did, we made a major um, mistake because I think this is going to turn. This is actually going to. This is really going to show a lot of true colors. <laughs> like we're not always <laughs> honest, right? Give me a fucking break. No, it, so, it just it honestly, I think the biggest problem or the biggest mistake we made is that it doesn't fit our format. Our format of our show is horror and exploitation, right? This right. this doesn't fall into horror. this. That's no. the problem. No, yeah, they have and, vampires and werewolves, and in the loosest sense of horror like okay maybe you could say well they have well, these are things dramas. in them these are dramas it's, they're romances they're 13 yeah, 13 drama romance, romance. It, you know that's every category I, yeah can i can i say something before we start like oh, i've one always sec. Right. one sec let me i just want to get this out so i don't forget this show was picked by taylor um and taylor uh Is i that... think she likes it's a girl okay um she i think she likes these movies um she was <laughs> her first debut on the patreon was given jeremy dick shark so she either likes them and wanted to hear what we had to say about them or she just wanted to hear us suffer and we it, when she first gave it i said i was like oh we're not doing that <laughs> it, like you know we, we give her we'll tell her we won't take her money we, you know we'll give it back if she already paid or whatever and then jeremy Jeremy was kind of championing the idea, and oh. then Moods kind of just haphazardly agreed to do it. So did I, because I didn't even think about it. Right. I, I think I was the most person that didn't think that, because I, you guys hadn't seen them. I had seen the first two, and I was like, they're not horror films. You know what I mean? Like, I think maybe you guys might have thought they. Yeah, but Jeremy was so excited about it. Like, he was like, oh, I was going, Ooh. and then just like Jeremy <laughs> loves to be miserable. So he like thrives on complaining. We don't. <laughs> Right. So he like needs to complain to live. We don't. We hate it. It hurts me. <laughs> right. And and the thing is, is like Jeremy was so gung ho about doing these things and right. and he's not even here. He's not even here. It, now, it, it's hurting he my soul. Work. He, and he, he didn't did even have... watch him and then he bitched at us for complaining about watching him. Like, you guys are being pussies. And he didn't even watch him. That's like No, him he said like... pansy. He actually had the balls to call you a pansy. <laughs> 
and then and then like I was I wasn't really saying much in there because I was like, I well, I'll just leave it for the Chicago show. Chicago and power bombed them through three tables. I'm like, Jeremy, you're the biggest pussy that we know, and you're calling people pansies. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, can we just say ugh. this about this? So this goes against everything I would want to do. Like normally, like I'm the guy who makes fun of pe- grown men when they're like, "That new Turtles movie sucks." It's like, dude, that bro, that's for kids. Shut the fuck up. Don't it's, watch. It's it. like these grown ass men. It's like turtles. these grown ass men yeah. that fucking love Taylor Swift and shit, man. Like, are you Stop. fucking kidding me? No, but, but but I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> I, honestly, I like Taylor Swift. <laughs> these movies <laughs> are for me. <laughs> these movies aren't for me. I never wanted to talk about these movies. I've always stuck up for people. I'm like, dude, I don't know why grown men are complaining about the Twilight movies. I would never watch these movies. They're, I'm not the target audience. So yeah. I have no constructive criticism or, or intelligent input to say about these films. Yeah, yeah. So it's completely counterproductive for me to even talk about them. It's a complete waste of your time, my time, and the world's time. And I'm sorry that we're going to have to do this. I'm sorry I'm going to sound like a complete jackass old man get off my lawn. I don't like teenage <laughs> angst, and it's not because it's aimed at little girls or like teenage girls, okay? I don't like teenage angst. I don't even like the early fast and the furious movies i hate teenage angst and fucking lame fake t- testosterone stuff wow. i can't stand that stuff i never liked it i don't like it i never will like it i don't yeah. even think i could watch dark shadows it's just not something i fucking like i can't stand it so i always avoided it because i don't like to be negative but now i'm here because i'm stupid yeah, yeah the, the biggest problem for me here. man the demographic here is like completely not for me i'm fucking 40 years old i'm married with kids and shit like that like these movies I'm, when twilight I came out like but these movies came out when you were like the what, first 30? the first one came out when i was 28 i was already married still way out of i own i own i i, I, I my life i was in the second i was in the second part of my life like i bought a house i was married by this time like i was you know i was growing up and shit like you know and, and i will say you know going to these movies i was super super green like i always heard about you know the twilight was always associated with sparkly vampires i always yeah. thought that that meant that they had they wore sparkles like that's just how i took it <laughs> Because I, that's how green I was going into this franchise. And I was like, they wear sparkles? I'm like, that's fucked. Whatever. But I knew literally nothing about this franchise. And then I find out what the sparkle thing is. And I'm like, it's even worse than I thought, man. It's stupid. No. <laughs> these, were, okay. these were worse than I thought they were. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But l- let me just say that this as well. about It's just a dumb thing with the vampires. Films. So one of the reasons why this particular franchise ha- has been lumped into horror so much. And it was talked about so much. Going back to when these came out, like even on YouTube, like in the horror community, they were brought up a lot. And the reason why is someone who really remembers that era because it was when everything was so fresh and interesting to me. I didn't realize there was a horror community and I was like just soaking in everything that I could. The, The big reason why is because websites like Bloody Disgusting and Dread Central and Fangoria and stuff they covered this stuff and i remember them getting constant complaints about it and they're like dude these are numbers are higher than they've ever been <laughs> you, you know what i mean money 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 well that's because yeah. the, the demographic for these were probably clicking it wasn't it wasn't right us. It, it wasn't horror people that were no. finding the the websites right. it was you know the, the these were very popular movies so of course it was just random people coming in that were looking for information about the movies anything that's but, based off novels and stuff you know you look at the harry potter books and it became movies and shit okay. i mean they were already super super huge within that demographic and then the movies came out they were a sure hit of course they were going to make all seven eight stories whatever that's what happened here the books were popular you got to make the fucking movies the demographic was already there it was it was a sure thing right well i i was in in like 11th grade when these movies came out the first one and yeah. i remember it just Jesus being this Christ. massive 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 thing like every i remember people wearing twilight shirts and like all these girls wearing twilight shirts and like obsessed with edward and jacob and stuff like that and you couldn't avoid the shit it was everywhere like i went over to my boy's house and his like cousin is is telling us about like to watch these movies so we watched it and it, and we were just like ah, i mean it what like we didn't think it was like horrible or anything but um yeah it was it was just so big at the time and again it, it is target demographic like teen girls okay like, so for sure okay so I, I, I want lacy phenomenon i want lacy to you know i mean because she's the female on here and this is more it may not be her demographic i'm not even sure how low old lacy is actually be honest but how old were you when this first came out she's my age okay um uh actually it's kind of a cool story because 
Um, I'd read the book, uh, the first one anyways, uh, and then the movie was coming out. So I'd already read the first book Mm -hmm. and I had the image of these characters painted in my head. And this was like 2007 when I read the book. So I was 19 when I read it and then 19 or 20, somewhere around there. But the uh, movie came out, uh, actually on November 21st and my birthday is November 22nd. So I literally made like 15 people go see uh this movie so then uh we went to the eight o'clock showing or like the 9 30 showing i should say so that way we would have enough time that would space it out and then we could go to the casino at midnight right as i turned 21 so nice. um but i made everybody go to dinner and then i made everybody go fucking see this movie <laughs> hmm. i love it and so you were That's so like- you were like 21 when you were watching this. okay that's interesting. I, was, I used you to were, make you people watch shot on video movies, so I used to make people watch shot on video movies. So I don't. When I was like what, fourteen, so what, was that common? Shitty. Was I the demographic really, I really was it common? The first novel. Um, yeah. So I was excited to see this, but the thing that like tripped me up though, like the difference with a book is like you picture characters right. in your head, mm-hmm. and the thing is, I never once ever pictured anybody looking like Kristen Stewart as Bella. <laughs> Like right. it was completely somebody else. Well, that, somebody that probably had a soul. I've had that happen to me many times. I've read tons of books and I watched the, you know, the um, adaptations and I, it's just so different. It's actually hard to, because your, 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 um, your mind is just so vivid, right? You, you always paint yeah. that picture and it always sticks with you. And then you watch the adaptations. You're like, man, it's never the same. I mean, there's been a, the, the odd occasion where I've watched an adaptation of a book and I've been like, wow, that was kind of close to what I was fucking thinking, man. That's pretty crazy. But I, I know exactly what you're thinking, man. Was it common for 20, 21 year old girls to be like really into this? Cause I, I just always thought the demographic to these movies was definitely ba- like at a younger crowd, like, you know, still in, te- oh, right. still, a soccer teen. Moms. still no, a teen, still a teen. I definitely, like 40 year I definitely old remember. I mean, I was kind of like it. on the cusp of it. Of okay. the age. That's what I thought. I thought the majority of the demographic was in high school because it was based on these kids that were still in high school, even though they were technically kind of seniors and stuff, but well, when I read the book, I mean, I was like, I think I said 19. So I was still in my teen years when I read it. So right. I was kind of excited to see it as a, you know, 20, 21 year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the funny part about it was two people in my party actually fell asleep during it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I actually Honestly, read the original, the first book as well. What? Um, oh, JP, was... you did not read the fucking no, book. I swear to... No, I, I you didn't. Still own it, you fact. definitely um, listened to the book on tape. Why? You no, listened no, to no, the. I, I, mean, I, read... I know that, like, I read it and shit. I'm just like confused to the point of not knowing you well enough to why you would have read it. <laughs> Honestly, it. I just was trying to see what the what everybody was fucking talking about, and I had seen the movie before I read the book. That's where we differ, Mara, because I never care enough like if if i have a person like, I, I don't need i don't need if, to know like, what fuss is i'm close with are into something you know what i mean like i don't care yeah, if it's i don't even care right, i don't so even care at that point man. if i'm not into something i'm not into it like His every grandma. fucking girl that i was friends with in high school your grandpa liked the book didn't yeah he? see i mean it probably helped that like my <laughs> demographic we were all like pushing 30 years old when this shit was coming like not one of us was ever thinking of tackling a like Twilight 16, book or a movie. Man. You know, it just wasn't happening. Exactly. So you're a definitely at a different time. Yeah, there's you no different way demographic. And, and dude, so. look, it's I'm, just... not, I'm not like one of these like fucking, like I watched Degrassi growing up, bro. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not a fucking But Degrassi like, was aimed, I was actually the same age as that when that shit was, you know, on in the, well, you know, late the, 80s or the, 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 the 80s version. Yeah. He's this talking about the 80s like, version. Like, no, I'm talking about the original Degrassi. People fucking worried about like I'm not worried about people questioning your masculinity if you watch something like this. I don't give a flying fuck. No, no, honestly. no, it's totally not. Oh, your sexuality, it's, it's, your masculinity, your intelligence. It's an interest like level for I'm me. Like. I don't yeah, care. But. Exactly. And I, and I, I just always felt like I don't need to, like, I don't need, like, I honestly, they, I always stress that I'm like, I don't give a fuck what people like and dislike at all. And like, I know what I like and what I'm into. And, and I feel like, me. this isn't for Dude, me. If exa- I like these movies, you guys would give me so much shit. Don't pretend you wouldn't. Yeah, because your ratings. Then I would have to question all your ratings. I'd be like, but, "Oh, so you gave that killers on the phone a fucking three and you're that movie sucked." Up. <laughs> no, but honestly, JP, I think you do like these films, and I will tell you why. I don't know, okay. like you haven't said your ratings yet, but I asked you, uh, you know, because I said that uh, I was podcast prepping or whatever, and I sent a photo of Bella's fucking face, <laughs> and you were like, "I'm already on three. And I was like, well, how are you well, like 
them and you purposely avoided the question so okay. that le that for some reason that leads me to believe that you actually somewhat like these films okay so the first thing yeah. is i watched these movies to get them the fuck out of the way like i did no, not I don't buy it i 100 percent did like i was just so I knew that if I, because I do this thing where I'll save like three movies for like Thursday night, and then <laughs> I'll have to watch all three of them. I was like, I will probably end up dead if I if I do that. So I saw Dave was watching them fast. I was like, I'm gonna just watch them fast and then watch what I want for the rest. I of was the so week. mad when I was watching them, and then when I was done, it was like a great weight was lifted off my chest. And see, and Lacey, second... Lacey's looking into it how I was looking at it because JP always is a procrastinator when it comes to prep yep. for shows. He always 100%. watches multiple shows the night before, if not right before the show and i'm talking literally right. 50 we've been waiting for him to finish movies while we're online <laughs> waiting for him to record right. this motherfucker 100%. goes out of his way and he's done all five movies before i even watch like the first one i'm like this is fucked is he that excited to watch this shit or what like what's going I on i say jp's so lazy he forgets the breeze sometimes well, no. right? <laughs> he, he, here's another reason right i also i also was able to watch them at work and to me watching them at work was that makes it easy. A, a, an easier thing yeah. because it's like I didn't feel like I was wasting. Wait a minute. You were getting double paid. You're getting paid by Patreon. <laughs> then you're getting paid to watch these. You got double pay. Right. I got double life. paid. And, and the way that That's I – the funny. way And the thing me and Dave were talking about in the chat is like – He's so pissed that he he wasted you know set, ten, what, hours. ten hours ten hours seven hours movies from 05. That's seven movies I won't get to see because I watch the Twilight movies that aren't made for me. <laughs> right, but but me, I'm at work and I'm getting paid to to be at work. Yeah, I love that. And I'm like, I watch okay, those with a smile. It on didn't my face. feel like a waste of time. And, and and honestly, like even if I wasn't, I don't I don't think these would have been a, a waste of time for me personally. Like I don't. What honestly like they, they they didn't offend me as much as they did you well, guys well, they I guess, didn't really but... add as much to the werewolf and, and vampire mythology that could help me discussing horror films because i watch a lot of old right. like gothic films and there's always different takes on vampires and and legends in different countries these right. really didn't there add shit some to that. stuff well, yeah five minutes worth but, and ten hours there actually but isn't really a this. lot of unique mythology you. there isn't really there's a little bit with the natives okay. and stuff and i think you know the whole treaty thing was kind of interesting kind of an interesting plot point but you know otherwise i don't think there's really that much uniqueness to it at all in fact it, it, it just doesn't it did it, it, it's so basic it's just so goddamn basic so bland too it, and it also before someone met what real quick before someone's like the lost boys is the 80s version of twilight no, well in the 80s it, it, in the fucking all. 80s they were rated r they the, the target audience was r so there's gore I, there's violence yeah and the lost boys it. is a goddamn classic see yeah, I'll prove that, there's it. no the comparison dude like that's just like fright night is actually falling into that conversation now. Love. and it's like yeah they always have been but not like this <laughs> uh, the, the dracula novel dracula was fucking the devil he was not about love yeah, I you, mean, but I'm saying like oh. like vampires are very sexual. And oh hell yeah, they're sexualized for sure, and over time for sure. Oh no well, doubt, and even I, the original Dracula was. I of think course. the big draw for you know like the specific storyline was everybody loves a love triangle, and I think that's kind of what <laughs> yeah, the if the characters are likable. Maybe. Yeah, everybody loves a pedophile love triangle. Like, I, um, like I, 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 we'll get remember. into it, but we're I cannot get, believe <laughs> the Jacob character is just, it, it's literally break my fucking neck, shaking my head, man. Like, oh, well, I mean, dude, I can't <laughs> wait to talk about the actual love triangle. Like, I'm reading not the books prior to watching the movies, like, the emotions that you're going through, like, I'm one of those completists that I have to kind of finish something once I start it, even as ridiculous as it is. And yeah, I'm like that too. I'm not going to say that I disliked them, but I will say there are certain things that I have major, major qualms with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and can I bring up something else? I'm not saying that I don't like stupid shit, okay? I mean, I was a kid who loved the garbage pail kids. It, doesn't get much fucking stupider than dude i still so understand why teen girls like this stuff you know what i mean i like stupid shit too but it's more pertained to me i like muscle men those little figure fucking muscle men okay i like stupid shit but hey this this doesn't do this is not for me so just saying that just take dude. consideration that if you like these movies don't listen to me i uh well, i just want to applaud you guys because as i was watching it and some of them are a little bit hard to get through obviously some more than others and i'm just like sitting there thinking like 
I'm picturing moods fucking watching. <laughs> it's Twilight at 4 I frowned, I frowned <laughs> like, all I'm, week. And like, I'm having a problem getting through some of these. I'm like, oh my God, I can only imagine what moods is thinking right now. <laughs> this movie killed moods libido. <laughs> I literally was in a bad mood all week. That's literally too, what man. I was thinking. I was in a bad I mood all week. So I was like, oh my God, these guys. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, goes is like, he's like, I can't get an erection anymore. <laughs> the, the thing is, okay, here, here's the thing about like the difference of like not being the target demographic, right? Like it, it, you would agree that, that at least the three of us, the dudes, uh, are not the target demographic for these movies. However, just just because that's the case doesn't mean that there isn't serious problems with the filmmaking uh, like by I itself agree. regardless of demographic of course of course and you know there's at, actual at, issues with these movies at, on a technical level oh, that so many at the end of the day at the end of the day is you know i mean obviously I, I i didn't really have any pre-notions because i didn't really know anything about the movies at all like i didn't even know what the sparkles meant for fuck's sakes so watch <laughs> watching these movies from you know, an objective point of view was, wow, it was actually quite shocking to me considering these are semi big budget movies. You know, I mean, I mean, the budgets are pretty big and stuff. I was kind of shocked at what I was seeing, you know, and I, and I wasn't, and I'm, and I'm not looking at it going, trying to find faults and trying to find this in the technical aspects and shit. I'm like, I'm just seeing it. And I'm like, what Mm -hmm. the fuck? It was, it was over, poweringly odd to me that I was seeing this in, in like a major, major fucking, you know, Hollywood franchise kind of thing. And I'm like, this is crazy. So yeah, you're right. There is definitely a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issues besides the obvious demographic problem. So uh, uh, do we got a description plot description on the first one? Yeah. Let's, let's go into the first one. All right. Um, well, I guess, I guess that was, I don't even, did we even have an intro? <laughs> That was the intro. (laughs) That was the intro. That was our general discussion where we're coming from on these movies. All right. All right. I think it was good. All right. So, yeah. So that is going to conclude the intro. And uh, we'll be back in a second here with um, the first Twilight movie. And now, our feature presentation. Yo, who this? Yo, Modes, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, player. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. Alrighty, so getting into this uh, Twilight franchise show, and like I said, it is a Patreon pick. Uh, First film from 2008, simply titled Twilight, directed by Catherine Hardwick, um, which I was like, where do I know that name from? And I believe that she's the one that directed 13. I remember that movie from like the early 2000s. You guys ever see 13 before? Oh, the two teen girls? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I remember that movie. And I was like, oh, fuck, man. That's okay. a good movie. Yeah, it actually 13. 13 Tomasetti. Yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah, so 13 was a good movie. And then and then I was like, okay, what else did she do? And then I, I noticed that she did Lords of Dogtown, which I wasn't really a big fan of the, the oh, movie. I love that movie. See, I, wasn't, I liked the documentary a lot better because I was very, very familiar with the whole story and stuff. I didn't think the movie really did it justice. The documentary is really great. Um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting that she did those and then did Twilight. So, um, but yeah, anyways, so quick little synopsis. Uh, when Bella Swan moves to a small town in the Pacific Northwest, she falls in love with Edward Cullen, a mysterious classmate who reveals himself to be a 108-year-old vampire. Okay, so Bella is played by and Kristen pedophile. Stewart, and, and I won't, and I and I and I'll say that honestly, dude, I'd never really seen her in anything until last year when I saw her in Underworld. I, she's I swear, good at, she's good. No, nah, she was in that one uh, personal in shopper. Underwater? Yeah, underwater. Movie. What, did underwater. I, what did I say? Underworld? You said underworld. <laughs> okay. You know what I meant. Underwater. A okay. couple of years ago, she did that movie, Personal Shopper. And that, that was actually oh, pretty good. I heard she, that's a great movie. Fuck me. I yeah. actually own that Blu-ray. Yeah, she I actually championed that, that one. With, she did that movie with fucking Jodie Foster, uh, Panic Room. I, so so let's say this. I don't, I don't remember that, that she weird. is a bad actress She's in Underwater at all. But in this movie, 
and I'm not going to pick on uh, Robert Pattinson's acting because although I think the dialogue's so terrible, no one could carry it. I think he's a fantastic actor and stuff like High Life and Lighthouse. He's a great actor, one of the best right now. But in these, he's not great. And Kristen Stewart is actually the only actress I would point out besides some of the B players as an absolutely awful performance <laughs> where she's clearly line reading in the movie. You know what? I, I thought the same. It just seemed like she didn't want to be there. Yeah, she seems so, and I don't understand why Edward and Jacob and all these people love her so much. I'm like, why her? Dude, She's that's a the most infuriating Dude. aspect of okay. these movies. Okay, thank you for bringing that up I'd, right away. I'd because... rather take Jacob if I was Robert Pattinson. I'd be like, give me the werewolf guy. I, I'm <laughs> right. Anybody, anybody, give me the <laughs> they, fucking. Especially anybody. when they start having a little bit of a bro respect going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, they should just kiss <laughs> just right ditch, now. Yeah, just ditch the chick, man. <laughs> well, that that that's my okay. That that leads me to my very first point here. So in the in the first film, you know, like we just said, you know. Uh, Bella moves from uh, Arizona to the Pacific Northwest is specifically a little small town Forks, I can't, Forks yeah. in Washington which is you know which obviously is supposed to have such a big overcast that this that's, that's what I was going to ask yeah. it, it, it is actually a real town and they actually did to um, a documentary um, yeah they do Mythbusters yeah there's no sun <laughs> yeah um, no they did a documentary <laughs> after the Twilight films were released of how um, now Forks is really more so populated and how it brought you know celebrity to their town mm-hmm. yeah. well it's kind of interesting actually because this first movie was actually shot um you know mostly in oregon and stuff around you know pacific northwest and stuff but all the other movies were actually shot where i live in bc but southern bc and vancouver has obviously the same aesthetic so as these were shot in canada and uh one or part two through five we're I'm all not surprised. Well, it's it's because it's, <laughs> it's because cheaper. it's it's cheaper to film, but it's also the same. It's basically the same locations, right? The southern BC is the well, Pacific Northwest. To, like when you go in the southern BC, it smells like farts, and that's how they got on to have all their stupid faces on like that. It looks stupid. So, like that's the only place in the world where it constantly smells of farts. <laughs> I have no idea where the fart thing is coming from, but uh, everybody looks like they're smelling farts. Well, it's funny that you bring well, no, that up smelling, actually because the like, city I live in, I know, I know, I'm just kidding. actually stinks like shit because I live in an industrial city. Down there, it's just more <laughs> big city. But anyways, the point is, is I'm watching the. I think it was in the second film, maybe it was the third one. I can't remember, but I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I recognize that. Yeah, it was Capilano. I'm like, I've been to that university many, many times. I'm like, that's fucking crazy. So then I looked it up, and yeah, sure, shit, they filmed everything in BC and stuff. So hence the whole fogginess and stuff, because it rains down in Vancouver, usually like Seattle, right? They're the respective you know, suicide capitals of their countries because of the weather. Um, so I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the very first time that Edward BC and Bella, are we, are we assuming that she's on her period or something? No, no. What is, because he no. looks like he smells some good blood. It's, no, He's it's smelling it's, farts, man. <laughs> No, it's the actually that's probably my favorite scene. Like, well, he's a Dan, vampire. His keenest smell Dan is there. To, to watch this movie uh, together like a year ago, because um, it was on TV, and we got to that part, and we just could not stop laughing when she walks into the classroom, and he puts his hand up to like she smells so bad. <laughs> you know what, man? I just okay that that you know that brings me to my first point, man, and you know talking about. Second point, you know, it's the fucking writing in this is so it's almost awkward. It's so awkward. It just comes off super yeah. bad. Like, OK, you introduce. OK, so basically Bella's character, like they kind of give you this insight that she's a very awkward girl and she doesn't really fit in with these crowds and stuff like that. So she's kind of like the, uh, an, you get the sense she's supposed to be like an outsider walks the beat of her own drum type person. But she but the writing but, is so poor that no soul. But it, but it comes off so poorly because we don't really get to see that from her. Like she seems very personal. She gets friends right away and stuff. She's kind of fitting in with these people and stuff. I don't really understand where they kind of, yeah, give but this it backstory. also seems like she's not interested in anything that anybody else is doing. She's just, the thing you know, about her, I conforming. think is, but she's still around Hus, people and hanging out with give people. her much personality. So I think that the audience can put themselves in her and live her fantasy. Cause this is all just a fantasy. This writer a fantasy. writing her own fantasy, yeah, 100% about a love triangle. Yeah. So she's writing it so people can be Kristen Stewart in the movie because she has no real character. But, yeah, no, there's it's so under it's so poorly developed. I, it's just weird when you watch it from my perspective. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, she's also going, she's hanging out with these people and stuff, doing her thing and stuff. But it's just the it's the initial reaction with they they try to explain away when you know, of course, when she walks in the classroom and Edward, you know, has that reaction, he fucking freaks out, and I'm like, holy fuck! I'm like, right away, I'm like, oh my god, this is so teen fucking melodrama bullshit. And then he explains it away. You know, he has this this weird kind of unsettling attraction to her because you know he can't read her thoughts, and that's 
that's one of his um, his kind of superpowers as a vampire and stuff. He can read thoughts and shit, and he can't see into her, so he's super attracted to that and shit. And I was like, but to, the way it's written, the way he reacts to it, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, the, the books are so much different. They make it way more kind of sexy, I should say. Yeah, this comes off, you know, it, it comes off very stupid. And I don't even like using those adjectives. It comes adjectives. off like he's repulsed by Yeah, her dude. As, so, like, when I was reading it in the book, it's more so like, uh, like, he's like, He's not like repulsed by her, but he's attracted to her. But I don't know? understand it though, um, and and I get that because he, he can't contain himself. It's almost like it's almost like a guy getting a boner, right? But in the See, film, I kind of he must have not had any tape. Tape. No, no, no I understand what they were going for. But it's so odd like, because I, I just thought, saw it like he was like couldn't do can, vampires get boners because they're he, dead. Do they have any from her? Well, he, clearly he does get a boner for Yeah, because they have they have a you know a love child. So. Uh, you know he's not doing a boys don't cry deal, <laughs> right? <laughs> but because just, we know. I just I just oh. think the whole the whole the way they the way they write this this kind of the start of their attraction and their love story and stuff is just so awkwardly done and the dialogue is so poor and stuff. Like this guy literally freaks out and and as a viewer without reading the books and stuff, I'm like, what the hell is this guy's problem? Like he hates her for no reason. He takes off for like a week, comes back and stuff, and then of course they kind of you know talk yeah. and work it out and stuff no, but he's it, trying to he's trying to stay away from her because he yeah, knows that she has like a, a hold that way on. in the film though jp yeah. it comes across I mean, like that's how i saw it <laughs> it doesn't feel like he's attracted to no her. it doesn't thing. until well, they explain it away that's in the act at all with those contacts in like see, it really I, hurts I his act until I, they explain I, I it that it like i saw it like that no see the way i see it is that he's completely repulsed and then he Especially when he takes off for a week and like, what the fuck's this guy's problem, man? This is crazy. And then, of course, when basically when he explains, you know, you know, the whole thing and stuff, and then it kind of makes sense. But it's just the way it's written. It's like it comes off so odd and weird. And I just I felt like the writing was so poor. I and don't I, know. I, I think that the the first scene where they see each other, it's like that stupid love at first sight type, like look in his eye. And then afterwards, I felt like he was just trying to get away from her because he didn't. Well, they should have played. Do you believe in go. magic? Well, you see that and from her. That you see or, that from but, her. You see that from well, her in the lunchroom I, I because from him too. Him in that moment. Yeah, but, like, the lunchroom scene. Like, like I get it that he's trying to, you know, like stay away from her. However, right. it feels like he's more repulsed by her than attracted to her. Exactly. I think it's. I think it's him like uh pushing that outward to to sort of hide the true feelings thing but here's my issue <laughs> is and and this is really big throughout the whole series is i cannot stand how poorly developed their relationship is and the fact yeah, that they don't it, know shit about each other if exactly. any like in jacob and and bella actually have like development and they, yeah. they, they spend time chemistry. together when they're building the bike and stuff what the fuck did twi- t- t- fucking edward and bella like about each other it, is it just so shallow that it's mm-hmm. like i that think they play- just seem to no, be you're sexually correct. attracted I think to each other it's so stupid i think they're playing on the fact that like she's supposed to be this huge outcast and and, and obviously you know edward being a vampire he's obviously this huge kind of different outcast and that's supposed to be i think what the attraction is it's like they're two of their they're from their own type of worlds you know and that's kind of what the polar attraction is you're right though with right, jacob but you have to know stuff about people to fall it, in love with well them, right? yeah, I, think, I think that's I kind of i think that's yeah. where the writing is totally in failing opinion, itself again it's conveyed in the film i don't necessarily know if that's what it was supposed to transpire, but obviously Alice and Jasper are together and Emmett and Rosalie are together and he's just kind of waiting for his person. Um, You know, and it's not conveyed well in the movies at all. No, it's not. It's horrible. And, you know, I I, I agree. Going back to the whole Jacob thing, they actually have a history and rapport because, you know, he introduces himself to like, hey, remember me? We used to play in the sandboxes together and stuff. Right Right there. They they actually have, they literally have a history. It's a slower build. Like they spend time together. They get to know each other. It's a real relationship. So that's why. It's a real fucking relationship. That's why I understand later on a little bit why Jake, why Jacob is so overly obsessed and like he's kind of taking it to the next level because she keeps telling him over and over again in the later ones you know like i'm not attracted to you, this and that and he keeps kind of pushing the well, fact like a totally... werewolf so like he has well, that, that ownership too kind of and, well, and here's another yeah. thing right. about the is one of the big differences from the even though he had not imprinted is, though yeah uh, yeah <laughs> we'll get into that oh my god <laughs> uh one of the big differences uh from the book to the film of the first book anyways is jacob is actually the one who tells her that the colons are vampires in the film mm-hmm. she discovers it through mm. a book 
And I was wondering that too. So is this set in a world where like, I, I don't know, man, it, it was just like such a huge shock to her that she had to go and figure out all these signs and stuff. Like, I mean, if you've seen any type of vampire movies, even the, even somebody that's not into the hugely into the horror realm and stuff like that can probably tell you, you know, all the signs of what a vampire is. You know? Yeah. Look at their fucking eyes. Right. It just, she's like, and Oh also, my God, he's got cold hands. Skin. He's got cold yeah. hands. It breaks the mold of a typical vampire because if you see the sun if a vampire sees the sun usually they turn to dust right yeah but I, so I, in this in one case, fucking sparkle well if you were a real vampire though you'd think like there's something wrong with these people maybe I wouldn't think they're vampires maybe I think they're ghouls I would think there's something's off with them for sure right. and everybody kind of yeah. does you know, but... he's yeah. like this is why nobody can ever see me in the sun and he's just like glistening yeah, it's, <laughs> right. it, it, it's, it's so that they can fucking um you know, it, it's a reason for them to not be around. You know what I mean, or whatever. It, 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 I, I don't like the, the sparkle thing at all. The sparkle it's thing. The, I'm not. Li- I'm not going to lie. I thought it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a movie. I'm like, it, I, it, it really doesn't add anything to like the mythology or anything. I'm just like, it's just it's kind of this noteworthy thing, and you're just like, okay, whatever. They sparkle could, in the fucking sun. Big just fucking deal. Easily is said. Read that, as the fact that like it doesn't do anything. A beautiful specimen. Yeah. But, the, the films took it to a whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a reason for them to handle the, like, sunlight thing. Well, you know I, what I mean? I, the whole premise of the opening of this drives me nuts. Like, am I to believe that a hundred-year-old vampire is not smart enough to figure out how to tell people to fuck off when they ask him, why aren't you in school? They could literally go to a big city that's cloudy and hide out and never have to deal with the bullshit of going to school every fucking... There's no way a hundred-year-old vampire keeps going to school to lay his cover in. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. It's completely ludicrous and ungodly stupid. Well, no, my, my question, I, I, my question is, you know what, you know, the scene where she's at the house and she sees like all the fucking, you know, the, um, the graduation caps and stuff. It's like, yeah. it's like, that was kind of a nice touch, even though. No, no, no. I think actually, school. I think the, the best the part in part thing, four. Can only... you say something positive about the film? I'm, I'm not going to be honest. Like also, let me say another, <laughs> the cop, the dad. He's a great actor, and he gives a very good performance. Really he's the best he's, in the mo- in the series. He's we, literally we talked about that off sh- show. He's he, the best like character. Him. He's a good actor. <laughs> he is the, the he best. Is the actor. Be- he's the best actor and the best character, hands down. But I thought the but I, going back to the whole school thing again too. I was like, it, it's kind of undeveloped and kind of not explained where you know over he's obviously graduated like fucking like 80 times in his life or whatever the fuck it is so they were obviously <laughs> moving around from place to place they don't really explain that too well because he obviously didn't graduate from this place over no, and over no. they say they say that they say that they come back every once in a while okay but my point is i i totally get that and stuff like that obviously they were graduating from different places but it's still then it, it's so stupid because if they came back every so often there's still people gonna be there they're probably gonna recognize this kid and he's like no he's, no no like the family like uh, like not like not him specifically the that particular gr- group of vampires not like those spe- not specifically edward just okay. that family lineage well my point is is that he still needs to be graduating from somewhere Okay, here's the thing about the graduating thing. Yeah, I agree, Dave, that you don't have to do that. But I think as somebody, if I was in that situation, I would be bored as shit. Like, I'd probably want to do that. You can do whatever you want. No, no, no. My my, my point is, is that you've got to be in different spots. Because if you're the same age for 100 years, you're obviously going to be outed just based on the fact that you're sticking around. Right. Not if you're in a big city. That's what they say. They they say they, they, that's why they left again. Because they're like, okay, we're getting to the age where... You know, people, and, and then they come back in sequels, and no one ever brings it up. No, again. I know, but right, no, exactly. but but my point is, is where the fuck are they going? Like they, they always say they're coming back and doing this shit, but even if you come back, even if you come back ten years later, even if you come back to this place ten years later, right? They're no, still they're g- not. Though. They don't do that. So well, they're so coming. That, so they basic coming back. So basically, they stay in one spot for like one or two like years. Four years. Okay, so where are they fucking going in all these other times? Like, it's over 100 different fucking years. States. Different cr- states, different... See, I was confused about that because they don't different really countries. explain it. I was like, what the fuck? How many states are there to where they have an overcloud? Yeah, they just right. didn't really, they didn't really go... Why would they keep going to school? There's no <laughs> they, point for them to go to that's school. That's my point. City, they could hide forever. I said that like six times already. They could hide forever. They they I know, that's what my that point was. I don't understand what the, why they no, keep doing... Why would they even bother to go to school then? I probably have never watched The Vampire Diaries, which was actually uh, adapted by um, Kevin Williamson, okay. who right, right. you know obviously wrote Scream. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and, and 
actually Dan uh, said he will play a drinking game every time I bring up the Vampire Diaries is so much better than Twilight. <laughs> I'm on I, I this show. But... Um, but no, I, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show, no. but it's basically kind of the same premise, but a little bit different because it involves two brothers and not a wolf. And a, but they do have the you know werewolf lore in it and whatnot. But the difference between that makes Vampire Diaries so much greater is the fact that it is bloody. It actually develops their characters. Yeah. Uh, it gives reason to why the fact the guy that like he follows her like he 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 goes back to school just so he can get to know her which would make a much more better description as opposed to you know edward just you know reliving high school over and over again well for no apparent fucking reason see, I, I was trying to think it's about just this to fit in man that's well, all it is no i agree with dave that they could go somewhere else and and not do anything but I don't really. I don't think it's something to really get hung up on. No, dude. But it's it's a point. It's a point. I'm just saying. Sense. You know, vampires usually would just go and do their own thing. You know, hide up. But I think the only way to explain it is, you know, the father. You know, he wants to be a productive part of society. Handsome being a doctor. It's like kind he of a weird. Help. It's a weird premise. It's well, a weird well, premise where all, you got a vampire. They all feel like normal people. We well, get the sense from that that exactly. they, they don't want necessarily. That some of them aren't happy to be vampires, especially when it's brought up about the. The fact that they, if they ever do die, they're going to hell. And I thought that was one of the more interesting aspects of the lore that they, they put in there is they, they specifically said that they're damned, which makes it scary because at first I was like, shit. Which is in I, like I hundreds of vampire, vampire movies. Right, but they don't always specifically yeah. say it. You know yeah. what I mean? So you're trying to say that they're trying to make you care about them. If they die, they're going to hell? They're trying to make me... It, it, I would, I would want, I, I, I didn't see a reason why Bella shouldn't be a vampire. You know what I mean? Like, or anybody. Like, shit. What, what's they can eat on blood? Uh, they don't, they don't have to. Bella could live. Well, no, it's it, it's explained away pretty easy. I, know, I understand if, the if Edward character. I could character. live forever and be the same age and not age and stuff. I would choose that. No, I know, but and, you, you and, got, hey, maybe you could learn some grammar because you go to high school a hundred fucking times. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Which again. Um, but, but so they make it. They make it have a huge downside to being a vampire right like you're immortal but you're if you right. do die you're then you're fucked so i think that because at first i was like hell yeah i'd want to be a vampire with these people i said the same thing in the lost boys like why is everybody always trying to not be a vampire i would want to be a vampire yeah but they're trapped as kids too in the and, lost boys they're right no families and, and stuff there's well i think the right. ideology of being way, a vampire do you, this way. do you remember an interview with a vampire and kristen Dunst's character yeah. yeah. Yes. Trapped and near dark. Same deal. Right. But trapped they, as a know, kid they're forever. trapped as a child forever, and you you don't get to grow. I wouldn't want to be I, a child, though. Thing. I'm not saying I want to get turned as a child, but like. Well, I'm not saying know, that either. 20. But I mean, there comes a point in time in your life to where, you know, you're missing out on monster yeah, you know, Not me. Fuck it. I'll take the trade. But if you're telling me I'm going to go to hell now. after, then no. But I you got to see it from Edward's point of view. Like I. You have to watch everybody else around you die. I don't care. I, 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 I get the I meet new not people. If you, not if you turn them all. I get his point of view <laughs> for not you. wanting to turn her though, because he never got to he never got to experience a lot of things, right? Because he got turned at what 17, 18 years old and stuff, and she's at that age, and he knows exactly well, what she's gonna miss out on. Like I understand the plot point right. of him not wanting I to think, turn her. It, it makes I think perfect enough sense. reasons to make it make sense is what I was yeah, trying I mean, to say. It makes sense. I mean, obviously, you know, like, you know, he's like, I have no soul. Like, you have a fucking soul. You have things to live for right now and stuff like that. Like, I get where he's coming from. Like, and again, the mixed reaction throughout the family. There's some people that don't mind. And, being and I was sad about the fact that, like, she would have to just basically leave her family and never well, this, return. This you know leads, I mean? this leads yeah, into I another point of mine. Well, we're not even at that point in the film yet, right. guys. Yeah, we're right. only on film one. Yeah. <laughs> so they all bleed together. Yeah, so I mean, basically this one right here, I mean, it it comes pretty quick in the film where she, you know, she eventually f figures out that Edward's a vampire and then he obviously confides to her and, and says that, you know, basically confirms that he's a vampire and stuff and then they kind of start the relationship and stuff no, like that. No, he says say it out loud. Yeah, well, the, he confirms it at that point, right? <laughs> so you know. Ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, some of the dialogue in this is so atrocious. <laughs> it's Dude, really cringeworthy. Like, speaking speaking yeah. again on the relationship thing, it, it is so like I can't get over the fact how poorly done it is. Like it is so I, I've literally seen Degrassi episodes developed a hundred million times better than this. Yes. Like all of a sudden they're. Are you they, talking about Degrassi talk... Next Generation or both? Old both. I like them all. Um, oh. The original. 
the it's original so but the original's good but the the one that i grew up with was the next generation which is in my opinion a little bit better but i understand why you would not think so because to you it probably seems stupid but the whenever they're you know once they get past the little part where they're like kind of like he's avoiding her and then they start to talk and, and look at shit through microscopes and stuff the very next thing <laughs> is like they're they're like they're acting like as if they're in this relationship and she's like so you don't she's like you, yeah it's, it's so fucking so stupid i know like, i they agree don't discuss ever like do you like me do you like you know it's like, just what a, you a, like? a unspoken what you thing or what's your it's favorite a, song or yeah anything? it's an unspoken thing movie? that they're like, they're attracted book, to each that other. is it's way like, more descriptive it's bullshit in and the doesn't film, work it's like so that. rushed and that's what i yeah, and, that, and that's what and that's what something i brought up too pre um, talking about this was I, I wanted to mention that like I, I mean I'm watching this movie going there's no fucking way that this film is like the book kind of thing it has to be more developed I feel yeah. like the film and, is super you can tell in the I filmmaking like I remember the book being a lot more you, you can developed. you can just tell in a film that it's not developed at all right like compared to well, I haven't read the book but I you know right away that this is not a good adaptation of the source material because there's no way that it was written like this it's the, the relationship the way it develops is one of the most poorest things I've ever seen. And you got to remember this franchise is one big ass story. So when you have a starting point like this and the, and the relationships built on like just nothing but nothing. questions, it's built on nothing but questions. You're like how the fuck did this develop? Like this is garbage. This is bullshit and stuff. Well, There's one the scene book, of development. Uh, uh, Jay players are even more fleshed out, you know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Andrew Kendrick character and the guy who plays Mike, like uh, Bella and Mike actually have way more of a friendship. And that's why Jessica, who is played by Anna Kendrick, you know, it you see her jealousy like right away in the I film. No but idea. in the book, it's way more developed to why she's feeling that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I everything's so much more descriptive. Like I for a long time, I always kind of appreciated film more than I did the book. But in this specific instance, I definitely appreciated the book source material versus the film. So let yeah. me ask you this. Like in the very first movie, Twilight, 2008, Eight. what is it about Bella and Edward that makes them into each other? A attraction, I'm guessing. But it's, is it, it's, point, purely, though, but... it's purely visual attraction. They don't know anything about each other. Like it is – I hate that about it. Well, like it's I like, said, how can you buy it? Like I said, the only way I could ever explain their attraction was the fact that they come from, you know, they're they're super polars. You know, like, it's how like how do they know that about each other when they that when they're into it, each exactly. other? They, they learn that later. Exactly. There's nothing there <laughs> to explain they anything have away. This out too. They, they could have fleshed out their relationship in part two and four time. when there's literally nothing happening. Yeah, I know they had hours. so much time to actually make and them two and four nothing happening for hours. They, they 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 had so much time and and honestly the third act of this movie is so fucking boring, dude. Yeah, you know, and, and you know these movies are just, oh, dude. Actually, like, okay, the whole movie's kind of boring up until that baseball scene. I mean, there's... I like the baseball scene. <laughs> it, and, it doesn't and why are half these visually? vampires that are hundreds of years old? They just act like douche bros. Like that one guy's like, "Hey, bro, I'm like a 300 year old vampire. Let's go get some chicken wings." Uh, no, can right. we talk about Jasper? Is that the big dude? Uh, no, that's Emmett. Uh, oh, that's Jasper? the violent one. Then I like the one I like... who just constantly stands sideways and looks at the camera. The one that just, like, has that, like, blank stare because apparently he's still a newborn, but yet, yeah. like, as you go on through the movies, like, he's not as newborn as you think. Yeah, but there's a lot of time that passes through these films. Yeah. How much time, they though? Say, they say she's six a months. Junior, it went... She's a junior in high school. They get and married. And then she 19, graduates. So it and... goes from 17. So there's only, like, a two-year. But, but the second, the second film is an entire year later. And the first, the, 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 they do say that the newborns are the most extreme during the first six months. So if you get past the six months, that's yeah, where but, they kind of Yeah, but Jasper out. has been a vampire since, like, what was it, World War, whatever? Yeah, but he hasn't been uh, tasting blood. Civil War. He's been off the blood. Civil War. He, he's said, been on they blood. They said he's well, been off blood for a while. Less well, than, that makes so been... no fucking sense, though, at the same time. Oh, yeah. No, that <laughs> makes sense. Human he, blood, he should be at that point to where he can control it. Well, well they said he hasn't been eating human blood. Um, like, but he goes late. to high school and he smells it every goddamn day. You're right. You're right. It makes no sense. It's horseshit. 
And well, they, they, well considering they, they make a big plot, a big plot point in the first one about explaining that you know these these van, they're really trying to justify the goodness of the vampires. It's like, no, we're the good vampires. Like we don't feast on humans. We fe- we're like the vegetarians of vampires. You know, we feast on <laughs> right. animal blood, so that makes them instantly good. Like you're supposed to feel Which, safe actually, with them. It's and a terrible they, analogy because animals are meat. I know, and, and I right, thought the same it, thing. It's, but but you're they, supposed they have to have a party. Yeah, where somebody s- gets cut, right? Right away. But nobody gets cut at school. You're right, Lacey. That's horse shit. No, but I mean, yeah, of course. I think the bigger problem is like periods, right? Like, why yeah, are you talking horse. about the female cycle so much, JP? Be- because they're, it's blood, right? And it's, it's it doesn't in the come air. Into play at all in these films or in the books. I know, but I'm saying it, sh- it, it that would be a problem. If right? somebody gets cut at the party and he freaks out, you know somebody cuts themselves at at, at gym or class. Well, or something. they do explain it though. Like once you've been off the human blood for so long, and then I, I think that you know they've been on this animal blood. You you just you kind of lose your. T- yeah, but I mean, you never. Jasper, no, but, but Jasper flipped out. So yeah, but the, out I assume school. that's why the family's <laughs> there to like hold yeah. pull him well, back. Yeah, but they're not going to be at the out. school if he does. If he flips out at the school and does like a jump and they they pull him. Yeah, away, I was confused. Like, what the fuck was that? Why is the dude doing fucking backflip? I was confused by that because I assume that. That's because they're there with them. They're always together. Yeah, but they're not going to be. Somebody's going to see him fucking jump out the people and jump halfway across the fucking. <laughs> right, because it yeah, seemed like Carlisle. Shit. It seemed like Carlisle had a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty good stranglehold on this family and stuff. It just seemed like, uh, what's the, what's that not guy's character? Cool. He's not there. You know, Can it, I make it, 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 Jasper's like character him. didn't make sense Can to me. Can we call him Mike Dexter instead of Carlisle? <laughs> Dexter. <laughs> Mike Dexter. You know what, man? Honestly, Carlisle's not too bad in this league, but I I like him. It's so crazy how a movie like this can have 95% 95% unlikable characters. The, really, the only people I liked in this is uh, the father, Charlie, and I liked Alice too. I think Alice is kind of I like she's kind of sweet, the like Native she, American uh, homie of the cop too. Yeah, he's oh the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah, he's yeah. Upset. <laughs> yeah, the no, guy. Why is oh, there ja- are or, um, so many films with a person in a wheelchair? Like, do you guys come across people in wheelchairs frequently in your life? I feel I like put I people do. in wheelchairs when they talk shit. Okay, I will mention one <laughs> thing really. here. I, I will mention one thing very, very positive about not only this film, but like the whole franchise and stuff. It's very, very nice to see Native people portrayed as, you know, non-villains. And, you know, the comic relief of movies and stuff. And it's nice to see these Native people, like these real Native Americans and Canadians, yeah, whatever they are. Because there is, there is the one guy in part two. you know two, there was a big controversy with that, though, Moose? They're very stereotypical. The um, It's very stereotypical. Okay, I can't remember the like, character's uh, name in part two, uh, but he has the heart attack. Stephanie Meyer, because uh, she wrote about, you know, the mythology of uh, this tribe. Uh-huh. And it's apparently a huge... Like they they say that she's racist basically because she didn't get the mythology correct when she was writing the book well, and that doesn't well, make you fiction. racist. They're that doesn't make up. you racist. <laughs> yes, first of all, you kind of well, not a great guess, writer. Like, in, the, in the first film specifically, I the director of this is actually a female. I think her name is Catherine or Christina, something along those lines. I don't know. Catherine um, Hardwick. Yes. Um. Apparently, years after. It's all been said and done. She said that she wanted the cast to be more diverse. And uh, the only one that Stephanie Meyer, because she's a producer or whatever on the film as well, the only one that she signed off on with somebody being of a different color was uh, the character of Laurent, which okay. was, you know. Is that the guy that almost crashes yeah. into Bella? Uh, no, no, the black no, vampire. that's the bad vampire. Oh, okay. And um, so... Basically, yeah, the French she was guy. saying that the only way that she would have a person of diversity in the cast is if they were a villain, which is not <laughs> true because, um, you know, one of the friends or two of the friends are actually, I think, Asian. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I just don't. So wait, know. they were saying yeah. Stephanie Meyer was racist or. Yes, it's a big thing. Look it up. Oh, well, okay. in her writing, if, if it is racist, it's not intentional, probably. It's so she, ignorant. she's the writer of the books. And the stereotypes are very old. The stereotypes Which, are very old. Well, I they're always and listen. I I hate people that complain about stereotypes, dude. It's fucking stupid, man. The, it's the author, culture. The author of the books sees her characters. Not all stereotypes. Way. The author of the book sees you know the characters a certain way, and if she doesn't see them as a specific race, I don't know why that makes her racist. Like when she's know. writing it, she's picturing it, you know, in her head. 
So I don't know why, just because she didn't, you know, want somebody else cast. You know, well, I wouldn't give a fuck. Color. I wouldn't give a fuck about minor characters, but if it pertains to the race, like I'm not going to have the Native American be played by a white or black guy. I want him to well, look Native American. Okay, going you back to I mean? going but back like, to my point. Characters, it doesn't fucking matter who gives but a shit. But no, yeah. it's a huge thing. Look it up on. Um, yeah, I believe you know, it. I believe it. But I would just it, cast whoever was the best actor. Going I back, care if unless it pertained to the character. Well, no, just going back to my original point about you know the natives because I mean it's a. It's it's a big thing where I live, right, and stuff, and and they're always portrayed as being villains and all these really nasty stereotypes. Like every time you see a native in a film or whatever, they're always drunk or they're just the comic relief and shit. They really don't get any, but it's true, man. That's that's really fucking true, especially in Canadian cinema too, man. They portray natives as fucking super bad yeah. villains and shit. Usually they are, yeah, right. And and like I can speak from this from because like I have a lot of native friends and shit, and it's it's really fucking bad. It's really really bad. Here. I and, guess you're right because a lot of the Native American characters in the movie were some of the most likable. It, right, and so in Canada it's completely different. And it was like and I can't remember the c- character's name in part two, but he's the dude that dies of the heart attack. He's actually That's Garrett can- Green. He's yeah. actually one of the biggest Native. He's he's in my notes. He's he, the best actor in the entire series. Exactly. He's a, great actor. he's a Canadian guy that's like in every Canadian show, but he's like yeah, the he's one in dances with wolves. He's the one guy that always gets the clout and stuff. And it was so cool to see him in this. I was like, oh man, that's amazing. But like going back to my point, it was nice to see these you know these these tribe guys, the, the natives and stuff, being played by real natives. You know, not by Mexicans and. And, and white people with makeup on and shit, Italians in Italian they get always happens right but it was cool to see these guys getting these jobs and be portrayed as you know in, in a positive way and stuff I was like it, at least there's one major major positive thing I'm not just used to seeing that in Canadian cinema it's pretty bad actually to be honest but um so th- that's a major plot or a major you know plus for me in there um which so, is not really pertaining to the movie itself too much but the overall of the film, well, I but... mean the acting and stuff. It, it still kind of fits, but well, and literally the only person that I would call out, like I know there's a lot of hammy, cheesy acting, but it's it's not going to be easy to deliver this dialogue because it's not great. No, the only one that I would say is actually pretty horrible is Kristen Stewart, and I don't think she's a bad actress later on. Just in these movies, I think she's absolute dog. You, shit. you know, who I, I think is the worst. I don't think she's bad at all. I just think, I think she's the horrible. I can is... she, I can tell she's line reading. Line you know, you know who I think is the worst? Lines and you just repeat it and you don't know what they mean. That's I can't tell. I think Jacob I is the worst. The way he delivers his lines is is actually pretty bad. Like, I mean, I was like in this movie I don't specifically, know. or do you I, think he gets better in the other films? I think he's pretty. I don't he's think he's pretty much the him. same throughout the whole thing. I, I mean, he's. I don't know this one particularly. I think it has bad. a lot to do with the lines, dude. It, it could I really be, do. It, I don't think any of these guys are particularly bad actors. It could be. It could be the dialogue. I mean, we've seen great actors in in movies where they just have the worst. It just comes off so bad. But I mean, most, this might be one of the cases. Really great actors can deliver bad dialogue. See, it's like, hard for you, us to you, judge because yeah, I haven't these seen. These people are really young too, man. I mean, they're not. Yeah, like I said, that's that's average. why they they've gotten much better. But the only one that I really was like, oh my god, was Kristen Stewart, where I was like, that's bad. See, well, I that's th- I think bad. Robert Pattinson is the worst one. in in the movie in the first, I think, I think he's worse than first he gets better as they go on he has yeah, the same not, yeah. facial reactions to everything throughout the whole franchise he never really he, changes man so well, emo. He, he, has these, he has these he has these weird little bad. quirky they smiles they, they, yeah. suck, they, they can't act with all I that feel makeup like he's very basic a, edward is a is a fucking whiny bitch that's what he is what? jake jacob is worse like his like a, his are overpowering. We are we doing this right now? <laughs> his, dude, Edward Edward sucks, man. There's nothing likable about I'm him. I'm gonna have to pick Team Jacob. Oh, except that's, that the that's, last one, he kind of almost fucks that up. Dude, are you serious, man? This guy, this guy, this guy literally gets punched. He, 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 you know, Bella couldn't have told him any more times. I think even in the first one that she didn't want him, but he kept pressing the fact, pressing the fact, pressing the fact. He knew better. He loved me. Dude, most guys would be like, "Fuck this, man!" Like, okay, you know, she's kind of made <laughs> her not, fucking not point the 80s here. Or seventies, they would just follow you around until they said yes. But he That's pushes it to the pack to the fact that he's literally getting so fucking mad. He's Are just you being a about douche. Jacob? Yeah, dude, he gets, he's, he's like, a werewolf. No, no, no. The, the problem is, bro. One, he's a werewolf, and he got that hot blood running through him. And two, Bella is leading him the fuck on so yeah, much. No, the entire really series. no, I'm not in the film. She's literally, like, t- I don't. Him like, that she I mean, yes, they him. have better chemistry than her and Edward. But she also and tells like, him throughout the whole like, franchise that she's not interested either. I know she, no, but no, she doesn't. She says it, but she doesn't show it. She says it, but she doesn't show it. She says it, but she is interested in him. She just is more interested in Edward. Like, yeah, Jacob is a factual. She likes Jacob a lot. Yeah, as a fucking friend. 
That's no, not a no. Can I say how funny it is to she's talk She's absolutely to in love with Jacob, too. She she knows. Says that she's See, I don't think so, man. She's in love with both of them, she says, I was I like, why you. don't they just go polyamorous? I love you, but no, not as much as I think, I think, that. I think that she's in love with Edward and she loves Jacob. There's two different she's types of love. in love with Jacob. I don't think so. All right, no. Can I please hear Mood's take on love, please? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, there's two, there's different types of love, obviously, man. When you're in love with somebody like, you know, your spouse or something like that, and you, you can love people but not be in love with them. It's different. It's a totally different type of love attraction and stuff. I mean, it, it's just – it's one of those things. I mean, it's hard to explain. I mean, everyone's I take mean, on yeah, love is a little bit different. family, love, friends. All right. Love, so, Moods, I have to ask you this. And this I, think that, the, I think that's what applies to her, her relationship. And honestly, man, Bella's a bitch. She's a fucking bitch throughout the whole thing. She, Dude, no, she, nobody who just nobody who just kind of loves someone like as a friend is gonna ask them to kiss them. It just doesn't happen. And, and no, she, she, not she, well, we're not even there yet, hey, you guys. Hey, we're not there yet. They're not gonna yet. be miserable. They're we're not, not gonna be there miserable. Yet. And then drive all the way. We won't remember trust. Us. But she's not really trying to give him the time of day. Like there's a scene in the film where Jacob is reveals until he drives Edward out of her way up, to his house with dirt bikes and ask them to fix them so she can get closer to him. That's that literally what she's cool. doing. But can we talk about Jacob's hair? <laughs> what the, the, hair, the long the hair or the short hair? Was it extensions? Oh, that was. I, fake. I don't think that's his real hair. No, I don't think like, that was real. Was but... a wig? Was it extensions? Because it was probably a wig. It was probably a wig. It's a but that was, was terrible. Really, so I, w- I want to ask one thing. I want to ask one thing. So the scene where the scene where Bella and Jacob are walking on the beach and Jacob is explaining about, um, you know, about uh, the dispute, you know, how they have problems with the Collins and stuff like that and and shit like that. Like, is it supposed to be a mystery that he's possibly supernatural himself there? Yeah, like you're not supposed to know that yet. Oh, okay. But, because yeah, I was like, might, oh, he's I, obviously I something. When I watched the movie, like. The first time I had suspicions, like I was right away, like, this, right away. This guy no seems like and he's... see, I didn't know from, of course I didn't know because I'm super green on the ship, but I was like, uh, what? Yeah. He's obviously the contrast in here, you know, to, you know, there's gotta be some other type of, um, well, and also they made him creature. a native American. So you immediately, yeah, think, like, like when you talked about wolves, when you talked about wolves like and, and obviously like, you know, schooling and be like, we learn about native history and all the type of stuff and all the mythology with wolves and all that type of stuff. And I was like, right away. I was like, Oh, so he's supernatural himself. I'm like, Oh, that's crazy. So it was, <laughs> it, it was honestly not, I mean, Moods for me, really knew nothing about these. <laughs> do absolutely nothing. <laughs> I didn't honestly going into this. I couldn't tell you one fucking thing. I, like I said, sparkles. I thought were literally glitter on people. I thought it was that shit you. Put I mean, on it people. is literally sparkling there. But no, the whole wolf thing. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's obviously very common mythology and stuff. So, but um, so I, another criticism about this, like I do like the baseball scene the, in conceptually, but like the, any of the fast running in the, these movies is fucking horrendous. Well, no, no, CGI is horrible. That probably leads into CGI the CGI. Is horrible. The whole well, franchise actually, has horrible CG. Yep, horrible. One of the horrible. worst scenes is when you know, Edward puts Bella on his back and he goes, come on, spider monkey or something along those lines. The scene, the scene, the first scene, spider monkey. When they, when, when they finally, you know, figure out what Edward is and stuff. And then she jumps on his back and he runs up the hill and shit. I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) Also, I want to say this. He's trying to go for like a never ending story type of thing. It looked horrible though. It just was This story never did fucking end. I'll tell you that. And also, (laughs) um, I am no longer a Muse fan. Five years. We're not. What no do you longer. mean? The soundtrack to these movies are fire. I, I think the soundtracks are good. There's more needle drops in this movie than fucking a junkie dropping it in fucking forty okay, seconds. Okay, you cannot eights. say you're no longer a Muse fan because I'm just kidding. Song. I saw a Muse in concert and I almost got in a fight with some guy. I think that the music what? was fine for the movies. It, it is what it is. And it, <laughs> I didn't actually almost fight him. I just talked shit to him. I actually was quite. Cousin. I actually Did was quite impressed with it. Your best song came from the good, movie good. soundtrack, Twilight. <laughs> I can honestly like, say I was impressed. About? I was expecting it to be a lot more teeny boppy bullshit, you know, like radio bullshit and stuff. And it, it came across. It, I thought it worked. I thought it worked. I thought the music actually like was probably one of the best things I about the Muse movie. Got paid. I hope Muse laughed all the way to the fucking bank. Well, they did, man. Soundtracks. I mean, doing fucking music for soundtracks can be massive, man. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it worked. They didn't, they didn't like uh, the Paramore the song. Wasn't like Haley Williams like a massive fan of the books or something um, and wrote the song to try to get it in the movie. Is that true? Somebody told me that. Which... I don't know much about it, to be honest. Uh, the Paramore song from Haley Williams. She was oh, like, a yeah, one hundred percent. 
like if you uh, all right so i have all right so i guess I'm we can little, come on there's I, lincoln I'm park bit, i'm a little bit of a nerd you guys i have all the special edition dvds i didn't have to stream them i watched all my own copies they're on showtime so, Ghost, you, so i did a free so you free like trial. you you love them then did I say I love them? I don't know. You said you have all your nerdy. Yeah, and we got lots of terrible edition. movies in our collection, JP, that we don't like, but we own them. Right. I have quite a few people here. But I wouldn't class. I would have been put them in the same class as something like this, though. Fuck. No, no. But like, when you're a collector and shit, like, do you want just like the regular DVD, or do you want no, like special no, edition? I'll buy them. I'll buy the special play. edition. Exactly. I always try to get the best ones so, I can. Yeah. So I didn't say I love them. I do really really enjoy one of these films it's not the first twilight <laughs> i'll tell you that much but uh we'll get there but okay, I so good no i do enjoy um all the extra things that come with all these special editions no that could be interesting no way and fuck out you know you know what would probably kill you honestly no. do you Watching do you, do you know do you know what would actually probably poison and kill you and I was thinking about this. I was all thinking again after the show. <laughs> I was thinking about this. I was about. I think I was on the third one, maybe maybe the fourth one. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know what would fucking kill you if you played a drinking game every time someone said I was trying to protect you, you would fucking <laughs> die oh, really? in this shit, man. The amount that Edward says that and Jake, it's literally these two guys trying to protect her and fight. It's ridiculous. It's like every second or third line is like, I was just doing it to protect you. I left the city to protect you. I was doing this to protect you. Fuck you. Fuck you. She dies like 40 times on her own hands. And you know what else? You know what else is bad about the decisions that are made in this just seems so. Maybe it's because it's supposed to be coming from like a, a teenager, like a high school yeah. or mind. But some of the decisions that are made on everyone's part are so bad. I'm just like, what the fuck? But then I was explained away being, okay, you're a teenager. You do make bad decisions. So, And a 107-year-old vampire probably wouldn't. He probably and, Well, smart. that's that's how you and, that's and how he, you disclaim what I'm saying exactly. And then I'm like, well, with Jacob, it's a little bit different. you know. But with, with uh, Edward, it doesn't really make any sense. He's graduated 80 fucking times. He should so be relatively smart. One of the things smart. that's like really kind of um, stupid about these movies is like – once we get into like the whole Vittori thing and like the the society and the rules like this family is a fucking joke when it comes to the rules like they don't follow the rules at all and you would think for people who had been around so long and, and would. have kept their family alive that they would fucking follow the rules a little better like they bring Bella in, in like hey we're vampires check us out let's go play baseball like uh, and I'm like <laughs> what the fuck you no, know what actually, I mean like all right like, well, let's again, that's going back no, to them no. wanting to be, let's you know, get fit the in. Of, you know. Yeah, let's get let's get in. Okay, basically that scene right there. So, I was th- ready so, to rate. so this so this is what happens. Yeah. Then. So <laughs> we get this. Base- I'm almost done. Well, we, well, we haven't even talked about the climax of the. Film we we get we get this it's baseball bad. scene, and basically James, Victoria, and Lamont show up, and Victoria is like this real kind of super vampire and shit like that. Who is Lamont? Lamont was the Lamont black configuration. That's what they're talking about. Yeah, Lamont was Lamont. Lamont was. Did I say Lamont? Lamont, whatever. They like Lamont. The Lamont config. There you go, man. Yeah, he he was the French dude. We're playing basketball now. He was the French dude, and I think James. I think James was actually like maybe he was the boyfriend of Victoria. James was the little fucking dude from. uh, God, he was in the roommate, and he was also in that fucking boxing or fighting movie. James a little. uh, Never back down. Well. Regardless, looks. regardless, looks so Victoria, he, I think James was kind of like a boy toy to her or whatever. Anyways. Well, I would have killed him too because he had like a man pony. <laughs> yeah, he looked. <laughs> Anyways, he looked so, so what's going on in the, besides all the melodrama relationship that we're having and stuff, basically what's happening is there's a, there's a string of murders that are happening. There's a bunch of fucking people that are ended up dying and shit like that. And, and it gets revealed that it's basically these three people that have been feeding it's on like humans. It's like these rogue vampires. Yeah, they're like, like they're they're they're, they're kind of doing their own thing. They're just they're feeding on humans and stuff. But it's it's so close to where they are that these guys kind of have to get involved in stuff. Anyways, they show up at this ball game and shit kind of goes down and stuff. And and Bella blows out. They're like, oh, fresh, fresh virgin blood. Minute. I won't talk as much about the books as we get into the later. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. They show up there and then they realize that fucking Bella's uh, Bella's a human and Victoria's like now she's like she wants to hunt her kind of thing. See, that's the big issue that I had with the movie versus the book is Victoria. 
Um, she had basically no lines in the book, mm -hmm. and they gave her such more dialogue. I mean, it, which is barely none, but they still. Well, they needed to create a climax here. That's a bad thing. The villain. But they needed to create um, a climax here, so that you got to give somebody like Victoria is the main villain here, basically in this well, in this well, episode. See, that's the thing, though. At the end of this film, I was so confused when I watched it on uh, right before I turned twenty one, as I said. Um, the ending climax is it shows Victoria and I was like, who the fuck is that? Like when mm -hmm. they're at the prom or the dance or whatever, like it's, it's setting up the next film, but I was so mm -hmm. confused because it's not what happened in the book at all. Oh. And yeah. I mean, I, 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 I see like, why they did that though. Like, I, like, like I'm so confused. Like who the fuck is this bitch? Yeah, because yeah. She's literally our big bad. nothing in the book, period. Just a rogue would... fucking leader of this, whatever. She's like the fucking Jesse James gang, man. I mean, vampires. I think if you she don't have that, it's all, even though. fucking like, more. She was well, not the leader of it whatsoever in the first book. Well, that's what I'm saying. You had to create something here, so you introduce this character, you give her, you know, a fucking, you know, an art kind of thing, and I don't know, man. I mean, I get it. I man. was just really confused by the ending of, you know, it showing her at their dance, and then nothing even happens at the dance in the second film. Mm -hmm. You know, it just goes on to like. That makes no goddamn sense to it's me. Just, and it was she's, kind she's of stupid stuck, plot point. She's, she's uh, you know, kind of staking her out, like yeah. to make her move in the in the next movie. Well, I get that. I think I think it makes sense for the film. Stupid. Yeah, right. But if you let, read the book, you'd be confused. Because honestly, when they showed her in the prom for a second, I was like, "Who's that? Oh, is that yeah, one of the other sisters?" And I was like, "Wait, no, that's Victoria." I mean, yeah, no, I'm... I totally thought it was Rosalie because in the books, um, how do you guys know these people's names? I don't know their names. We watched the goddamn film, and I watched Victoria's it too. Name. <laughs> but I totally you... thought that the ending chick at that point in time was Rosalie, the blonde bitch that you know she's at odds with. That is Edward's sister. I yeah. thought that's who that was at the end, and I can't remember. But they were like, "No, that's not. That was the you know fire crotch." That's weird, man. Because yeah, they look completely different. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, yes, they look different, but it just didn't make sense because I read the book. She was almost a non. Well, that, that the fucking movie. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, short and long of it, these three show up. They have this, you know, the boy toy, Victoria's boy toy. James goes fucking nuts, and apparently he's you like, not say boy toy anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of that's kind of because they, no, please say it. that's At because they are. don't explain exactly who the fuck these people are and they're connecting each other over here and hey i love Shawn michaels but um <laughs> but anyways you know this guy apparently is like he's like a super hunter and of course he's the one that smells fucking bella and shit like that and, you know and of course it comes down to more trauma edward and uh and jacob they got a protector and all these sorts of ways because he's like this rogue hunter and shit like that um, one thing leads to another. Um, they kill man, Edward but... e Edward ends up protecting her to the point where he actually ends up killing James in the end of the film. And this is where it plays into the second one where Victoria now is, you know, got a fucking exa exact summer revenge because her boy toy got fucking killed. Um, <laughs> so they had to create this climax with this shit. And I'm just like, holy fuck, like all this shit just went crazy. But like I'm, I'm expecting like the, the baseball fight was kind of cool and stuff in the end battle and shit. But I got to say, man. The fucking scene where Bella is in the in the hospital bed, her acting was might be the worst thing in the whole franchise. <laughs> that shit was no. like blowing my mind no. bad. I was All like, right. well, let's let's fucking end this one, dude. Yeah, I can't take this anymore. Well, no, I thought okay, we were talking so about the movies. Before we end it, Edward bit her and almost sucked her dry, but that's never even talked about again. Almost, right? Yeah. Well. I don't well, actually, mean. actually, that's a good point because Edward or not Edward, James actually bites her a couple times and she's basically dying and turning into a vampire. And basically what happens is you got to suck the venom. Edward out. sucks all the venom out of her and obviously saves her because he doesn't want to let her turn and shit like that. If he wants to, but, if she, if, but, if he's going to allow the, her to be turned, he's going to do it himself kind of thing. The right? conflict of it is that it's hard to stop. Yeah. Yeah. But he stops. Because he good. loves her. Well, yeah. That, yeah, that, he doesn't that, know her. And that's how they play it off. His yeah, passion is the there. Big issue that I have. What, you know, what would they discuss? You know, for someone, uh, JP, well, that you about suck to me dry. <laughs> It's it's, it's okay. supposed to show it, his restraint. It, it, it's it, supposed to Bella is never dry. It's okay. supposed to show his dry. restraint and and his <laughs> well, devotion to her. Kristen Stewart. It seems like she has a dry vagina. Yeah, she she's dry all over. Probably real life. She's a bitch, man. Like. 
I can't even believe how unlikable these lead characters are, man. It's just crazy to me. Like how you could have Thanks. so many. It's just blowing my mind. I've never seen right, so many movies with so many bad characters. But yeah, anyways, I'm done. I'm done anyways, JP, I'm really shocked here. You're the one that's trying to move this on considering you're the one that said you like these movies. So I never said I like these movies. Yeah, you did. Well, we think you do. We'll know, we'll know when we hear your ratings, So brother. then you need to stop trolling and saying I'm all being, these movies aren't I'm that bad. I'm being objective. Right, yes, and so am I. I'm giving you my fair And I'm also trying to explain the, the movies because we kind of had to talk about the climax because I, that leads I know, into part two. we did two. talk about it. <laughs> All right. Actually, we didn't. We were we were done right there. Like that, there wasn't no, much. No, I more had to, to explain the whole end of the movie because you're like, let's rate this, and I'm like, fuck, we need to talk about that because it leads into part two. Well, we didn't even talk about James and how he died, and that's. The I, did, I, did. I, I, I did. I did. I did say we that. Talked about I did say that. Uh, I said our, our time about James is more time than he had on screen. Yeah, I did. I, did, I explained what Dave happened to James. Parker, I kind of love you right now. Fucking I mean, Edward. It's the truth. Like, Edward kills James. Two and a half minutes. Edward kills James after he bites Bella, and uh, then Edward saves Bella, and then of course Victoria's fucking pissed that her boy toy is dead. Okay, let's rate this. <laughs> so you can yeah, suck out the all poison. So should we leave JP for last, or should we make him go first? <laughs> I don't, know if, I don't even know how you guys' order works ever. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> right, oh, I just, I just, I just wait, always pick on, people. Hold on, hold on. Are you being serious? What? Uh, I never got it. We just start with someone, and then they all rate, and then the next time we start one ahead. So The next person. Okay. Was, well, know, I, if we have me. guests on, I usually start with the guests because it's just how I do it. So I'll start with Lacey. So okay. Okay. Start. Um, I was – all right, so from obviously, I feel like a broken record by saying I read the book. Like that's so stupid and cliche, right? <laughs> no, it's a good uh, thing. Somebody did. But oh. I was really invested in the book, and I felt like it. You know, I was invested in it. I'll say. Um, when I watched the film, it did not translate the way that I thought it would in my head, because I had read the book. And the characters that I had thought in my head were completely different. Uh, Bella was definitely not who I thought <laughs> should have been the ideal casting, period. Um, I do warm up to her in later films, but not a lot. Um, for this one, I do like the story and I do like the premise of it all. However, again, uh, I guess drink according to Dan Chase's rules because I'm going to reference the Vampire Diaries. They do it so much fucking goddamn better watch the Vampire Diaries. If if you're even a nah. smidge of a fan of these films, watch the Vampire Diaries because it's so much more bloody and it's such a more fun time. But uh, for this film, this was the hardest one to watch out of all five of them. It was a struggle. It really was. That. Um, well, JP, so, that's her struggling. No, no, I, I agree. I'm just saying I don't know if I would oh, feel I the same way. Oh, I see. I thought you wanted this rated, about what, JP? JP. What would you feel the same way about? What's that? What would you not feel the same way about? This one was the, the hardest one. It is, by uh, far. I don't know, man. Uh, Part four not is... Not for me. Ugh. Not for I think. You know, like, the characters were just so underdeveloped. In the book, they're all fleshed out. So, yeah, it was a hard watch. It really was. I'm not saying it isn't a hard watch. I'm just saying, it, like, personally, there I are two, two other ones that we... are, like, dread for me. No, no. They get better as they go on. Mm -mm. Uh, this uh, is by I'm far the worst film in the franchise for me. Okay. For me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a five. Five, five. Uh, Dave. Uh, three and a half. If I was given subjectively, they'd all be halves. But I'm trying to be objective, so I bumped it up to a three and a half because <laughs> I, don't, I don't even really I like. Actually, the... lowered my score after talking to you guys. It was I did, a six. I did too. I, I, I think. I, I think that. I think these I really are that my thing. Happen. Like these are like the mar the the like teen Marvel versions. Like, and I do like Marvel movies for entertainment purposes, but I don't uh, like. Did hold you them. like the New Mutants? I didn't watch it. I mean, they they postponed that. It's weird. I just talked about that movie well, up and I recorded today. To see what your rating is on that, because it's very kind of I feel like on par. I kind of liked yeah, it actually. Was, it's, no, it's, better. It's, it's better. It's better than this. Oh, oh, New Mutants so much. It, New Mutants is way better than this. Yeah, it is, <laughs> no, it's not. Top it's, three and a half. It is. I, I agree. It's better. <laughs> Barely. 
So three and a half, Dave GP. Uh, yeah, I, I came down a little bit on this one after talking about it. Uh, I'm at a four and a half out of five. I think it's I think it's a below average movie, crit- like critically, uh, and that's not that's being completely objective without like the fact that you know it's a team. I think I am too. I mean, I'm really I was at a five and a half before I came down a full point. Oh wow! Yeah, you know but when when you discuss it and put all the problems on on display it really kind of made me see that there was more problems than i even considered so Mm -hmm. yeah right right. okay you know for somebody that can't be completely opposed to teen dramas and shit i mean i grew up in the 90s and one of my favorite shows was 90210 i won't lie but it was also that time too so i'm very familiar with that type of teen drama and shit like that but i mean i always felt like some of these shows did it pretty pretty well and shit and like i said going into this you know, obviously being super objective and stuff. I was expecting a lot more from a bigger budget franchise that was, you know, of this type of level. I was expecting the acting and I usually don't talk about acting. When I talk about a lot of the movies that I, that I review, I don't mention acting in indie films because they're fucking indie films. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't, I I just don't feel the need to, to harp on that. But when you're talking bigger budget films, Man, dude, it, it's a poly, man, but it's more about the writing here. The core narrative, I think, just sucks. I think the development of the characters really fucking sets up this whole franchise to be a complete fucking fail, man. It's just bad, dude. Like, you know, we'll get to it later on with that and stuff, but the effects are bad in this, you know, and just nothing fucking works for me, man. I, I wasn't, like, feeling anything that was going on. So much padding of time. Every movie in this franchise is two hours long. There's so much padding of time. In it. It's just like <laughs> it's padding. So it's so. Well, padding, if there's one positive, the credits are all like ten minutes. Ex- plus. I brought that up actually pre <laughs> pre when we were talking about it earlier. But yeah, there's so much padding. There's so much downtime in these movies and shit, and and which makes you question the whole thing. You're just like, okay, there's not enough development in these characters. But then they're padding the time with other bullshit. I'm like, what the fuck? It just that plays into how bad the writing is right there. It's just garbage. It's a spectacle. Um. You know, there is some decent, you know, the music actually is probably one of the biggest points here. And I brought up the whole native thing. I think that was kind of interesting. But, you know, the mythology that they try to develop and shit, I think is pretty damn basic, too. I did like the the aspect of the, you know, the vampires and the Collins. They have this history and they have this treaty. I don't even think we even brought up the treaty, but I do like the aspect of the treaty and stuff. And I think I don't think it was in here yet. Yes, it is. I think they brought it up in in the first movie. Yeah, Jacob. No. No, nope, don't they? Right. Don't they? They don't bring nope. up the treaty. No, because okay. they don't know he's a werewolf yet. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Right. Jacob's barely in this movie. That's right. That's right. They do bring it up in the second one. Okay. Whatever. It. it whatever. It doesn't matter. But um. So that's a positive for the second one then. But overall, man, I could not get into this shit. I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. But man, for a Hollywood budget of film, man, Jesus Christ, this is this is pretty low fucking tier. I'm coming in a three and a half. Also, it's bad. It's really <laughs> bad. It's just it's there's no way that would have made the Hall of Pain because it would have to have three three and a half and it still wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Right. So I, I just I, I almost don't even want these in the Hall of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like just seeing them there with all the other horror movies is just like ah. Eh. Well, it's not even a horror movie though. No, I know. they're not horror like, at all. I was like, do you really want to call this episode two hundred four? Do you want to be like Valentine's Day special? <laughs> Valentine's Day Massacre, our souls. Yeah. Bellatine's special. Bellatine's Day. Bella, don't ever fucking speak her name. <laughs> well, we have to. At least, at least for a couple more hours. It's my birthday. Can I ask for something? Kiss me. I love you. You're my only reason to stay alive, if that's what I am. Oh, paper guy. All right, so moving along here into the next year, 2009. Um, it's one thing that was actually kind of interesting. They did all these movies within five years, which is kind of crazy. You don't see that very often in franchises where they don't skip multiple years, but they did it here. Uh, 2009. You don't the tw- say. The Twilight Saga, New Moon, directed uh- by Chris White's or Chris... Chris White's, I think. I don't know how to say his fucking name. Um, Has he done anything? I don't think he really directed anything that I'm familiar with. 
I think he was he was an uncredited director on American Pie. So. Oh wow. Okay. Um, that's pretty. How do you get this movie? I always question these decisions sometimes. It's kind of strange, but it's very fr- what? Question the decisions sometimes. Like how oh. he got this movie, how he got to direct it. Yeah, like oh, he doesn't really yeah. have anything oh, under his man. belt, and we're and we're looking at another big budget film, and you know a follow up to obviously a very very smash box office hit. So, which uh, is the most suicidal film of the year? Most what? suicidal? Why? Because it was set in the North Pacific Northwest, where fucking everyone dies or kills themselves. No, do you guys not remember the plot of this film? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah, getting yeah, apart. Yeah, okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. All right. Uh, Synopsis. Edward leaves Bella after an attack that nearly claimed her life. And in her depression, she falls into a, yet another difficult relationship. <laughs> this time with her close friend, <laughs> Jacob Black. And that's... His yep. name's Jacob Black? I did not know that. Yep. What do you mean they talk about it like eight times? I swear this Dude, guy wasn't I'm paying attention. I'm horrible with names, bro. <laughs> So am I, and I can remember he that. He watched right? him at work. <laughs> Right, I did right. watch them. Well, oh, did he actually watch them then? <laughs> I mean, I did. Like, was there much details that I didn't remember? I mean, I feel like I watched them. <laughs> Dude, Bella almost when... dies like forty-seven times in this movie. It's because of the bad decisions <laughs> well, she's all an these characters make. Junkie guys. <laughs> yeah, she. Like, you can if... tell she's an adrenaline junkie in her face by not acting. If, yeah, <laughs> let me so let me let me say this. A thousand ways to die. Nobody <laughs> knows how to die. ride a fucking dirt bike in this movie. Yeah, I'm You're gonna say that right now, bro. Bike. Huh? You're obsessed with the dirt bike, dude. It's done so poorly. <laughs> like, like it, it does not. They're not even shooting. They're not even showing a shot of. They don't even have a stunt double to show a shot of somebody riding a dirt bike. Like, do you know what it reminded me of? Like, I don't know if you guys ever watched Full House at all. Yeah, but there's bit. an episode where Uncle Joey teaches Michelle how to ride a bicycle without training wheels. <laughs> Okay, you know, this movie, man, so long. I was literally so long. shaking my head right away. I'm like, okay, so I just find it to be so over extreme, the lengths that they're going to, again, going back to protect Bella. So she's turning, what, 18, I think it was her 18th birthday. And they have what, uh, I think the, the Edwards family is going to host the party or whatever and shit like that. And that's when Jasper kind of loses his shit over her scent and stuff. And then, and then Edward basically comes to the conclusion that you know like he needs to you know kind of break up with her and you know they need to have their separation because you know she's obviously a you know she might get hurt you know they can't really trust the family that much and stuff and i'm like man dude like you're gonna go to these extreme levels where you're just gonna fucking break up and then you know switch cities and and just it just seems so damn extreme like yeah but they also said that they they had they needed to kind of leave too because they were of that age to where they kind of needed to bounce to a new place anyway i know but carlisle was getting old but then they come back like i said no but part three but my thing right exactly i get that but But, but we don't know that at this time but you know at this point though i mean Okay, you're just coming off that whole battle that you just had here. And um, what's the redhead chick's name again? I already forgot Victoria. it. Victoria. Victoria, man. I mean, at this point, don't you think that she might be coming back for revenge or anything? It just seemed it's such a bad yeah, idea to, like, leave her alone. <laughs> just to leave her alone after something major just happened. And it's not like this has taken place too far in the future. It's, like, very relative to hey, the time. Hey, Moods, what do you expect? They're hundreds of years old vampire. They're not very smart. They no, haven't had any see, time to learn anything. Again, They've going back. school 400 times, but they're morons. Exactly. The decision making seems ludicrous to me. Like, you would never just leave, up and leave her like this for any point. I mean... You know something's got to be going down. The boy toy's dead. Yes, I did it again. And... No. It's gross. No, I'm going to say boy toy. Now that I know it bugs you guys, I'm just going to rock it. I'm completely, I'm completely secure in my masculinity. Can we put Shawn Michaels' song in here? I, I'm going to, now that you mentioned, I'm going to put it right there. Please. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. If I remember, <laughs> if I remember, you actually remind me to do it, I'll put... Because it has, like, the I'll, I'll put the theme song. <laughs> For the video version, I should actually put in clips too. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know, man. I think this movie, they, this one is honestly, 
how it's kind of dubbed as you know the depression one is it's very fucking true man this one is just it's like a huge lull for me anyways like narrative wise and shit like this is when she obviously starts up a relationship with jacob and stuff and then things are revealed and stuff and you know about the shape shifting and the wolves and shit like that and oh man this one just feels like almost two hours of padding i, I don't There's know no, nothing happens i said nothing that, that's happens. what that's what you guys were saying i kind of like this one more yeah because they um, have dirt bikes in it and you're like, I think, I, like I think that I just feel that the relation as a romance, like the relationship between Jacob and, and Bella is done so much better. And Edward's not in the fucking movie for most of it. No, he's really, I not just think it. that it, I think that it's just as a romance, it's just a better film. Well, my favorite scene actually came from this movie, um, which is basically Jacob on steroids. Okay. And when they go to the movie, she has Mike. You know, the I like that part too. <laughs> the, that that whole scene was good because there's and like funny. the the funny like face punch thing and like I thought that was like okay they're actually putting some creative comedy in this. Well, no, the best dialogue that comes oh. from it is this film, which is when they're at the you know movie theater and you know they're both having their hands out and she's choosing which hand she wants to hold. Which she, Mike has. she doesn't want to hold either of them. Which Mike has a much bigger role in the books than he does in the movie, which makes a lot more sense. But, um, you know, obviously there's like a stomach flu going around that is a real thing. And <laughs> and Jake is going through his changes. Like, so he's like hormonal and angry. <laughs> and, you know, Mike gets up in the middle of the movie and he goes to the bathroom and he pukes. And then <laughs> he comes it back out and like... Bell and Jake are having a moment on the stairs and like Jake kind of interrupts and he's like, he's like, Ugh, I'm sick. I might need to go to the hospital. <laughs> and Jake fucking gets up and he was like, I will push you in the hospital. No, like, he's, I like don't know. he's like, Maybe, oh, you're sick. Maybe you should go to the hospital. I'll put you in the hospital. Yes. <laughs> that is actually a funny line. Yeah. So he's all juiced funny. out too. But yeah. that, was it implied that like when he was going <laughs> no, through his change, it. like he created muscles for him or something like that? Like, oh yeah, was he well, that was he that that's built? Just natural in puberty, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, well, you genuinely gain more muscle. And... Well, dude, that that's that, that wasn't a natural build. That's from fucking lifting and working out and shit. Yeah, he's yeah. that's not natural. And he Trust me, that was not. Natural. I'm just saying, like in in. Yeah. It, it's natural to change as like regular humans. So only imagine what it is with like a werewolf. Is well, that, but that's what I'm saying. Are they implying that he was just kind of like this normal kid? And then when he did his full change into the werewolf, like he yeah, became he this like, yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, but then it opened up the book. They're all like that. But then they're it opened like, up the door for the rest of the film. And it, it, there's actually a funny line. I think it's like in the third or fourth one or whatever. And Edward says like, does this guy ever, does he have a fucking shirt? But it's true. Yeah. Like every fucking scene after it's revealed that he's a vamp or that he's a werewolf. He doesn't wear a shirt, and it's for obvious reasons. I think some people would be like, oh, I'll put a yeah, shirt on. Yeah, would but... you wear a shirt if you look like that? Well, no, he well, doesn't wear a shirt because he keeps tearing them every time he turns into a, right. into a werewolf. <laughs> but he well, never takes his pants off, like though. Up a few times. But that... he never takes his pants off, which bugs me because I'm like, he's tearing up his pants. They, they fucked that up a few times where he's a he's a werewolf and then he comes back to normal when he has pants on. I'm like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. I know. I noticed that too well, a couple yeah, times. Just so he wants Why take door. your shirt off if you're going to wreck your shorts every time? Fuck off. Like, come on. It's just uh, eye candy for the Lacey Lou's of the world. It's a big debate that sparked in my household. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I just said he's eye candy for the Lacey Lou's. I mean, you're the female here. I'm pretty sure that you're the only one on the show that's attracted to Jacob. Maybe. Am I no, I don't know. he had he had fucking weird hair. Pass. Well, he cut his hair by this time. He does. Well, no, eventually. not at the point when he's telling me he's gonna put the kid in the hospital. I was it, not. It's weird. Well, no, I feel I'm like, talking no, about I feel like more <laughs> chicks are attracted Jacob. to Edward. I'm talking about the scene where she goes to see him after he does his full change and it's all piss and rain and stuff, and he's got no shirt on. I'm like, oh, look at this fucking tough guy. You know, it's piss and ass rain, and it's cold rain in the Pacific Northwest. It's cold rain. No, he's not. He's not my flavor. It's that Canadian rain. Wait, so so you're you're Team Edward? You would say then? Um, I'm, I'm reading team. the book. I was definitely Team Jacob because everything was so much more fleshed out. Uh, watching the films, she definitely has better chemistry with, uh, you know, Tyler Latner as opposed to Robert Pattinson, even though they were together. Which I totally think is one of those things to where they just kind of made you be a couple just to. Wait, so they were uh, dating in real life. What do you mean you didn't know this? 
Who was Come dating? On. Who was How dating? the fuck would I ever know that? Who was dating what in do real you life? Mean she cheated on him with the director from uh, the Snow White movie she did. Okay, Dude, who was I dating who? It was a huge thing. I don't what care about that stuff. I, I, yeah, I, I just no, thought that that's... was interesting. That, that's the equivalent to me being like, you ain't never seen Zombie Bloodbath 2, Rage of the Undead. <laughs> that's like, you didn't know that she cheated on Edward in real life? Well, or, no, or, like, I'm like, I mean, this, These movies were like a cultural phenomenon. Oh, so. sure, but she I didn't actually, know. What, what year, hey, what year was this? What she year actually was, was dating about, Robert Pattinson in real life? Crazy. Yes. Did not. It was 2009. Yeah, they were about to be engaged, but then she cheated on him with uh, the director of Snow White and the Huntsman or whatever. And then they had and to continue now, doing look movies. It up. Google it right now, movies. And now, I, isn't she? Isn't you. she uh, like a lesbian now, or at least bisexual? Oh no, she's definitely, you know. And so isn't they, she like with a woman? And so they yeah. had to continue doing these I movies thought... after they broke up. Uh, no, no, no. This was after. Oh, okay. Did I didn't. Re- I see. I don't know when Huntsman. that movie was made. Okay. She did Snow White and the Huntsman, and she fucked the director. But then she came back and said that she only said she fucked the director because that's what everybody assumed. Mm. But that's basically what ended their relationship. And but this, I and, honestly and, think that it was one of those things to where you know you're put in a situation of what dealing you're right. with. The, the public wants you to be with this person, so I feel like they just kind of were in that relationship just to be in it to promote these films. I don't know about that, man. That's a, that's know. a big fucking commitment. I don't know. It's not I even think, a real relationship. Yeah, all they gotta do is, all they gotta do is show up to a restaurant twice together holding together, hands. Though? Do you know how what? the paparazzi works? All they have to do is show up to a restaurant holding hands, and they're automatically a couple. They don't have to do nothing. That's all. Well, it is. they said that they had a. Well, people are whatever the media wants them to be. So. Yeah, yeah but well, I thought she said that they were actually a couple. Yeah, but they could have been actually a couple. All they had to do was show up to a restaurant with holding yeah, hands, and the media would say they were. They wanted to be private. Um, and they didn't want to give the public what they wanted, apparently. But at the same time, everybody knew they were together. Look, and I think it's one of those cases. The director. Where... You do five movies with somebody that you're in, you know, an on-screen relationship with, and you're hanging out with them constantly. Like, but yeah, you're it's on-screen. easy to kind of is you know, better with the other actor, dating. especially when you're younger. No, it's just life imitating art, right there, man. Fucking Kirsten Stewart is just a, you know, Belle is a bitch. She's a bitch in real life too, apparently. Cheating and shit. That's oh, not cool. That's not really cool. Know that? No, no. I, honestly, no. I don't follow tabloid shit. Like you could tell me probably stuff that ha- I wouldn't know. I, I just don't fucking follow that shit. I really don't. I really <laughs> yeah, don't. No, man. They were together in real life, like, and they don't talk, talk negatively about each other at all. Which I wouldn't I think even say cool. anything. But if, if a paparazzi uh, yeah, asked me about somebody, I'm like, I don't, was I don't care. Very brokenhearted about the fact that she fucked the director from Snow White and the Huntsman. <laughs> yeah, and then Dave, it'll be, it'll say like, Dave said he doesn't care about George Romero. I would never say that. I you know what I'm saying? But that's how, yeah. it would, that's how it would be published. I would just say no comment every time they ask me. So and then they'd be like, Dave has no comment about George Romero, his favorite. Why are they asking me about George Romero? Does anybody want to talk about this movie? Uh, oh. Let's just um, get into the thick of it here. So Okay, so basically, yeah, so we have you know Bella and Jacob they're kind of starting their relationship and stuff and then there's a scene there's a key scene in this film where you know something happens and um basically she's I don't know why she's walking in the forest I can't remember why the fuck she's there she's walking in the forest and anyways basically I was going to say the, the Lamont configuration shows up Laurent one of the um, one of the rogue vampires shows up there Lamont no, he was actually way more likable in the book so this <laughs> he just magically okay. appears but anyways basically they have this confrontation he's obviously going to attack bella and a pack of wolves fucking attacks him and kills him cgi and they, wolves and the cgi wolves and then it's revealed at this point that um jacob and his uh, other tribesmen are shape-shifting um uh, werewolves so that's kind of how we get fully you know introduced to the mm-hmm. that well, type of storyline and stuff so we didn't actually talk about why uh, Edward left, which was, you know, they had a birthday party for Bella. I, I did. I it. completely. Oh. Are you not listening? Because that's like the third time in the show you've <laughs> actually brought up something I completely talked about. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah we talked. About I literally it. brought that up because I, I thought it was another bad I, decision. I, I, th- I just thought it was another her. really <laughs> poor decision in the show. Like, you know, he's all about protecting no, her, but he's going to leave her. So, so no. yeah, so Bella's mad depressed in this yeah. one because her love of her life, J- those uh, screams were Edward. so bad. 
That and was the most cringe part in the whole series oh, when she's, she's screaming. On her bed. I couldn't even. I didn't even know what was happening for a second. I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> oh, she's she's in she pain. I was like, "I didn't I didn't know what was happening." Right. But the thing is, so, Alice has this supersonic vision to where she could see the future. So, oh, well, there's if lots she of plot holes with that. Happen. See, there's lots of plot holes with that, man. It, it's kind of strange with that whole how she can see the future and stuff, and then certain times she can't, and it's weird. Well, it, it it's not. I think the way that you were supposed to interpret it is that it's not something she controls. It's just something that that happens upon her. I never really got that impression. It was something that well, you she could couldn't... change the. No, future. I feel like she can see it. I yeah. mean, especially yeah. in the last two films. Like, yeah, like the point in this film where too. she goes, what do you mean? Well, where she thought that she, she was going to kill herself. Future. Where she was going to kill herself. Where she's going to jump off the fucking thing, and then she's like, "Oh, interpreted that, you know, that you were killing yourself." But she, like that just came. To, like she can well, see but, the future. No, but the thing is, they they explain what happens is because Jacob was around. It messed up her vision. Yeah, but at the same time, though, Jacob wasn't around at her birthday party scene when Jasper was going to attack her because, you know. You're right. She... It's bullshit. That's right. That's totally right. Yeah. Wait, you're so right. you're telling me that she could can she can do it whenever she wants? Yeah. That's what I was under the impression what? of. What? Yeah. Well, I no, mean, how not? She's like, she does well, it at the very end all the time. Uh, when, when, you know, we get to yeah, but it, uh, I don't Breaking think it's Dawn Part she... 1, she, when she's, you know, obviously pregnant. She says, I can no longer see Bella's future. So she could see her future this entire time. Yeah. I don't, I just never took it as she can do it. Like, it, it, like, whenever she says, I can no longer see Bella's future, I thought of it as like she's not, no longer getting visions of Bella's but, future. But the, uh, no, the Bella's future about can to change. Die. That's why right. She can't and see you're, and Dave's right. The future but can change. They do change. Why can she not see the party that she planned of how it's going to go awry? Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like that she can't do it whenever she wants it. It just it comes to her. No, like, that's that's, not, that's how no, like uh, no. that's how most psychics claim. Yeah, but it but, works. but they, <laughs> they, they, she's not a psychic. She's a fucking vampire, JP. With and psychic also in the, abilities, in the fourth and fifth see? movie. No, the fourth and fifth movie did <laughs> it, it ruins that point. It, the powers start working differently then, and they do say that the vampires can harness their power and make them more powerful. So that could be a, a fill in a plot hole. But they don't ever show her trying to harness her power, so fuck off. And plus, she's well, really old, I mean, so she's always off. seen her ending up with Edward, so why could she not foreshadow this event to make sure that this whole film doesn't even fucking happen? Or let well, Edward not why... know. Oh, nothing. dude, I remember now. I remember. I remember. So, yeah, Victoria is – she's able – not Victoria. Um, no, or Alice? maybe – No, that, I think it – yeah, I think it's – I was getting yeah, them mixed up. Not mixed up, but I was getting – the ideas behind it mixed up i think that with um with bella like you know when she starts doing the um the thrill acting shit or stuff stuff like that um yeah. i think it has something to, that throws off the visions too doesn't that play into like the vision she can't see the visions properly if she's doing like thrill inducing fucking whatever like jumping off of cliffs and stuff like but that she's around jacob well yeah her right. adrenaline but yeah that they explain that because yeah Alex yeah can't and, it's Jacob, but what happened during the birthday party? Jacob wasn't around. Yeah, yeah right. That right. was dumb. Right. So, well, I think what, I think what, they're what, implying what that Bella they, figured it out. On. If she's doing crazy what? shit, that throws off the visions, and that that's yeah. No, the thing that Bella is doing is the reason she's doing these things is so she can see Edward. Yeah, because right. Edward's warning her. Mm -hmm. Like because he said he asked her to make a promise, like don't do anything crazy. Right. Oh, that's what leads into exactly, exactly, and then and, that leads in. There's a bunch of she, there's a bunch of like basically miscommunication and, like, and stuff oh, after she jumps off the cliff and stuff like that, and then it, eventually what happens is, um, it kind of gets back to Edward that uh, that Bella had actually died, right? So it looks like she yeah, died because she fucking jumped off a cliff. That's right, because Alice's vision of jumping off the cliff or so whatever probably. it was was kind of distorted because she didn't get to see the rest, right? That's Look, right. anytime you're dealing with psychic shit, you always kind of have to take it with a yeah, grain of salt. Yeah, psychic like, and, that, that, sometimes, and shit. sometimes it doesn't. We psychic don't know how to find well, Yeah, I think it plays into something to do with her like thrill. A psychic, it's a vampire that has visions. I wouldn't even yeah, say yeah. this is psychic. Yeah, but that's that is her, what psychic that's is. That's vampire ability. They all have different vampires. Right. Uh, some some have strength. You well, wouldn't the, say the that's not is, a strength. That's a vampire ability. Well, the, the psychic thing is psychic abilities work different. Sometimes you can predict what someone's thinking. Sometimes you can see into the future. The psychic is a broader term. No, I just want to make think. it clear that my point is that Jacob was nowhere around 
during that birthday party. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're 100 percent right. It makes no sense. Yeah, but but I mean that you can like you how, how, you can how, say that with every fucking that, scene maybe. in the movie. You know what I'm and, thinking yeah, though. You're, you're maybe right. you have to look. Maybe what? like you know she wasn't looking at that time. No, no, no there, there's that's... distortion. But, but she there's... sees into the future so far ahead sometimes. Yeah, and there's also distortion there. I think it has. I think the reason why the miscommunication happens with uh, with um, Bella, you know, jumping off the cliff and you know, obviously not dying, but they think that she died, kind of thing, is I think it has something to do with the superpowers of Victoria, if I remember correctly. I think that she was the one that was kind of distorting the visions. Yeah, I she... think you're right too. I think that did happen. I, now that I'm remembering, because I remember her saying, I. I remember I remember there was some dialogue there and stuff and there was something that she was she has these superpowers and she distorted to the fact and that's what leads it I'm pretty fucking sure that's what it is now so Victoria's presence was the one fucking up the visions which led to the whole Edward freaking out and going to Italy and stuff yeah. and then yeah because yeah. she was under the water that's well, right and I'm not even sure if you guys noticed or not but clearly Victoria is a completely different actress in the third film did notice did or didn't did? notice. Dude, I didn't notice that either. I didn't notice. <laughs> so they got someone that looked like her and they, they had the same hair. No. That's for sure. No, they did not. No. Uh, no, in the third one, it's brighter, isn't it? It's, it's uh, brighter. The third, uh, in the third film, it's Bryce Dallas Howard. But isn't it like very uh, red? But, isn't it very red? But, but was Lamont the, the same actor? Uh, <laughs> Lamont <laughs> configuration. Was he wasn't the in the actor. third one. Lamont. The Lamont configuration was dead. With these guys. He was these dead. Guys in the Hellraiser review kept calling the Lament configuration the Lamont configuration. Dude, if you fucking read the subtitles, it comes up Lamont on su- on some of them. Am I supposed to trust that you can you, read? <laughs> <laughs> and and I swear I've heard people say Lamont. It's like La Machan or so. It's it sounds it, close. It, to it actually is the Lament, isn't it? Is it is Lament. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like La Machan or something. Like if you watch the but fucking, to us it's Lament, the work print of Part Four, they're fucking when they're in French, man. I'm telling you, it sounds like Lamont. So fuck yeah, off. Fine. It's so still funny well, though. No, but the thing is, I think. All right, so. So basically, what the drama ensues is that. Basically, um, his sister tells Edward that she's dead and or something's happened or whatever. And, you know, so he fucking freaks out. He goes to Italy. (laughs) He goes to Italy because he's because now the depression is switched from from Bella to Edward. And he well, he's been depressed. Of of course. But now he's super depressed. Now he's suicidal. And he he goes to the commission, which all which is called the the Volteri. They're like the head of the vampire, like in the world, basically. They're the ones that kind of run everything. It's like the commission of the mob and stuff, right? Yeah, so it's anyways, like the vampiric overlord. Yeah, they're, they're, they're overlords. They're like, you know, yeah, the Volturi is the name of the three guys. They make the rules. Anyways, he says to them, he's like, you know, I want to I want to fucking die. And they're like, no, we're not going to kill you because you got special powers that are, you know, could be great um, help to us in the future and stuff like that. So, you know, of course, he fucking loses his mind here and, and his idea of basically dealing with the situation is he want he's decides he's going to expose himself to the humans and uh, that's basically you know going to lead to some bad shit right there so i think the, the Volturi are the most horror aspect of these movies well yeah i mean the, they're kind of they're kind of evil they're like yeah, menacing looking and a little did you scary think that if you hadn't read the books did you actually think that the Volturi were going to come back in a big way or yeah yeah i figured what like in the end of it i figured they would be like like in the end like are you talking like after like in part four and five well no at this point like i mean we're only at the second film oh i I thought you were talking about in the future like coming back and okay yeah i figured they might i mean they established them somewhere as five movies they gotta have a big show established but at the same time i feel like there are other books or films that you know kind of establish their villains much more well i thought victoria was gonna have a bigger role in the movies than than they actually she actually does well (laughs) well, she doesn't even she actually has a bigger role in the movies than she did in the book Mm -hmm. yeah kind of 
Is, is this one in the very beginning when they see Romeo and Juliet in school? Or is oh that the my third god, one? that's so cliche. Where she yeah. is that the second or third one? Scene is where she has the Romeo and Juliet. Dude, it's so cheesy. Dude, it's so it's cheesy. It's so horseshit because the movie wants to <laughs> foreshadow the tragic story, and then it wants its cake but wants to eat it too. But then it doesn't deliver. This whole movie pulls all its fucking punches. The whole, whole series pulls its punches. It's not going to end tragically because it's very PG. Yeah, but don't fucking don't. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't reference the great no, tragedies it, like that this, and then not this do. This is so anything. PG though, and I think it, that's the it problem. It pulls all with its that. punches, man. It has it has no balls. It has no heart. No, no. The the blood. I feel like this movie's so anticlimactic when it's too. Not even dealing with vampirism. I don't mind the blood or anything, but it's just like you can't reference great tragedies and then not follow through. Like it's just fucking get the fuck. You don't deserve to do it. Right. See, I, at, first I, I, at first I was going to say that I kind of l- liked it because of the just I, I'm always a fan when like, you know, in Elm Street when they're in school and they're reading something about dreams or something like that. I just like that stuff. But I didn't realize Sorry, I, was trying to do I didn't, the I didn't realize that the point of like <laughs> that they don't fall through on the tragedy because I never read fucking Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Um, now that it. But, you yeah, that makes movie? sense, Dave. I, I agree with you then. Yeah, they shouldn't fucking show it. Yeah, I know they want to get it in your head, but and and then set I you up like yeah, it's it's kind of misleading. You know, it's misleading. Two. Is this two or three that happened? I couldn't remember if it was part two or three that happened. In. I I just thought I that it's it was a one. reference to like romance. I didn't no, really think it, of, they, like, they, yeah, it's misleading because they don't follow through with it completely. I I just feel like this whole the whole end of this movie Second like it, it just feels super anticlimactic too. I don't know what it is about this one. It, it, it just, feels like it's a It See, just here's the thing about this one that I like it is. All the problems I had with the first one about like the lack of character development, like that overdoes it in this one. It's all character development. Like yeah, there's this, not this much one... that happens in this one, but I still I liked it more. I don't know. It just worked for me. This better. one just felt like it was a lot of padding. I mean, we basically once we get to Italy and shit like that. So what happens is, you know, of course, Alice and uh, Bella kind of save the day and they they basically find Edward before he exposes himself to the humans and stuff like that. Um, where and, he sparkles in the sun and where he sparkles in the sun which is like <laughs> okay l- let's actually look at that if that She's actually funny. happened in real life nobody would even fucking that's care what I yeah, but like, these oh, superstitious that's cool. people like, what do you well, yeah, you're kind of right. It is. It's like, where he's doing it, though. That's the and, thing. And it's a bunch of stereotypical Italian right. characters. Yeah, that's where he's doing it, right? They would know. That's the point this of where he's doing it. He has a lot it. of stereotypical characters from different countries. They're like, well, you gotta have the Italians be this, and then the Russians. That's like later on but still it's it's very like bottom of the barrel stereotypical garbage writing that shows no actual depth within what you know what you're talking about i don't know actually i have to pose you guys a question because uh dan watched the first two films with me he was really kind of pissed that he didn't get to watch the third film because he's the favorite. damn it dave or dan uh, the, don't the do it the third one's better than the second and first i'd say yeah no uh and it's directed by david slade so that's yeah Right. That's a big, that's a big draw for a lot of people, I suppose. But it was shocking to me to find out that I was like, "Hold the fuck!" Really, dude? I, I like I've seen everything he's done, I, except for this one, and I was like, I, I didn't realize he Derek, directed this. And I, I did too. Like Derek times. mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, Holy like yeah, remember because Derek wanted to do this show. Because I always fucking look at the directors when I'm like, I'm like, oh, did they do anything else? And I'm like, well, I knew, I knew the name, so I was like, I was surprised to see the name on part three. I was like, what the fuck, crazy man. Because he did like hard candy and like thirty days a night, and, I was, and then this, I'm like, thirty yeah. days a night is like, and but hard candy really is is hardcore because they lose the vampires' heads in the third film, mm-hmm. as you know, you're not really gonna see that in the first two films. But one of the big debates that we had mm-hmm. <laughs> was uh, the wolf lore. Uh, or werewolf lore, which I said that, you know, Jacob was a werewolf. And he was like, no, there's a difference between a wolf and a werewolf. Uh, he's right. But uh, the, the, these aren't the werewolves. technology of werewolves has been different. Uh, there's he, tons of... It, it, wolf these are technically not, not werewolves. No. They're the thing no, thing. no, no, it's, it's, it's the werewolf. native mythology the wolf. Film. They're wolves. Yeah. What'd you no, say? He said Listen. he said that wolves don't hunt people. And I was like, Have you ever seen the movie Frozen? 
Have you ever? Well, I've that was more of opportunistic. Wolves will hunt. People. They, they will. Wolves Listen, hunt. No, no, okay. Are one First of the most of all, natural, vicious you predators. You know, a predator animal doesn't for, hunt people. It all depends on how hungry and close. No, to wolves death will. They are. Wolves will take down fucking bears here, man. It's crazy. Like depends wolves are fucking. Oh, I. Our wolf population in BC is crazy, overpopulated and shit. It's just, it's nuts. Well, here, here's so, the thing about werewolves versus wolves in, in the terms. Yes, they look like giant wolves. In this movie, they they're considered werewolves. Yeah. But in the movie Wolfen, they're considered wolves. Wait, they're not considered, they're werewolves. considered werewolves in this movie? Yes, they call them werewolves in this mythology. This is how the werewolf turns. Every movie has a different mythology on werewolves. When yeah. the wolf man turns, he walks. When the howling well, werewolves when, turn, when they're bigger they and they look more. Like, let me I don't and, remember and them saying American werewolf in Paris, they're on the ground. They're on all fours. Okay, but when do they say specifically werewolves? I, I they thought do. they said shape shifters. They they actually do. I you know honestly I can't even really recall any moments where they actually say werewolves. But I yeah, just know I just know in native folklore. It, and you, it's funny that you <clears throat> reference Wolfen because I was thinking the same thing because a lot of people yeah. think that Wolfen is they're not a werewolf. Wolfen. No, because the mythology is dealing with native mythology or in that film, and they're specifically talking about wolves, like the shape shifting wolves in their mythology. Right. That's what I thought these were. I don't think they ever. I, like unless it's like a joke like no I, I, I honestly well I mean it probably came out a few times saying werewolves because I think that's what most people kind of think they are but I think the actual mythology here is that yeah, they're shape-shifting I mean, wolves like words werewolves yeah. yeah no it was a big thing he was like they're shape-shifters they are not werewolves yeah, in native mythology that's one of the folklores is the shape-shifters and the wolves they're not werewolves right it's well, because I a mean, werewolf this movie a lot of say a, a lot of werewolf happening. mythology is you know they've been cursed by something and stuff like right the and sh- also the, the ma- full native moon. mythology is actually a good thing them turning into shapeshift it was just part of their defense mechanism too right so it, it wasn't that they were cursed they're not cursed at all it's just part of their mythology well, there's different well, arguing like points on werewolves and vampires and zombies which one counts as it it's all different in mythology mm-hmm. but right. I'm just trying to figure I'm, out I'm in, the movie, in, this movie in the movie specific. this movie do, they consider them werewolves themselves. I That's thought really they said the shapeshifters. Right, right. Because right. if they don't call them werewolves and the writer and the directors and stuff, they're like, oh, they're not, they don't say they're were- not werewolves. They're probably not werewolves then. But arguing, I mean, it's up to the movies to say that. And they're not typical werewolves regardless. They're definitely not typical right. werewolves. But um, there has been werewolves born of, you know, uh, in film born of, you know, their birth. Like Curse of the Werewolf was a birth. He was turned right. into. He was a werewolf from birth. He it was it's in his. It's the whole zombie explore. infected of it. Being, uh, you know, it, yeah. it, it and, is. And there's also the it's fact, like the Beast Within, isn't necessarily a werewolf film, but it might as well play no, like one. But it's a cicada <laughs> film. It's a cicada. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's also right. from birth. It I think it's in, in the third blood. one. The, the, is it? Weird? Is it in the it's third one where film. Jacob? Yeah, it's in the third one where Jacob takes Bella to, um, you know, the the tribal council meeting or whatever and they they explain it and they the the um, the father actually mentions in dialogue he says specifically shapeshifters yeah and that, that it, i thought they did he I, does I, I he does that. in that scene where he's explaining the whole mythology to you know basically it's kind of an awkward scene because everyone sitting there knows all that he's basically just I, telling I bella but he's not really talking to her specifically it's a weird scene to me story lacy yeah lacy do they refer to them as werewolves in the novel yes then they're werewolves well it doesn't really matter but but he was very he thought because of you know the quell mythology that they're more you know what i'm saying it's up for a movie to determine what they are that's what i'm saying though and in this movie in this movie in this series they consider these werewolves these are their werewolves there's no such thing as the the standing up werewolf but the big debate dave was um whether wolves versus werewolves eat people. <laughs> because oh, I, well, the, oh. the comment that I made, you know, because Jacob hates... Well, it's whatever you know, the mythology wants to be. It's, it's, yeah, that, and I that's said, why what is the difference? Like, why is the wolves better than the vampires? Like, that makes no fucking sense. Well, the wolves why eat he, vampires in this. They don't eat people. Yeah, no, it's, it's just well, this no, specific but, movie's I mean, mythology. I movie fucking Frozen... I know, but that's a different mythology, though, Lacey. That's not a mythology. That's That's just a wolf. Well, exactly. They both love blood. They both love blood. They both. No, they don't love blood. blood. It's kind of like a shark. The the thing with vampires, werewolves, and all these creatures and monsters is it's completely 
completely pointless to argue what is the correct mythology because they change from movie to movie. I've exactly. watched 500 vampire movies in the last five years, and everyone had a different rule. Exactly. Well, and everyone in has my a different opinion, and they're both like, bad. In, well, in Wolfen, they're shape-shifting wolves. In here— They call they're... them shape-shifting wolves. They refer to them shape-shifting wolves. So, so, they call them so werewolves. Dave, this one, the they say they're werewolves. Yeah. Werewolf when, do they, werewolf? when do they say they're werewolves, though? That's what they I say the source the material in the novels. Well, no, but I'm saying in the movies because the, let's let's be real. You can always change what's in the. But they did. They never brought it up that they were. <laughs> right, I mean, they, so they, they say they're... shapeshifters, motherfucker. I'm telling you. Oh no, I, I they, they definitely do, do say shapeshifters. But werewolves even are in dialogue. shapeshifters. Yeah. Werewolves are shapeshifters. Yeah. Not every so, shapeshifter is a werewolf, because... but werewolves are shapeshifters. Yeah. What's in a name I'm right now? Shapeshifter, werewolf, doesn't really matter. But they say but... shapeshifting wolves. <laughs> it's just all. It's about how the the movie and the, the mythology wants to portray itself. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it movie, changes the movie. Considered werewolves, Davis, right? I, Would you say? Do so? they, are they not both drive by blood when they want no. to? No. Yeah. No. No. no werewolves, right? Right? Werewolves werewolves only are drawn by blood. They're shape shifting werewolves, like every werewolf meat. technically is a shape shifter. Wolves eat meat. <laughs> but, uh, what are humans? But they're meat. But these, but these werewolves slash you know shape shifters or whatever, they just they're not that type of mythology that you know the the, eat the stereotypical not... werewolf that we're thinking of they're attacking people and eating them you know and like fucking all these type of okay, werewolves. that's no, not that's no, mythology they're, 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 good they they're good they shapeshifters they're good shapeshifters wherever they want there's no full so moon right exactly the... that's part of that's the Wait, cool thing about the mythology yeah. is that it changes from thing to thing the vampires just... sparkle in the sun they walk out in the sun and they're considered vampires but all of a sudden since the werewolves don't fall to these certain rules they're not werewolves right you know what i'm saying no. that makes no none sense of the, none of the not rules are the same no rules make any sense in this yeah. thing they're their own mythology yeah. no they they the rules do make sense yes i'm I mean, saying they don't they're really different they're different rules than what we typically know and I know, but why are you trying to point that across when we all agree i'm saying that in this movie they're considered werewolves they're no, called i'm just, i'm, I'm but saying, guys, what i was I saying was, was i don't know if they necessarily ever say that any this. better than a vampire what's that are they the any better? The question I post is, why is a werewolf any better than a vampire? Because they feed uh, in, in this movie or in general? Well, well in, the, in, mean, in this movie, you're talking Lacey? At this movie. point, you don't really know about his tribe at the yeah, point to where right. he's just saying that he hates vampires, you know, because he's a werewolf and they obviously have odds with each other. Do we well, learn? But, what, the the sense that he vampires? hates the vampires because they eat people and kill people. Yeah, well, what do wolves They're do? protectors. What, what do wolves feed on? Do you ever have vampires? Are you talking about they don't. They don't. They don't eat these wolves. They don't eat. They don't eat when they're in that fucking in the shape shifted form. It's it's like it's, a it's, it's, it's like a protective thing. To... Their mythology is that they shape shift to protect their lands and stuff. The Hence the treaty. Hence the treaty. The they have this native land, this... and that's and that's the thing. They they're they don't allow where... the land. Exactly, and that's when they attack. They don't go outside. Nice. The, they don't the go outside their lands. This movie is that they sometimes can't control their anger and might hurt people. Yeah, but what do you, what do you say? Let, let, wait, let, let, I need to hear Lacey. I can't hear film. Lacey at all. This is fucked. Okay. Lacey, when go ahead. In, when you're in the first film and it's trying to kind of make the werewolves the good guys versus they, they, the They really don't exist in the first film, though. The second film, then, right? Yes, but, you know, at the end of the prom scene when, you know, Jacob is telling Bella, like, hey stay away from him or whatever like he's bad and he obviously knows but i obviously read the book so i know it's different i know but you he... you have to you have to separate yourself from the source material though we have we're reviewing the this this story as the movie and we're not reviewing the mythology in this movie based on any other mythology you've seen in another movie or read in a book all mythology know, is is sub, is so though. different i'm just saying it's so different from movie to movie Right, like we brought we brought up the contrast between Wolfen and this. They're just different. Like the thing is with the native mythology in this is that they shape shift and turn into werewolves to protect their land. They only battle and do that. That's why they have this treaty. They're like, hey, you guys can hunt the animals on here, so you guys can't kill humans on here. This is what they protect, unless they're needed outside of their land. And that's when they that so that did decide later on to do on things then, to help. Like it, it never they, explained they that. They eat chicken and film. shit when they're human. They don't. They don't <laughs> you know feed. I mean? They don't feed out when they're werewolves. Oh, okay. Well, all right. You see them eating. All right. Like so chicken this was and shit. my main point with Dan when I was arguing it was the fact that so okay, the do they imprint or whatever, but however, 
they have such a temper that he obviously attacked the woman that he loved. And that's what I was trying to say. Face. Yeah, that's the that's the downside with them is they can't control their anger sometimes and they unintentionally hurt people around them. But that's different than the vampires who intentionally. But, that, but that's just the animal instinct, though. Like, it, the it portrays himself into really their human really forms. Different. It's it's, well, it's yeah, definitely the Collins yeah, are different. The Collins are different that's yeah. why they have a treaty and that, agreement with the Collins and yeah. not the rest of the vampire see world. they have this treaty based on the past and what happened and stuff they're like okay we're, you know something happened and the, but we're gonna allow you guys to here we'll make this deal so they don't fucking battle because that's what that's not what they're all about right they're just about protecting their land and shit here you guys can have the animals and we'll just coincide with each other so technically the werewolves aren't better than the Collins thank you but what? but they aren't because the Collins don't feed on people at all, and the werewolves can lose their temper and hurt people. No, but I guess they're, a vampire they're, can lose its temper. Them, a vampire can lose its temper. Thank you. A vampire, let me finish. Let me finish. Becoming... The, the vampire can hurt somebody too because Jasper almost lost his temper. So they're basically about the same. Yeah, yeah. but nobody's. Who's. Uh, oh, you mean why is Jacob saying. Jacob's. Jacob, they have a no, natural I distrust. Said that the Collins and the werewolves are about the same, but they, the other vampires are worse than the werewolves. That was the point that I was getting at. Well, I think right. the main point here but, is that they're but, supposed to be portrayed on screen as both being the good versions of what we know as the right. mythologies, right? The Collins are the yeah. good vampires, and these shape shifting werewolves, uh, wolves, whatever you want to call them, are, they're the good ones too. They just they yeah. just have a distrust between them because naturally they will hunt vampires, right? Because like the natural dog, instinct right? Right. is that a vampire exactly. is bad and that they are being defensive. It's just yeah, it's like cats and, dog, and cats and, and keep dogs. Keep in mind, so that's Jacob why they have this treaty. Telling Bella this from a point of he yes. thinks that he's the better choice for her yeah. versus Edward, exactly, and the fact that Edward can bring other dangers that that he c- wouldn't. And you also and and Jacob says to Bella, I you could never have to change for me. You can be yourself. You can live here. Exactly. You can be with your family. That was his. I'll never ask you to change. Also, I do like the idea that they're definitely pointing out that Jacob is more like the rule, like almost you would say like working class, and then Edward is definitely the upper class, upper crust, and they're like you got to choose between oh, the good rule American life really and the upper high from class. Upper life. to lower class in these films. There's definitely a, I a, agree a with trail you. there. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Jacob's he's working like, on like cars and stuff. That's very, very. <laughs> going, I'm telling you, they do that stuff. Even with the up. Avengers, so you think because a guy works on cars, he's lower no, class. no. The way they portray no, them, working. The well, they're also alluding to the fact that they they live on the reservation, like their own little yes. thing. That's what they do, right? So, they're, you know, it, in, in a sense, it's almost kind of a it's almost kind of a racial racial thing to be and honest. The Jacob family, the Jacob family is more the every person. You know what I mean? Right. They're not yeah. from that. They're from yeah, every. They're, they're more they're, like regular people. That's yeah, why you're exactly. also more yeah. like. And up, she doesn't have to change. Well, they're the majority like of the world are like Jacob. They're, they're right? more. They're, yeah. ri- they're they have more money. The dad's yeah. a doctor. So it, it's definitely not. And, and they do that stuff in the Marvel movies too. Like if you watch the opening yes. to um, the Thanos, with the one, the new one, you see fucking Jeremy Redner out with his family and on a farm with fucking eating at a picnic table. My. Oh, that's obviously, you know, pointing out to the, you know, the people that live in the country, the more rural lifestyle. They, they make these characters fit into certain groups so people will like them more. It's so obvious. And yeah. these do this and all these big movies do this. And it's so obvious to me. I have to laugh. I mean, okay. honestly, dude, the, the the general mythology of vampires is that they always they, they live in these big Are castles rich. and they, they're rich. And like that's just and it kind of plays into this, too. It definitely there's they're a certain class, classes you know, of the working class versus pencil pushers, too, at it, the same time. You yeah, know, I work in a factory. Right. You look at the people that are in the office and you're like, fuck them. <laughs> no, the, the, right. the wolves work on cars and the vampires the drive fuck? cars. That's how much elitist vampires are. I they agree. can get from here to there quickly, but they still drive cars. Yeah. <laughs> and the werewolves have to ride dirt bikes. And welcome everybody, Dan Chase, to the fucking episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that just Thanks caught me Dan. completely off guard. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right, let's no, get back on track. All right, so let's space. let's get into the end of the movie. I I, I basically said that the end of this movie is kind of uh, to me it's very anticlimactic. What are your guys' thoughts on this? I mean, the whole, I mean. I get it, man. There's a thing. Obviously, the Volturi, they have this rule. You know, like, you, you can't have you can't bring humans into their lair kind of thing. Right. And of course, there's this huge battle between um, was it Edward and what's the guy's name? Felix or uh, Aro. Aro. OK, so he, he battles this dude anyways. One link, one thing leads to another. And Bella basically says, you know, just before he's about to kill Edward is like, no, take me. 
and it kind of changes everything right there. It kind of it's like holy shit, the Volturi is like wow, she's willing to give and up they her realize life. How special she is. Yeah, they're like right. they're willing to. She's willing to give up her life for a vampire. She's human. That doesn't make any sense. But then they come to this agreement where you know basically you brought her in here. Um, it's, if if we're gonna let her go, you know, you basically have to make the decision to turn her at some time, kind of thing, and stuff like that. So I, I don't know, man. I just the, feel like the, the Volturi does this thing a lot where they'll be like. Let me ponder this question and leave everybody in right. suspense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's kind of ridiculous. But it makes sense, though. Voltaires, the, the one guy who just wants to die, the guy who's miserable, like, <laughs> with this end. Dude, Dude that, I feel like everybody wanted to die in this fucking and, Dude, and, that guy was the hilarious. Guy, the main guy, who's like a little Weasley guy, is yeah. just Karg for Masters of the Universe the whole time. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> And I actually like those two. I actually ended up liking those yeah. two, especially in the fifth film. Everyone else can suck dicks and die. So no, the I- really so, so the ideology <laughs> here. From be- Shameless. Yeah. So the ideology with the Volturi is that you know, um, basically, they can't allow the human to get, let the secret be out. a human. <laughs> well, to let the secret out, right? Secret. So that's that's why they're like, well, okay, now this human knows our secret and stuff, and that's why they come to this deal. It's like, hey, we let you go. You need to turn her at a certain date and stuff like that, and then they agree to that and stuff. So that's basically well, how she, they get she, out. The, the one girl shows him the vision of her being, you know, that she saw. Well, they the, proved it. They proved it. She yeah. will be turned. Yeah. So that that's how they were let go is because it was basically proved that was Alice, right? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Well, Alice is a false prophet. Mm. Well, no, all the I'm visions not. aren't necessarily 100% too. I think that's also... Well, you can change them. After you, you can see. change it. Yeah, yeah, you can always change the future, right? That's the thing. You see what you can at the present time, but it doesn't mean five minutes down the road that future hasn't been changed or altered, right? It's like if she sees that I'm going to fart and she tells me I'm going to fart and then I'm like, I better hold I'm going to squeeze fart. this motherfucker Ooh, in. You just, change, no you just changed the future. You just changed the future, right? She didn't know Bella ate right before she came over to dinner. Great, Scott. <laughs> all right so some kind of bismo or something what what are we on on this one uh who went? i went first last time yeah right. so who went second? dave it was dave all right this is my second least favorite one i think this one's totally padding this one and another one i think are total padding i was bored i like garrett green graham green i was super happy to see him good performance for this movie um also, I do have in my notes, this is the first time I said she doesn't deserve Jacob. So I'm going to give this <laughs> two and a half stars out of ten. I agree with that 100%. Um, okay, so. Yeah, she's um, a bitch. That's why. This is, why. The working class. This is my the working class. <laughs> playing both sides. This is my second favorite of them. Um, if you want to say favorite. favorite. Yeah, I think this one is like the most interesting to me and it was probably because edward wasn't there most of the time uh, i really I, did, I have a strong Isaac, dislike JP. for edward and bella but what's that i think you just don't like edward colin i don't he sucks i just i don't like any of the leads man i just don't like any i of like them. jacob dude. i he's, don't actually he, I, I fucks with him man. He, he's he a little he's a little bit too hot-headed for me man like I, I'm, I'm super calm and cool. I never fight with anybody and never get into it with anybody. Trust, you know me. Oh, get the what fuck the out fuck? of here! I don't trust anybody without a temper. They're serial killers. Dude, I'm <laughs> obviously, like, I'm yeah. obviously fucking joking. I've got into it probably everybody on this show at least once. I know me and Dan fucking hated each other. I never hated Dan, but, um, <laughs> but like, no. Okay, what so, I'm saying is that yeah. yeah, he's a little hot-headed though. You know, he's he's, he's a little pushy. Well. He's a little pushy. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that I just think that he's like fucking a genuine dude, and Edward's like kind of a fucking bitch, um, and he yeah. whines too much, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, I love you so much, but I can't be around you." But blah, 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 blah. it's annoying. Um, I think that you know the 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 I, learning the werewolf mythology was a, a little bit funner, and sort of I, I think the werewolf things are a little cooler in this than the vampires, uh, even though they all look like shit. <laughs> the effects are so bad. And when they talk, when they're CGI, it's so bad. Like, oh, oh, that oh. that happens in one. Of the first <laughs> no, they it, that, it doesn't dude, happen until like the fourth one, I think, or something. I like that. couldn't yeah, believe that even happened. And you know what? They like, never do it they, right now. Who's talking? they never do it again because they're like, that was a fucking bad. It idea. was a very <laughs> very poor choice. Here? Part four is is oh man. Jesus. Oh, that was or, so fucking stupid. So but, bad. Um, get to that in another film. The uh, I like the introduction of the. But, what is it? Volturi. 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 
the Volturi, I think they're like one of the cooler aspects of these movies because they're a little sinister. You have that one scene where they're leaving. No, it's not Volturi. And... It's Vol and then Turi. You, you you always call Turi Tori. <laughs> I thought you were doing that as a joke, but that's actually how you pronounce it. No, it's Vol it's, I, Turi. Uh, yeah, Turi. I do do it as a joke, but um, but I'm not. I'm not really joking. I I think he acts like a girl, but um, <laughs> no. Uh, when when they're leaving there, and then that whole group of like tourists go in there, and you you know they're about to get fucking deaded. I thought cool. that was pretty cool. Um, Lambs to the but slaughter. Yeah, I don't know. This one was probably the easiest to watch out of all of them for me. So it's it's tough. I think. I mean, I can see where you guys are coming from. Oh. It's a lot of padding and stuff like that. But I just happen to be seven and move on, JP. I'm not giving it a seven. <laughs> You're out of your mind. You're out of your I'm mind. giving it. I'm giving it a six. What the fuck? So. <laughs> Yeah, this one, I, I, so much padding, but the melodrama in this one was, it was just corny and cheesy to me, man. Like the whole depression thing, man, with Bella and, and, and Edward and stuff like that. And Edward's like, oh, I'm going to end my shit. And oh my God, dude. Like, I think the only half decent thing was, I think, you know, in the end of the film, I don't think we mentioned, but I think, um, Alice or not Alice, but they, they come to the conclusion that Bella has kind of a superpowers in the sense that like, she kind of blocks off all the, uh, the super vampires powers basically. So I think that kind of plays into what the attraction was with her and Edward in the first one too, is that she's special, you know, that's just, it's simple. It's simple, but she's special. It's not much of a, it's not much of a positivity. This movie is pretty fucking bland and boring. Like I was, I was literally getting mad at this. Cause I was like, dude, it's the melodrama was so, Oh, I thought it was worse. In the it, first it, it was painstaking in this way. It, it was well, because this one's dealing with depression and shit. I'm like, the f- shut up. Like, I see, go, I like the like go fucking <laughs> like like go fucking you know. Yeah, but this was hammy depression. That's those screams were so bad. Yeah, I, 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 it, it came off cheap. Bad. It came up. No, bad decisions too, man. Bad decisions. Like in the beginning of the film, Edward's leaving and shit. There's just too much leaving and 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 talk about protection and oh my god, it's so bad. Yeah, I didn't like this. I probably take the first one over this one, so I'm coming in at a three on this one. I also call my masturbations hammy depressions <laughs> <laughs> you, you know originally when i watched when i watched this in the theater and i read the book the book is so much better um i hated it watching it the first time go around and then this one i enjoyed it a lot more because it does give you a little bit more of the relationship between you know jacob and bella because there's an actual relationship established as opposed to what you get with her and edward i mean I have so many issues with Alice's, you know, future scene. I feel like she would have seen that Jasper was going to try to attack her, and that's why he needs to move on. And then Edward being suicidal, Bella being adrenaline junkie now. I I love Anna Kendrick in this film. Annie Kendrick more has in common with a volleyball in this movie than fucking she does with Edward. Oh, Collins. and by the way, Dan Chase has now joined us. I I, I think yeah. honestly, when you explore having future visions in film and stuff, it just opens up the gates for a lot of fucking plot holes, holes man. Holes, plot holes. Right? Well, you yeah. you just so, notice so it all the time because once you once you yeah exactly. But I I noticed with vi- like future visions, it, it's it's exceptionally bad. An yeah, because it, it's you can just say, well, why didn't you see that coming for every exactly, man? And Unless that, you get a real weird character like Scarlet Witch, who's like, it's fucking weird powers that can change things, where you can get away with weird shit. Okay, well, yeah, if you if we you define the rules about... properly, but in here it's like it's not really defined that well. It's like she can see the future and stuff, and then but then you're, there are certain points where Lacey just mentioned, you're like, no, that doesn't make sense, right? So that she didn't see that, well, so. Well, we were talking about like the debate about you know the werewolf or versus the wolf, and that was a huge debate. So Dan would like to speak his piece if that's okay with you guys. Oh God. Well, no, it's not like a big rant or whatever. But JP, you said it yourself where you know you liked kind of you know the rules of the vampires in this, or at least some of them you just said. So yeah. So with the sparkling and all these things, because every movie is different, right? Everybody has their own version of a vampire and a wolf. Now, 
it was my maybe it was my misunderstanding going in but when i went into these movies and you look at native american you know folklore and stuff like that i think like shapeshifters i think yes men turning into wolves but i never really thought about that as just a werewolf when i think werewolf i think of a one-eyed motherfucker swiping gary Busey across the fucking <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. I don't think of werewolf. So I do believe that they not retconned it, but they kind of fit the werewolf thing in because, oh, werewolves versus vampires, when I don't really think that's what it is until they actually say it in this movie. But I just don't believe well, it. Well, but the whole debate between you and I was a wolf versus werewolf, which right. was a huge thing or a versus shapeshifter well generally speaking a werewolf can only fucking change during a full moon unless you're uh you know um but that's just the based off of these a... don't fit the typical rules at all like, right but that's just nor, mythology, nor do the right? vampires though nor do the vampires so that's yeah. that's my only argument but, but no these i agree with you with more with a shape shape more like the shape they call them werewolves yeah. but that's do just they? that i think they do they I mean, do people... so I had a whole argument up until this movie, and they literally say werewolf in it, and it just it, to me it doesn't say make werewolf sense. Until the second film. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they mention it in the second movie. Who, who says I just it? Think that's like a that's like a catchy little thing. Be like, oh, vampires were versus werewolves when that's not really what it is. And you sparkle like what? <laughs> Damn, yeah, they're not really. Well, werewolves. they establish no, it that it's not werewolves versus vampires very early because they oh. you know they they incorporate the treaty deal, so it's actually not technically them versus them right so they were just being kind of like loose with it because they do say it in the movie but it's just where do they say it i just want to call them bloodsuckers they're definitely against each other so i'm really kind of confused no but they're they're not they're not going out of their way to fight each other like i said they have this treaty and stuff like that they're 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 natural enemies they're natural enemies because they're super part of that supernatural world for sure but this specific groups we're talking about these two groups right here you know the collins and you know this tribe and stuff and they're they are natural enemies if the treaty was to be broken and stuff they definitely that that core mythology is sitting right there right but in this in this narrative you know they still they don't they just kind of coexist with each other right until right. some breaks and stuff but so they don't want to yeah no it's like north korea south korea vietnam north vietnam they're right by berlin wall fucking shit standing next to each other like i want to kill you but yeah. i can't yeah Hatfields exactly and mccoy's yeah, but well, actually, North Korea. So, it is like it is. Except because... for this one, they have a treaty. They actually can't do anything in some, unless right, it's broken, yeah. right? So, so what is your rating then? Um, I actually do prefer this one over the first one because the first one is just basically, mm-hmm. you know, kind of context, but it doesn't even give you the context that we're needing or feeding for. Um, and Edward just up and leaves. Um, <laughs> but I do really like the relationship between Jacob and Bella. I really do up until, you know, you find out shit about Jacob later and uh, we'll get into that. But I really liked it much more on this watch than I did the first, so I'm going to give it a six. All right. right, So that is the Twilight Saga New Moon. Jacob. What are you doing? I'm here to warn you. Just leave now. She has a right to know. Alrighty, so moving along here into 2010 with the Twilight Saga Eclipse, directed by David Slade. Now, we mentioned this before. I was a little bit surprised that David Slade actually did this film because he did Hard Candy and 30 Days a Night before this. He also went on to do a segment in uh, uh, Nightmare Cinema and also the, um, was it the uh, what is it, the Balderdash or fucking? T- uh, it was the Netflix movie with the pick your own adventure sh- type shit. Oh, Bandersnatch! Uh, Bandersnatch! Yeah, that. Th- oh wow, he did Bandersnatch. Yeah, that shit was actually kind of cool, man. I was so he's a, he's a pretty good director, right? Yeah, no, yeah. This guy's- and, and oddly enough, this is the movie right in the middle of his filmography. Like he had the two and then the two. It's very odd. So I hope he got paid, right? I'm sure this was definitely, <laughs> oh, definitely a paycheck uh, thing for him. I mean, it's in the middle of a fucking saga, so he definitely got paid. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. This, this one made the most money out of all of them, too. Yeah, I, I like when people that make good stuff make something that maybe people don't like, but they'll get paid for it. Like, right, right. Well, people right, like, because this it's like sold James Bond like, yeah, doing money. Fast and the Furious, right? You're, like, happy yeah. that they're going to be set for their life. Yeah, you're right. good. Even if I'm not going to watch it, they're good. Right. 
All right, so synopsis. As a string of mysterious killings grips Seattle, Bella, whose high school dra- graduation is fast approaching, is forced to <laughs> choose be- between her love for vampire Edward and her, re- and her friendship with werewolf Jacob. You even See, say werewolf, werewolf there. Yeah, but it's also, it could be me or you writing that synopsis too, right? So It was yeah, me, guys. Was it was me. Werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, this one right here is... Oh man. So we get Dude. Victoria back in this one and basically she's still on her she's on a rampage, on a but revenge rampage to exact power. her exact her boy toy. I'm gonna do it again. Dude, Dude stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to I'm fucking call him, man. Boy. But anyways, what she's doing is she's basically turning people into what they call newborns in the in the mythology within this world is that the newborns actually are like the strongest type of vampires when she turns someone for at first for like the first six to eight months or whatever they're like the strongest they're ever going to be in their vampire well, life why did the vittori vittori not come after them come after her because they were behind be- it they gave victoria the power to do it and plus she's not changing kids like she was changing adults. Well, like, wait, did they, did they fucking because, really, dude? Because, okay. I think they, so, were, they, were, they were helping her, weren't they? Were okay, they? So I know you guys didn't read the books or whatever, but there is a young girl in this, if you guys don't remember, to where they kill her at the her. end. Yeah. Uh, there is a whole book based off of the young girl in this, and it's called The Second, it's called the second Short Life of Brie Tanner. Okay. Yeah, but uh, that wasn't done by the... The original writer was it yes oh, stephanie what, meyer yes that's the sister that they wrote off because it's so weird they focus on this little girl the whole movie and they're like well we got to kill somebody and we can't kill any of the major characters so let's kill this character who's literally just been looking scared the whole time and has done nothing <laughs> yeah no no there, there's a whole book on her though. again the movie wants their cake and they want to eat it too they want to show some tragedy and kill somebody that we have no attachment to and act like we do yeah, they have an actual whole side book about her, and it's called The Second Short Life of Brie Tanner. Because so, right um, now they should have just killed, like, the... Jasper or somebody. <laughs> Jasper. Of Any of them. Book. Anybody. Kill a main character for once. Jasper Speaking of the books, um, I did find it interesting because I was just, like, looking and up on it a little bit. And that's actually one of the main things that I do have. I do what? have a major problem to the fact that they don't want to kill off any of the main characters. I mean, Emmett... It's just they're kind of for comic relief in the films, but he could he's easily disposable. Jasper is easily disposable. Actually, uh, Esme, one of the sisters is too. Two of those, like the blonde sisters, do almost nothing, and so do their husbands. They do nothing. So yeah, go. Maybe, go, going back to what you said earlier, you said the Volturi was respond or they were helping with this. I'm pretty I feel sure. weren't they? They no. knew Victoria was doing it, and they looked the other way. No, I think they, they wanted the Collins dead. I think. They oh, did. oh yeah, yeah. Well, they weren't supported. They were just turning a blind eye. Okay, I, th- I took it as they were like helping her and stuff because at one point in this film, they actually show up to yeah, deal they with don't give the a fuck. yeah to deal with the newborn Pain. army though too. Right. Pain. Yeah. So oh, they wait, let me. Yeah, they so definitely show up to, to like do some shit with the with against the new porn army and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, so um, I was talking to Carly and I just wanted to bring this up just because I thought it was fucking funny, um, because just how popular this series was. So the writer of this series um actually rewrote the first Twilight book <laughs> from Excuse Edward's me? perspective. Like uh, Huckleberry Finn and Sun. Adventures of Tom Sawyer, like that. <laughs> Midnight no, it's Sun. called Midnight Sun. Yeah, but that's so what they from... did. They wrote it two different ways. That's. <laughs> and then, and then she also did another version where it was a role. Re- it was a like sex reversal. So, it was about a new boy moving to a town called like you know Belith, Be- Belith, Belith or something. You know, it's gonna melt that until it's the, fucking super dry, huh? The, it's gonna, it's gonna the, melt it like fucking. It's dry like fucking Kristen Stewart, huh? The vampire <laughs> was a female instead. I just thought that was kind of fucking funny. Nobody thinks that's funny. Uh, I think it's very cheap. I think that it shows her true colors. She definitely was in it for the money. And I don't blame her. She got him. She got eat. I well, think I she's mean, eating pretty good. I think if you're going to, like, come back after so many years, they want to see where these ca- characters have gone. Like, I mean, you have Renesme at this point and Jacob together. <laughs> like, that's what people want to hear about. Renesme. <laughs> that was the Did dumbest... she fix 
Fix your CGI face. Hey, did she hey, fix your CGI there face? Yet, guys, we're not there. We're only on the third film. Hey, but you brought her up. About, you brought her up. But we're talking about like book-wise. Well, basically, what we get in this one, man, you know, is like I said, Victoria's creating this uh, newborn army to avenge her Bryce her Dallas homies, Dallas. her fucking That's homies' cool. death, and. You know, this is where we get – at one point, I think Jacob, you know, completely confesses his love to um, – I think this is in the one, right? Yeah, he confesses his love to Bella and stuff like that. It doesn't really go hey, that moves. great. Yeah. Question. Did you watch all of these consecutively? No. No. No, I did it over four days. <laughs> Are you crazy? Well, well, I, I just, I, I, well, I'm just really confused that you didn't notice the difference between the actresses that played Victoria. I didn't None of us either. did. All three None of us did. didn't. Well, I watched them on different days. So, yeah, I don't know. She just looked the same to me. I don't know. I, what do you I mean? Know, look at her know what it was. It's probably you just didn't nose. give a it's fuck. It's a completely different <laughs> I didn't care. Act. I sometimes hair changes faces. I don't know. You know, maybe that's just no, the way. Her hair is much more well, red. It could have been like. Well, that's what I'm like saying. Carlisle that's what I'm saying. Her hair changed, like, so it changed her. I don't know. Sometimes hair can change your look. Twenty years a lot more tan over the last the movies. movies go on, and yeah. obviously, uh, Edward's mom's eyes. Yeah. Like she looks like a normal person in the last couple films. And Edward's like, mom's eyes. Like, I mean, I, like I I probably people. subconsciously did notice. I just never really thought too much into it because I probably would have noticed if I was looking at care. Like it, a lot of times when I'm watching movies, I'll I'll click on the uh, the actors and stuff and you know shit like that. I probably would have noticed then, but dude, if they would have changed know. Kristen Stewart to a fucking stick with a bag on it, I would have been I just like, could... oh, she's better than. <laughs> I, I couldn't just. I could care less. I wouldn't even notice. I wouldn't have. I'd be like, <laughs> right, uh-huh. right. Her dad's pretty good. Like so I feel like I feel like this one, this movie right here, had like the most potential to be pretty exciting, considering there was going to be like this huge battle with these newborns, Victoria against you know, obviously, um, which where we get this, um, uh, I, I want to say alliance, I guess, between the Collins and the and the the wolves, right? Um, they the they, they join forces because I they need so they too. need they need to do this because obviously it's it's about defending Bella and stuff. So they join forces to fight off this thing. So, but what we get throughout the film is like, I mean, which I kind of expected as soon as I realized what the narrative was going to be. We're going to get a bunch of backstory on some of these other characters and it's exactly where it went into, right? I mean, that stuff's okay and stuff, but it just feels like I it's padding it cool. the whole time for two fucking hours, and then the battle is like, okay, it's okay. Yeah. I think it, I think it does it's a good definitely... job for world building the vampires. And like how it, 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 the conflict of if Bella should turn or not, right. you know what I mean? Well, it right. lets you really that, get a sense of you... what, what's that? Well, well not it... only that, but it also is kind of dragging along the triangle aspect. Like, all right. So at the end of the second film, he asked her to marry him and she keeps saying no. So it's just trying to keep up, you know, Did she who say she's no? going to choose. I didn't even know she said no. She said no. Yeah, so it just kind of trying Wait, to. Wait, did she up. say no? Yes. Are you oh. sure? I'm just fucking around. Yeah, she said no like five times. Yeah. But do you think she wanted to say no? No, I no, think she just no, didn't I, want to because like her family would be like, "What the fuck?" You're. I just was trying to make a joke. No, I, don't really care. I believe it's only for exposition, just to yeah, you but... know, kind of keep the love triangle going on. And because I mean, this is the first film that she kisses Jacob in. Oh, is this? Yeah. Is this the um, one where they have the man to man in the tent? Well, this is where it cre- they create it on purpose. No, that's the they create that on purpose, right? Because when you have an alliance with the Collins, this one's the man to man in the tent. This is that's a that's a decent scene. Away, he's taking her scent away. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that that, that's great. that's the scene where he has to cuddle up to her and stuff, and then he basically makes I Edward lo- watch them. I love that <laughs> Those awkward situations where like Jacob is moving in on Bella while Edward's <laughs> right in front of. Well, her. that's actually the kind of a clever is, way. Is a you know, honestly, mode. I will give him cle- or, uh, credit for that because it actually is a clever way of creating even more drama because it's true. Right. You know, Edward is cold and fucking Jacob is warm. It's obvious that he needs to warm her up like that, right? But it's it's kind of a clever way of making Edward watch that. <laughs> Because it, it, it makes sense. It's also a little no, deeper than it's that too. Keep it going. It's well, also it's a little every, deeper it, than that too because yes. it's showing that he is more human and more a re- like he can, Edward can't even keep his girlfriend warm. Right. You know what I mean? No, no, <laughs> yeah. they're doing that, but it, I mean, yeah, it's 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 the whole bigger picture. It's about that whole alliance that he's forced to work with. I mean, you know, the wolves, let me the ask columns. you a question. Yeah, do you ever have a dead cock inside you? <laughs> 
<laughs> Would you rather have a cold what? dick or a hot I, dick? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. Okay. <laughs> right. That's the okay. The, the, the right way to answer this question head. is oh, it depends. Right. It depends Did what. Did you just say, have you ever had a dead cock inside I you? I said a cold. A cold. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> There's a dead. little difference there. I heard cock dead. and I was like, wow, it depends, man. Come on. I cold well, or hot? Well, you're at a cock inside you. <laughs> Negative. But it, I mean, it makes sense. Right? <laughs> that Negative. wasn't the question. No, but I mean, I thinking about it, like, it's got to be weird. Right? About I agree with you. That's what I was thinking of a lot of the time. Was dead what? like I dead just thought piss. of that just now to make a joke. You were thinking about that, where you're like going yeah. down to bed, I'm like I, I was like, I was like, so. I'm like, uh, and I was thinking of blood flow. I was like, how does he even get an erection? Yeah, well, that's like Shatter Dead, and Shatter Dead, well, the zombies, it, it, think this, they can't get an erection, so she ties a gun to its dick area and fucks a gun. The, Pretty the, cool. The whole sexual thing, I was thinking the same thing, like, you know, when they're going to consummate their their marriage and stuff like that. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, so, okay, that's fine. But then, you know, when she obviously, something happens to her, I'm like, how the fuck did that even happen? He's not even, like, living. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, but do, do vampires Ogre actually have orgasms? Do, like, do right? vam- vampires actually have orgasms? Like, it's it's like a bizarre thought, right? It is. So I was well, kind of wondering how the fuck, orgasm? how that whole shit even went down in the first place. But hey, I have a question for you guys. Right. Do you think that the chemistry, like obviously we said the chemistry was off in the first film. Like, do you feel like Bella and Edward's chemistry is more on point at this point? Nope. He I sucks. Think Jacob and Edward's chemistry is more. I on was going to say that, that Jacob and Edward acting off of each other is actually funny. Yeah, they're probably the, they're probably the best uh, direct duo in the film for sure. Bella just well, sucks. She's just probably a... help with the acting too, right? <laughs> she, I don't know. I just find her just. Uh... Did you like her at all in any of these films? No, I think no, she's especially when she agrees to get married. And then, and then I'm, I'm thinking about the whole time. I'm like. She's like fucking so selfish, man. She's all into this dude. Like she wants to marry, and all she wants to do at the end of the day, she's like leaving her dad, who's like the coolest guy in the world, and her mom is okay and shit. Also, the best character, right? And like she's just up. Like they have to do something about. Like she's 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 abandoning her family for her own selfish reasons. School. Like she's just getting out of fucking high school. She's making life decisions. Yes, it's very yeah. selfish, very selfish. It's and like her whole weird. thing is about being selfish, man. It's just fucked up, man. Like Dude. she's playing people both sides. She's leaving her family. She doesn't give a fuck, but no one but her. So it's actually quite intriguing. This this is, you know, aimed at the the target range that this it's is aimed a bad, at. Well, it's, a it's a bad example. It's a bad example of what like people. These are bad decisions. So. Man. But it she reminds me of her family to begin with. I mean, she has her the dad loves her, and Nina she has from a... fucking twenty four oh, as her Nina mother. Myers. Uh, the, no, the dad the, definitely does. She Bella's the equivalent of her like mom does too. a sixteen year old girl who's dating a like twenty four year old dude with like a fucking but he's motorcycle, got a motorcycle. Yep. and do, and sells drugs. And she's like, "But I love him, mom. You don't yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't hit me all the time." It just, no, it just shows the immaturity in her in her McDonald's. age. It's like fuck. It's, you know. Dude, Bella is one of the worst written I, characters in a main series. Like ever. it's supposed to be, uh, you I, know, a role model—not even a role model, but well, someone you can relate dated. to. It feels like a character that was from the '90s. I can't stand <laughs> the fact that they play off, you know, like you know, the fact that she was like this girl that never fit into any of these groups and stuff like that. And, it, and everybody they, they, they almost kind of they, no redeeming qualities. Yeah. They almost try to justify it that, you know, it's okay for her to make these completely asinine fucking life decisions and based off the fact that she her. never fit into anywhere. And I'm like, this is right. fucking ridiculous, man. It's such a stupid thing because what now you're portraying to these people that actually take this shit serious. It's actually really not good. It's not a good not thing to put in people's life. minds. She's playing with everybody. Exactly. Too. Because as, as like a dude, I just don't terrible. see what fucking is so cool about her. You right. know what I mean? Like, That's, I'm just like, I, I would never be interested in this person longer than like five minutes. No, this is very and damaging I'm material not... to, to young teens, to be honest. Like, it's crazy that, you know, I, I'm probably showing my age now and stuff. But looking at it from my point of view, what what you're subjecting, you know, 13, 14 year old girls to is like, man, dude, the amount of people that take a shit serious. And it's like, dude are you allowing them and, and you're basically saying this is okay to make these decisions and shit it's like it's fucking but, but crazy all movies do that right no. i mean how many times when you were a kid did you like go out in the yards and play guns and like because you watched a cowboy movie or something that's just the way things i know are. but but, a lot, but but dave but dave a lot of those movies weren't my demographic i was probably watching rated r movies and stuff like that i mean these movies are actually pointed at a certain yes, age but i'm group. saying though i i think that it's 
it's it's a little bit of a double standard, but we all do it. And I do think that of course it is it, it is a negative. Like I don't think she's a good person. And, no, but hey, well, I think I what somebody brought up earlier, maybe Dave, was that they that she's supposed to just be like a soulless that you she's can fit a, your yeah, own personality so into. It. Anybody can put themselves into it. Yeah. yeah. So I think that the girls aren't looking at like I want to be like Bella. They're looking at like I want to date Edward or Jacob. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think they're looking at it like, like an I RPG like character where like they have no personality and everyone around has all the personality because you're <laughs> putting your own personality within that character. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's an RPG the main character. Purpose of this film, I think, was to you know kind of set up. Whether she was gonna choose Jacob or Edward. Yeah, they kind of dropped that whole thing. But I feel like this was the film that you know I think it you're right. I think you're determines. Right. I mean, she makes out with Jacob. Mm-hmm. No, they, they. I think they marketed it like that. You know, I remember seeing like the team Jacob, team Edward shit like all over the place. Yeah, you had a shirt. I remember you wore it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Which one was it? I don't remember, but it was hot. Uh, I Come on, dude. It was clearly team, team Team Jacob Wait, for sure. You, you're saying you think I'm Team Edward? No, you're Team Jacob. <laughs> Are you? I'm Team Neither. I'm Team Neither. Dude, I'm fucking. fucking I'm Switzerland here, man. I'm neutral Edward. as fuck. Fuck no, I'm not Team Edward. Uh, I don't like either one of them, man. Although I will Wait, give this movie a little bit. Are you bit Team of... Edward or Team Jacob? I'm not Team anybody. They all suck. Listen, <laughs> see, that's what I just said. Bella and how she doesn't belong with anyone and stuff like that. I think, though, honestly, as a viewer, that's hard to try and connect because it's like, well, okay, the first one that was like you know, the main character. We're seeing everything from her perspective. After that, it's just kind of everybody's perspective. It's not really her story anymore. And I think that she's so unlikable that we're all kind of happy about that. Well, I'll be happier if I to follow fucking Nina Myers. So, yeah. <laughs> but but the thing with these movies is, is this. I think actually the dad and her relationship, even in the first one, like there's just subtle moments like, when he's trying to talk to her in the kitchen and she just kind of like laughs because she's so awkward and she's just like, yeah, we're not talking about this, like stuff like that. I'm like, oh, OK, There's you're 100 percent right. Their you're relationship right. is has more depth to it than anybody else that she has a relationship. She should with. marry her dad. I just said that. I said <laughs> exactly. so. So when you go into these movies, though, so the first one is just obviously setting. Everything they make that up. joke in the film, too, actually. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and then in the second one, obviously, they build off of that and they build the three-way thing there or whatever. I honestly think, though, because this dude fucking directed, obviously, uh, and a lot of people's favorite fucking vampire movie ever in 30 Days of Night. So when you get... When you get this movie, and like you said, it's all build up towards the end, I feel like at least it's something. It's it's more of like a straight up fucking vampire movie. At least we know the characters now. Yeah, it took us fucking four hours to get here, but and like I could kind of care less about them. But I, I'm at least invested to see them rip some fucking heads off at the end. You know, and it I mean? does happen too, and and the idea is cool. The idea of getting an army of vampires they do show some chaos. I bet he wanted to go further. I bet they stopped him. Right. Yeah. I, I like how it's so PG thirteen, man. You yeah. you sever these heads and shit like that, and they just basically kind of turn to what is it? Concrete they turn or like stone too. Yeah, it's like there's like there's no blood in this. But I will give this movie props for for throwing kids like on the fire and shit. That was kind of cool. That was cool. I mean, if you're gonna throw kids on the fire, <laughs> that's amazing. It's like well, it's like that scene. Think? What is it in Demolition Man when the guy's like throw another log on the fire and he throws a body on the fire? It's fucking hilarious, man. That's the first thing I thought of when this when this kid was flying on the fire. Throw another log on the fire. What was that, Lacey? What did you guys think when they actually killed the young girl, Brie Tanner? I, I told you she didn't have no character. Yeah, but they didn't the, want to kill a main. But in the narrative, this little girl. But in the narrative, they had to. It's just. But she was so young, so it was still effective to a point. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of was. I mean, the way they the way they tell the story <laughs> with the new, with the I'm kids down. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> but it's also a build. It's a you know, it's a build up to what we see coming in you know part four and five and stuff like that with you know yeah. kid and shit like that. So it's yeah. it's kind of giving you a it prequel like establishes some rules. It, it does. It establishes exactly the Volturi's rules and and the vampire mythology. Like it's this this can't happen. And I, I think that was probably one of the coolest things about the film is like even though we're getting this backstories on certain characters, Civil War and stuff, we get this whole story with the with the kids and why they can't be because they can't be trusted. And it's 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 a simple yeah. it's a simple rule, it's a simple ideology, but it's true. 
if you turn these kids, like they can't be trusted because you know it, you can't trust kids. So right. I, I do like that. I do like it. Simple, but it works for what they have to so, accomplish in the next film. So, so. which moods would you say that as the story is progressing, you're a little bit more invested or interested? Well, this one actually had me intrigued the most. I just wish the battle, I mean, honestly, when it started going down, I was like, oh, okay, man, it's like really bad effects and it's, it's almost off-putting to watch. You know, it's like, they really fuck, CGI suck. Suck. dude, the terrible. effects are so All right, poor. Guys, let's go. I found myself laughing at points. I'm just like, is oh it, this my... is the one where they talk? I don't know. No, that's the next one. No, it's, yeah. The next it's... one's so bad. The yeah. next one, that guy should have been fired, but they hired him for part five too. Because he shot them back to back. Because it was it was clearly yeah one they movie shot they shot broke. one oh, big ass movie. To that. I think they actually um, did well, shoot as one movie. In this one, you do uh, figure out that Edward's super uh, vampire power is that he can actually understand what wolves are thinking. Yeah, that's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. mean, each vampire has their own special ability, and his is obviously to understand. The wolf. Which did they get into these special abilities like, like in depth in the book? I thought it was. Uh, yes, yes, I thought do. it was interesting. See, I like the... Yeah, I thought it was I... weird that they incorporated that because Edward seems like such an established vampire, and you think that he would have known what his ability was before, right. you know, being a vampire for a hundred and I guess ten well, years at this point. Very fast, if you remember the baseball game in part one. Yeah, no, no I'm talking about specific How could I ever specific forget? abilities. Come though. on, spider monkeys! <laughs> right, they yeah. say. That. Like fast is okay. I mean, there's probably that's going to vary in everybody, but I'm talking specific su- abilities like being able to read wolves' minds and shit like that, right? So, well, I was seeing just the waiting future for, for Anna Kendrick to get a fucking superpower because they just give them out to anybody apparently in this Bella before she's a vampire, yeah. and that's where it kind of well, she loses was always me. a shell. I don't fucking but you buy don't it. Find that out that's until bull- the this is so film. stupid though. It's like let's add in all this extra stuff that that basically doesn't um, serve any purpose other than to move along the plot when we come to that mind-reading scene or whatever. It's just, there's too much going on. It's like, oh, wait, this is the one that can read minds. Oh, wait, this is the one that can see the future. Like, it, it turns just, into it's fucking too... X-Men. It, it becomes right. an X-Men <laughs> ripoff. It literally does. No, it's exactly I was it watching is. it yeah. like, these are X-Men ripoffs now. Well, yeah. JP said well, JP that liked New, New Mutants, though, He so. said New Mutants was yeah. better than this. At least this one got away from the whole high school shit uh, you know, for the most part kind yeah. of thing, you know, it's, it, it takes itself right. out of that setting kind of narrative. Well, they graduate like, in this one. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It's like, it takes you out of that. So it's like, well, <clears throat> you know, it's showing you something a little bit different here. So it's good. I hate how much these movies have like 20 minute scenes where they just talk about throwing parties and shit. I'm like, you guys are fucking vampires. What do you do? Is it, it'll be great. We'll have shrimp cocktail. And it's like 40 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, what the fuck is this? It'll be what great. We'll have shrimp cocktail. <laughs> Dude, it's driving me nuts. All the vampires are like, we're going to throw the best graduation party. It's like, I hate you. I fucking hate you. They're just trying to... <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Dave, I have to ask you, who was your least favorite character in this entire franchise? Edward. The Russians. They were the worst actors, and they looked stupid. <laughs> I, th- I thought the Irish were so weak, though, man. And oh, that like... Irish guy was so... F- in the fifth one, when he was like, Irish knows how to make a stand. I was like, no, you don't. You fucking never got your freedom. <laughs> Scotland did, but you didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? I like that when, when the guy calls right? him out. He's like, you guys didn't even win that war. He's like, ah, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you guys fucking lost. You guys <laughs> are still fucking My least favorite character you. is fucking Dakota Fanning. Like, uh, she yeah, has she maybe, like, ten lines. Does she even Who's say she? ten and things? All she says is pain. Oh, you hate her? I fucking hate her. I think she's the worst in the entire yeah, franchise. Yeah, she was a not weird gonna character. Like, having a big, a, a, a pretty big name in there, not to have any dialogue like that, I was like, that's bizarre. And, and the Russians she are real bad. Pain. Yeah. And, like, obviously they want her to, like, show her emotion or whatever, but, like, it's... <laughs> were the two guys from city. South like, America, were they were they gay vampires? I don't know what's going on with those well, and Well, actually... I was just confused. Like, like, I don't know what they're following. I also hate... Maggie Grace's character. I, I actually just hate Maggie Grace as an actress. Period. Who's Maggie Grace? Uh, Maggie Grace plays Irina, the one that you know whistleblows well, on the out. fence. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, she was in me. one of my favorite series of all Not time, the Lost, the and she was also in the Taken movies where she plays a sixteen-year-old girl when she's like twenty-five, and she's like, "Daddy, 
Like I fu- I fucking just hate her. I well, hate you know what those actress. naked movies were about? She was actually it was like a fetish where she wanted to get kidnapped on purpose, and it was for Pornhub, and then her dad would come rescue her, and then he'd you know, get the prize, and then he would find her in an oven. <laughs> no, yeah, stuck like, in the I oven. I just fucking hate Maggie Grace. I <laughs> All right, so like if if you know me and you follow me, I really hate uh, Juliet more, <laughs> but really? I hate Maggie Grace more. Damn, dude, you hate a lot of women, man. Well, What's wrong with Julianne Moore? Listen, no, I don't hate a lot of women. I just hate little bitches that want to play the victim. Can I say so, something, though? Jared, I like Julianne Moore. I think she's a good actress, actually. I'll say this about hate and the general perception of this series, and I think, like, this is one of the main, um, you know, talking subjects of this whole series, which is I find myself ironically defending these and not because it's it's a tough <laughs> position though because he, i don't think he emphasized really ironically i like that that was good right <laughs> but like it's you defend these movies they're not terrific but the amount of hate is just uh, when yeah. you see it it's always people that have no business talking about them. like i didn't want to talk about these i never would right. want to, make well, way to talk exactly. about them well, it's like i post about them that I'm watching them and somebody has to sit there and comment on every single film. It's always dudes. Like, what are you doing watching these? Right. Movies? It's, it's like 40 yeah. year old dudes. It's like, dude, like, I always make fun of guys. Like, I, What's wrong with being a 40 year old dude? I don't even Come want on. to. Well, you know how they are. They're always boy toys. <laughs> yep. Like, Fucking with the boy they, toys. <laughs> they, they try so hard. And to me, that's a more interesting aspect. Like they want to make why? sure, you know, they're masculine. If they right. don't tell you that yes, they that hate is. things yeah. that aren't for them, they have to. It has to yeah, be something. Dude, I, like, I go out of their way to talk about it. I would just ignore it. Just ignore it. And people are probably right, no, forgot about the beginning of the show. And they're like, oh, yeah. but you guys are doing exactly what you're bitching about. And it's like, actually. Yeah, but we but got we, picked to do it, and it, I didn't want to do it. That's my point. We well, were fo- I mean, we were kind I of forced to do this, so. Yeah. I haven't posted, like, any of my thoughts on the films. I just said, like, you know, I was doing podcast prep. Right. And the outpour of people saying, oh, and it's all dudes. These are trash. It's cliche or, at this point. Uh, Did they take away your I, horror card? Where they're like, you're not a real horror fan. Uh, no, they haven't done that in a they while. They may be able to take my horror done, card, but they'll never take my pervert card. How can you pull someone's horror card, card if they're talking shit about I got Twilight when. I erotic film collection in my house. They're not even well, fucking I mean, horror I movies. I never said these films were horror, so if they try to take my card away from that, then. Like, I mean. Yeah, but those I are mean, the idiots that are real. I mean, it's a five general status. Right. Did I not have to go through a process? What? Am I a five star general yet? No, not yet. It takes time. Uh, no. He takes... <laughs> said no. Let's move on. Okay. No. Honestly, JP's like, only I round don't... two and a half himself. So Whoa. Jesus. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> the, the hate that these movies get, I, I like Dave said though. Like just ignore. It. I I totally agree, and I never bought into it for a second. I do think it's fascinating though that people do go out of their way. Just to fucking say, oh, I hate that. Like, bro, just don't watch it. Like, a Serbian film, something like that, you can see, obviously. But, like, something like this, it's like, just stay in your lane. Stick to what you like. These are kind of, like, guilty pleasures. Yeah, I'm not going to watch a fucking... You can't pass the controversy. People hate it or like it just for what it is, and they don't even talk about the movie anymore. Right. Right. Exactly. Same thing with this. Same thing with this, really. So... (laughs) So this is this is the Serbian film on the same thing, the same movie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think this one's the best just because they add in, hey, we got a group of bad vampires to now team up and then fight. And I, I feel like honestly, it's like, actually while my favorite the, too. The first couple books, uh, and then subsequently the movies were obviously catered to and more directed towards you know, girls that like the books or whatever. I feel like the third one was trying to incorporate, I I, I don't know, this, this is just my opinion. By getting David Slade as a director, they're trying to expand it beyond that. Do no I think doubt. they succeeded? Not necessarily, How but this is my thing. It, it just, it's drowned out by its shitty narrative. Right there's right. there's cool ideas in here, but the yeah, but the core narrative nothing, itself. You know, with two movies. But that's up to that's it. what I'm saying. That's what the I problem is with this director, franchise is the actual story sucks. I think the director was like, "Fuck, I'm, I'm taking this job because Ty Pang. I'm gonna try to put as much of shit that I would like in this as possible, and let's just see how it goes." Right. Um, but you know what? They should have had a scene with Veronica and the vampire she turned that was controlling all the new bloods. Like, 
I know it's the PG-13, but they should have had a fucking scene because he needs some convincing. He can't be that stupid. Like, because the other vampire's like, she's using you, and he knows it, but he's like, no! So he should have got, like, you know, some or something. They should have had, like, I love really how the rating system is so you different now. This would have been rated Victoria G in 1980. Seth should have been... Better? Yeah. Longer? Something. I was actually kind of shocked by it because I thought she was going to be the main antagonist through all five. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> I believe she should have been. Absolutely. Who, Victoria? Um, yeah, they I should have maybe had yeah. somebody be in the fourth movie instead of nothing. I just didn't understand where it was going to go after this. Because I was like, well, um, I mean, I guess we can still get married and stuff. But um, <laughs> well, that's where that's where it was. Like, well, it had to it had to get well, to I that mean, point because of, in the, you know, new moon to where they have the Volteri. To right, where like, she needs what? to be turned. But I mean, others aside from that, I mean, yeah. I get it. They have laws and they feel like they broke a law and going on. Well, it's just but... that the Veron Victoria character was in like <clears throat> the overarching um, villain of the three films. So I'm like, okay, what, what, where are we going? She should have, you think she should have been consistent throughout? I don't really Alex. care if she was. I just was surprised that well, well the Volteri kind of is replaced her later. character with Irina's character, the one that you know kind of whistle blew, and I think that would have made more sense. Who who is that big whistleblower that ended up going? Was it uh, Megan Grace? No, she no, was the cousin, right? No, the real life one. What was it Edward Snowden? I can't think what of What do you mean the real life one? It was she wasn't real life, she was a vampire. No, the whistleblower I'm talking about who ended up having to go to Russia because he never mind. I'm confused. Oh, it are you has... talking about Edward Snowden? Yeah, I thought it was Edward Snowden was his name. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> I actually oh, thought I was gonna call her that. Yeah. Okay, so so this one basically ends, I think, with a whole pile of melodrama shit and then they decide that they're getting married and stuff. Oh no, they get engaged, right? Like officially get engaged officially officially yeah they officially and then i think that they decide that they're going to tell charlie about it and stuff so which leads into the yeah and then which leads into the uh, disaster of part four so i'm done with this one i'm done i'm done i'm done all right so jp yeah i actually personally think this is the best in the series um Mm-hmm. I think it's the height of it. Uh, I think whenever you talk about like pacing, it has the best pace. Like it, we don't spend a million years like staring at each other and shit like we did in the first two <laughs> and the next two. Um, so I think that this one actually feels like a real movie at times. What? Um, and it, I think that the love triangle stuff was a little funny and uh, the, um, the Voltori is pretty cool. You know the, the the it has more action and stuff. I don't know. Well, I thought I thought it was. It's the... not really in this one though. <clears throat> Do not. Did they not come in at the end? Or is that? I get. The, That's I'm kind part of two. Mind. Okay, then never mind. <laughs> this is the one where uh, Edward rips off. Victoria's no, the Volturi head. show up at the end of this one. I think they, they show up for a little bit. Oh, yeah, well, or, 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 still not or members or members they of the not that not the head guys was creating newborns, but they didn't get involved. Yeah, right, right. yeah, they okay. sent somebody. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought this one was the easiest to watch, so I'm giving it a six. Okay, so yeah, I thought this one was you know decent for what it is. Again, I just I can't stand the narrative. It's fucking awful. Um, but you know, I I do like the. You know, the, I really wish it was just better. <laughs> in simple terms, man. Like, you're you're gonna create this whole revenge plot line, you know, with these newborns and shit like that, and it just, I don't know, it's it's pretty disappointing when it comes down to the battles and shit like that. But I, I get what they were trying to do with this, you know. And I'm just happy it took itself out of the the school kind of thing and stuff. And then, but like where it goes, I mean, dude, I can't stand the relationship so much, but it does have elements in here <clears throat> that are okay that are okay um but still it doesn't work fully for me at all so but it is probably my favorite one and i'm i'm coming in at a four <laughs> wow it's your favorite one and it comes in at a four yeah um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call that favorite i would say that well more. i would say out of <laughs> the one that i liked the most <laughs> yeah right right the one that i tolerated the most <laughs> um 
I think there was a lot of missteps here in this one, though. That was my biggest complaint with this, man. Like, there's an idea idea here that's pretty cool. It's just it's just misstepped, man. It's just it's drowned out by the shitty narrative, man. It sucks. It's too bad. Uh, the end of this film is what actually made me want to watch the other films, even though, like, obviously I'd read the books, but had I not, this is the one that kind of like hooks you in, and you kind of want to see the big grand finale, um, which you don't get for the next film, but the one after. But um, it was entertaining, I guess. Um, I Like, they introduced a lot more of the werewolf aspect in this one, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a six as well. This is not my favorite. Um, we'll hear about that one later. Am I going or is Dan going to go? Or should I just put hey, Dan at the end? Dan right. is gone. <laughs> okay. So um, this one probably is the best, and I did have it at a three and a half, but I'll bump it up to a four. What? Oh. How is this the best is mind-boggling to me, you guys? If you, if you think the best is four. Dude, then, uh... the, be- the next two are fucking trash. No, that's a lie. <laughs> Dude. Four the ne- trash. This one is two hours of just fucking you can tell that this was shot together <laughs> and getting, it's it's film. the first pa- okay you, you know the, okay let, let it's me the first half of the second i'm only part. talking about the fourth one for 10 minutes Wh- whenever so whenever they do that right you've heard films like okay we're basing the are we we're turning the fourth now officially no just one second the when you hear them say we're turning two you know one story into two films Y'all, y'all, your instant idea is like, oh, that the they're gonna be like fucking padded as shit. But usually it doesn't turn out that way with like Harry Potter. This is not the fucking case. This no. is like the concern everybody has. It this is this happens. is two hours of the finale of the second. It's crazy. It's like a total fucking. It's it's the interlude on the record. You know what I'm saying? And then when you watch the part film. five after four, you realize that there was so much shit they should have thrown in part four and elaborated on, but they didn't. And they rushed it in part five. Yeah. Part four is all right. right. All right, so that is Twilight Saga. What was Eclipse. it called again? Eclipse. <laughs> what is it called? It's called for- Boy Toy. Fucking forgot. It's called Boy Toy. Ah, oh, shit. No measure of time with you will be long enough. But we'll start with forever. All right, so moving along into 2011 with the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 1. Quick little synopsis. Oh, this is directed by Bill Condon. I'll say that because he directed the second part also, which I'm pretty damn sure they shot this together and chopped it into two. No, no way, Moods. They would never do something like that. No, who would ever think of doing something that ridiculous? Besides trauma. I mean, yeah, man. Well, I mean, they did it with the, you know, Infinity War. So when I first saw the name, I was like, Bill Condon. I'm like, where the fuck do I know that name from? Yeah, fucking Candyman. Feral to Flesh, the second one. He directed that fucking film. I was like, okay. Oh, well, that's why we don't know him. Which we have actually reviewed on the show a long, long time ago. But um, yeah, so that's kind of where I recognize the name from. So synopsis. Uh the Quillettes. I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> Whatever. What? The the, the Quillettes. Can you say that one more time? Uh, no, I'm not doing it. Third. No, not happening. Close in <laughs> on expecting parents Edward and Bella, whose unborn child poses a threat to the wolf pack and the townspeople of Forks. Oh man! So this it, opens up with a wedding, and it it's. A if long... anybody ever complained about the deer hunter wedding being long, Dude, they have no idea. Dude, you fucking stole my joke. I was going to say well, that, you how fucker. How did they make out? You fucking after... totally stole that material right from my fucking phone. Son of a bitch. Yeah. That's right. I can read your phone. That's have, fucking uh, so... I have Alice's power. Dude, I, I can see the future. We, well, guys, we think before... alike, man. We think alike, man, because this shit was painstaking. Like, I thought it would be like a couple minute scene and then go on their honeymoon and shit, but it's like... It's a really Their drawn out wedding movie. party. And then they go to the, their, um, you know, on their honeymoon. And then it's like another hour of this. And then she gets pregnant. It's fucking, this, this, like, <laughs> this movie sucks, man. Holy oh. fuck is this bad, dude. Like there's no, so much padding not... of time in this. It's crazy it's how much they pad the time. Thing. What were you saying, Lacey? 
like the book is so thick, like compared to all the other books, like when you hold it in your hand. Hence why the two like, movies, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's a thick book. And <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like I know like in part two when she is, you know, seeing Edward – uh, just to get the adrenaline rush so she can see him. Now she is dreaming of her future. Like, she has not turned into a vampire at this point, but she is having bloody dreams that she is dreaming <laughs> right before the wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's walking down the aisle, and then there's a bloody pile up of all of the people that attend her wedding. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, was that in this one? That That was okay, how that looked. But the one well, at least we finally got some blood. The the major problem I have with this movie is, in part five, we introduce like fifty characters, and they're all rushed. They don't have much depth, and they literally could have given you all the backstories in this and and had them contacted earlier. And it this shows how poorly paced this movie is. This is one of the most poorly paced films I've ever seen in my life. And again, that's the issue with you know it being a you know a book series versus a film. Well, yeah, you know, it's shit like this, man. So they get on, you know, after the wedding, you know, we get this long extended fucking wedding scene. They go on their um their uh, honeymoon. Well, not only that though, moods. They yeah. kissed for a very 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 long yeah. time for well, wedding. <laughs> what makes it what makes, you know, the padding even worse. Like sometimes padding it is what it is, you know. You know, it, it maybe it's budget constraints and stuff. This is just shit writing, but this is a great example of what not to do. And I totally agree with Dave, man. If you're going to introduce like 150 fucking characters in the second half of this, why not try and, you know, space this out and make this shit a little bit more enjoyable. But well, you with... get a couple of them. No, but, but this, I mean, like, you, you get Irina, Maggie Grace. Right. Who I yeah. Hate. But she was in the other one. She was in part three. Wasn't she? No, no, this one. Uh, I don't even, but anyways, is, so you I'm don't talk... get introduced to Edward's cousins. Until no, I thought movie. you introduced her. Was it at the wedding? Yeah, yeah, He's it was. fucking eating. So, so anyways, <laughs> Wait, we... the scene that I'm talking about here, man, is like, you know, okay, so after, you know, they get married, they go on their honeymoon and stuff like that, and they basically consummate the relationship um, or their marriage or whatever. Uh, what do you mean consummate? They, like, decimated their relationship. Well, well, that, well that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about here, man. So, basically, I don't know what the fuck happens in the scene. Obviously, Edward can't control his, his strength or something. Like Anyways, like they fuck. Yeah, they don't really allude on that because they, they say it's dangerous for him to have sex with her, but they don't say why ever. Yeah, I know. And you this know is, okay, mean? this is it's leading into my problem. Yeah. This is no, leading into my major. Up just for a second, guys. Um. Uh, Jacob was not going to come to the wedding, right? right? Yeah, and then he, and then he shows up, <laughs> and then he shows up, and he's like happy for her. But then yeah. he gets super pissed when she when he realizes that she's going to have sex with him mm-hmm. while right. she's still a human. <laughs> so yeah, okay. and that's how, where we find out that it's like dangerous, but we don't really know why. Right? Yeah, so, I mean, right. it's exposition at its. They can't final. control. They can't control themselves. Well, I mean, she wanted to fuck well, him. Well, their sex, like, when they, the sexual with the blood is all mixed. When vampire well, feeds, is, it's sexual, so. This is actually the bloodiest film out of all five of them. Do you guys disagree? I don't remember. I don't well, remember. Well, no, the bloodiest <laughs> scene is when she gives birth. I think oh. it might be. Yeah. yeah, no, there is no other blood in these films aside, you know, from maybe when okay. they get bit so, once or twice. But the baby coming out is the bloodiest part of all five of them. So going back to, you know, the the fucking and Edward completely demolishes the room, <laughs> completely demolishes the room. The and, yeah. you know, so we get that whole thing, which is just kind of awkward in itself. And then, of course, you know, he realizes after that, you know, she's all bruised up and stuff. And then and then they have this over dramatic bullshit where he's like all down on himself. He's like, I, I didn't mean to hurt or I hurt you and stuff. And she's like, no, you didn't. It is what it is. You know, she's kind of playing it off like whatever. And then it just becomes this huge fucking melodramatic bullshit. And this is what I'm Poor, talking about. Uh- it's oh, fucking horrible. terrible. It was such it's, a waste it's some of, time. of the worst Dumb shit. We already know that she doesn't care that you did that. You are right. Know. Why are you pretending like you don't? Like, and it this goes is so on stupid. and on and on and on. And I'm like, are they going to do anything in this fucking movie, man? It's just so fucking poorly written. It's so dude. obviously padded. It's, oh, it's, it's like, so bad. I can see them laughing at me while they walk to the bank to cash the fucking check. Right. They're specifically laughing at you, Dave. 
they like, are. This guy really didn't want to watch these. I no, they're like. Alright, so there are a lot of things that actually happen in the novels that they could have split up to, you know, make it better, a little bit more interesting, you know, with the cousins or the characters that they're introducing in the fifth film. Yeah, they, they should have been in the fourth movie and just introduced yeah, them early. like, 100%. They should have been, like, some shit's going down. Yeah, I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Oh, right. those are our cousins. I'm like, where the fuck did they come from? No, it's and, and so poorly done. Up in this. Who did you it's say such like a joke. It, it is. This is, like, the worst Bill shit I've Cotton. ever seen. Like... <sighs> Fuck it. It's almost like a sitcom too. We're like, oh, don't you know that's your Jamaican cousin? Like seventh <laughs> season of a show that's right. fucking get canceled. Right. Didn't you remember you had your Hawaiian cousins? So the big, and the they big look thing like in... them, but they're just a different skin tone in the fucking cartoon show. Is just a uh-huh. garbage fucking writing. So the no, big. But so... did you guys also notice that the Collins? They don't even have the eye thing going on anymore. They just look like. Normal. I noticed that Carlisle and the mom look like thirty-five years older, and she had like an eight <laughs> head. Like I could put eight of my fingers on her forehead. Right. Dude, this guy <clears throat> directed Candyman too. Yeah, we've been all over this. Yeah, I already talked. I know about you all guys that. started without me. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, here. Know. But you're lucky. I asked so. if everyone was here, and and someone said, "Yep, we're all here." So. <laughs> well, I didn't. He obviously couldn't say. I'm pretty yes. sure he was here when that happened. Yeah, I asked if everybody was here, and you said, "Yep, I'm here," and I was like, "No, I'm not." I, I just took one word for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> is everybody here? Yep. I probably okay. said, "Yep," oh, just out of instinct. He's like, oh, "Yep, yep." So I mean, basically, the big thing in this. I to say about this film, though, honestly. Oh. Because. So... Oh. Honestly, I could sum this up in like three little things. All right. All right so Bella and Edward get married. They go on the honeymoon. They fuck. She gets pregnant. And then she almost dies giving birth. That's basically. Now, I will say. Everything. I will say the pregnancy and how, like, they didn't. Like, they were like, this shouldn't be possible thing. I thought that was kind of intriguing just because I'm like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. You know what I mean? But that's like literally the only thing I was. This is Blaine's in- origin story. Slightly intrigued by. Well, when I posted that I watched this movie and somebody came back, they're like, oh, well, you know, this movie's trash because they want us to sympathize with, you know, the the baby that they gave birth to or whatever. But I mean, obviously. We sat for two hours while Bella was saying, I'm going to die for this baby, basically. So I feel so, like... What, wait, they, they, were, they thought it was trash because we were going to sympathize with a baby? Yeah. What well, the fuck is wrong with people? Wait, what? I'm confused. For Nesme. Yeah, it's Tr- a fucking trash baby. May. Like, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't name it EJ. I'm kind of fucking I shocked that I feel they... like that would have been more effective for everybody. Like in the movie when she brings it up and they're like, your sister's making fun of my uh, dumb baby names or something. I'm like, dude, literally though, like this is like the dumbest name I've ever heard in my life. Eh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I honestly I don't mean, give a shit would, either. I think man. it would have been more effective had it been a boy because she's sitting there saying and like obviously Bella is special, but she's like, I think it's a boy and it's obviously not a boy. <laughs> you know, right? So, um. The, the uh, whenever w- one thing I will say about this in terms of the um, behind the scenes like marketing stuff, they should not have marketed this as Breaking Dawn Part One. They literally should have ended it with you know Bella and and not knowing if she was gonna be like fucking dead or whatever, and just been like end, and then you know no. then. In the books, JP. But that's the problem. There's um, source material, right? It, it was so. it was so much more agonizing to read about. Well, her obviously. And giving, it was, yeah, but it that would have been weird. funny. The people that didn't read the book thought she died, and that was the end of the right. series. Right, but would then, so but fucking well, funny. Well, what would have happened though well, is then you dead. announce you don't call it part <laughs> one; you just call it Breaking Dawn, and then <clears> everybody's like, "Holy fuck!" You know, and then and then you, you call the next one two. after Breaking. Dawn. So I got a yeah. question here. I got a question. I may have missed something, but I do have a question because there is a scene in the film, of course, um, well, it's like pretty much the whole fucking movie, but Bella's obviously really, really pregnant and she's dying because basically <laughs> what's inside her is is kind of eating her from the inside out. Like it's taking all the nutrients and stuff. She can't, you know, keep herself healthy and shit like that. And of course, Jacob has this idea, which, you know, Edward actually reads his mind on it something like that, you know, feed the baby or something like that. 
Well, my question is, is that uh, the the dad, his name is Carlisle. Um, mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've got some O negative over here. And I'm like, why? He's a doctor. But why would he have that there? Like, at because the ho- they drink well, blood and shit, too. Well, no, they're not allowed to have it. No, one. but that's my point. That's my whole fucking point here. Well, because no, it, like, But in an emergency, you would still want some fucking doctor, though. Like, that's he is a the whole doctor. Thing so, he was just, so he was just anticipating. So he was just anticipating. Oh, this, this is what I'm asking. Because I know that they're not supposed to be drinking human blood. Because once you get that taste again, you start to lose your shit. So I'm like, the human blood technically shouldn't be there for any other reason as precautions of something might like go a wrong. Drug keeping heroin Some, in their house. No. I, no, it has <laughs> everything to do with it has everything to do with Bella maybe having some uh issues during the, the pregnant man had had to do a blood transfusion or something like that. Because there was no other reason for that blood to be mm-hmm. there. Right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he just says, Oh, I've got it here. I'm like, What? I'm like, you shouldn't have human blood in the house unless you're anticipating With something a bunch going of wrong. Vampires, and especially if they were sitting there the whole time when they all been freaking out. The well, whole that's time. what I'm saying, dude, because they even specify yeah, like, if, you, said, if like you start having thing. any type of yeah. human blood again, you get the taste for it. It's not good. So you stay the fuck away from it. So but they don't right. explain that he anticipated, you know, there are going to be some issues and stuff. It just kind of thrown in there. It, it, it totally caught me. Yeah, off they guard. don't they don't discuss it. But I mean, he is a doctor and I assume that he probably like. So, the, so your answer is that he was anticipating. He was anticipating the complications of the of the pregnancy. Yeah. So if you want I to, explain, so. okay. So that's how I, I thought about it. And I was like, well, that's no, the only no, thing no, I could no, think no, of. No, 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 no. What they do you mean? were going to the whole point of you know from two to now was Bella was going to they had to turn her. Oh, so you're right. You're right. So she would have had to have blood on hand. Oh, so you're they right. so they were so they were anticipating. That she would have needed the blood, she would have had the blood loss. She would have had to have oh, it. Oh, but no, they don't want her to kill someone. Yeah. Well, no, no, no they even no, specify it, that. In the it doesn't make notes. sense, dude. Because why would you why, feed her? Why does that not make sense? Kate, let me fucking talk, then, man. Jesus. <laughs> so why would you feed her human blood? You don't want to give a, a newborn, which she's going to be a fucking newborn, human blood. You want to get her on the animal blood right away. They even say that. That's once, right. once, they that? yes, they do. Yeah, and, and once, okay, let me let me talk. Turns, once they talk, kill an animal once first. once they fucking turn her, they instantly get her out. They're like, you need to go and hunt. You need to get that human or the the animal blood in you. You need to taste that. Oh. Hence, why the fuck do they have the human blood there? That's right. right? Yeah, that's that's why I I was I was stewing over this because I'm watching this going. It has to be an anticipation for complications or something, but it's still very risky to have that human blood there if you don't need it. You're right. It's bad writing. Unless they no, said it in some type of dialogue, you, unless they said it in dialogue. It makes sense for the plot point of this specific film. Yeah, well, if she needed blood transfusion, that's the only way I can figure it. But I wish they yeah. had have said that because it just, you know, if you're not thinking about the way I am, you'd look at it and go, why the fuck would they have human blood? They specifically say that's Normally, not good. But they did say for complications. Yeah. Did they Normally... Say- I, would, I don't remember them saying complications so that's why i was asking so much like because i'm like eh, it's small detail but when you have a film this long there shouldn't be any questions but it's not you know a small I mean? detail like, it's a major everything. detail it's a major plot error if if there was an anticipation for the blood transfusion of her possibly dying because you know i mean you would ju- you wouldn't put your family at risk of having that you know that taste of human blood right there and stuff right so i just wish they had to set it like bluntly like oh by the way we have this blood here just in case some shit goes wrong because i don't know when they were actually going to do the turning and stuff obviously her being turned had to be at that point because she literally fucking died right so (laughs) well i mean i do know that they think that this is like a super dangerous thing with the pregnancy and like uh, super unheard of so it would make sense he would take some extra precautions yeah yeah i wish they had to just because it got me like i said it got me thinking i'm just like oh my god seriously man but anyways yeah so she delivers this actually think of like the look of her like oh dude that was actually pretty good they made her look fucking super disgusting it was all cg yeah they even even cg they even cg the baby the baby, yeah, her face. No, no. The CGI baby. The, the, the baby is horrible. The baby the face CGI is so baby, CGI. I started laughing hysterically. Same, same. Oh my god, dude! I literally was like, I'm wasting my life right now. 
<laughs> yeah, that, 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 honestly, the CGI baby was like the jump the shark moment for me. I was, was just like, okay. that was that was the worst moment in the film. Said, dude, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I hate this thing. This it is was it, this is really bad. This it's going bad. down. Bella the more we talk dying. about it, it's going that down. Looks pretty real to me. I no, but good, Bella though. looked good. I thought First, she looked I think that really was practical. Gross. She looked like and she lost weight. I, I, that's what I was gonna say. It looked like she lost weight too. Well, and I think the cool part about it was, you know, when she, it takes you from when they were on our honeymoon and, you know, she's trying on all the lingerie or whatever and, you know, showing Edward her body and then, you know, so obviously... So she ain't got nobody. Yeah. So basically, yeah. what happens in the end of this film? They have this fucking baby, blah blah blah, do all this shit and stuff, and then and then like. But they the... do have. We haven't talked about um, to where they feel like they have broken the pact. The pact because um, the werewolves. The the, yeah, the treaty. The werewolves are going to attack, and oh yeah, they want to kill. Obviously, the baby. they need to you know hunt. Yeah, because technically they made a new vampire in the in the land <laughs> yeah 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 but they all look like super normal they look like normal people which was probably the most off-putting thing of this film i mean edward Cullen gets more tan throughout these films oh and, and my notes say uh vampire walking around in khaki shorts is too much. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking around in fucking khaki shorts, man. This movie is trash bags. Why did like, they put the Why did they joke. put the scene that you know basically tells the Volturi that you know um, that th- they had a baby and shit like that? Why did they put that in the in the post like in the mid credit scene or post credit scene or whatever the fuck you want to call it? I thought that was just so odd to set up for the final. And no, but, but why not put it like at the end of the film? Why in the, why well, in the fucking I in the credits? Yeah, one, right. I don't fucking know. Right? Because how many people would have missed one that book, shit? Not two movies originally. Because like know? I obviously fast right, obviously. like I, I obviously fast because I was like oh there's like twelve minutes of credits here I'm like there's got to be a scene right there's got to be and of course there was it was like four or five minutes into the credits I'm like what the fuck like how many people fucking miss that stupid stupid something so Eddie dumb one with the brain and it's literally Most, the honestly, connection to the next film. Watching these films was thinking of your reaction to watching these. Films. Honestly. I I thought of Dave's because he was bitching so much. <laughs> it was hilarious to me. And then after no, me and Dave finished, I was like happy. I knew and I was that fun you would it. somewhat respect him, JP. I don't respect him. No. No. Not. I I started to respect certain aspects of them by the third one, and then I like even I was telling Dave that I I didn't think they were that bad. And he was giving me a little bit of shit. But then by the time I got to the fourth one, I was like, nope, fuck this. Yeah, I didn't really say much in the chat about these all week. Yeah. No, I was, I was in a bad mood all I fucking just, week. I just, you know what I did? <laughs> by the time I got to the fifth movie, I live across the street from a Chili's. I, I got a semi automatic machine gun. <laughs> and right when that fifth movie ended, I walked nice. in there and I, I lit that Chili's up. I killed everybody in the Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> that was um so the, the sex scene in part four the, the sex scene in part four uh was originally the reason that this film received an r rating they gave it an r they gave it an r but there's nothing even explicit about it though well they they cut it down well to a he did break the wood they cut some shit out of this oh my god yes it was they oh cut. My... Hard well what they cut out was the cold dick scene <laughs> cold dick uh, the ice cube dick scene. Fuck, that's yeah, weird. He just pulls a popsicle. He's got a popsicle down there. Like, one of those, like to impact popsicles. It's cherry red. Oh, God. I also read that um, Kristen it's, it's Stewart American, had to American spend... one with the red, white, and blue. <laughs> Kristen Stewart also spent uh, three hours in the makeup chair for those scenes where she looks grotesque. It's a great makeup job for three hours. Yeah, no, they did do a good job. Yeah, I thought there was, I thought there was some CG in there too, man. I thought there was something going on with her face, but I don't know. I I could, there might've been. been. I think they, I think they, I think they touched it up. I think they touched it up with some CG. A lifetime movie about anorexia. They didn't, they didn't worry about the babies though. Holy fuck. (laughs) I mean, we have a full out war in the next film and but yet, this is the bloodiest film <laughs> of them all. Right. Yeah, but it's not even like violence, blood. It's like bullshit. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's that dumbed down, concrete fucking decapitations violence. I don't even, I don't get the PG 13 on any of these films, to be honest. 
You think uh, it's part, just part three? PG? Part three could have got a PG thirteen. Yeah, but the other, I think everything else is PG films. Um, I mean, yeah. uh, any type of. Well, Dude, like I said, in <laughs> 90, in, before the PG-13 rating, this was a rated G oh, movie. Yes. This wasn't even oh, PG. Yeah. <laughs> it's rated for vampire sexuality. <laughs> right, right. Do, do you remember yeah, no, that joke? Honestly, I could, oh, no. I could see the PG rating totally, Moods. On uh, UFC? Yeah, I was I thinking think, of G. I, no, I think PG for sure. Yeah. So what do you guys think? We should get into ratings? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, I think Who's that's up? me first. Uh, Breaking Dawn, this movie is garbage. Like, I don't have anything else to say about it. I mean, there's literally a wedding, a a bunch of corny, corny fucking montages, melodrama bullshit with some bruises. We get a poorly executed baby, CG baby, and then the connection to the next film. This whole movie is is just one big pad. Like, it's so. This is the worst shit I've ever seen, man. I've never seen anything like this before, man. In a, in like a big budget like Hollywood movie. This is crazy, man. So crazy. Not to mention, this is the 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 final. This is you know, it's right. it's the same named movie. It's the final. Right. Like. <sighs> well, it's not actually the final. It's a setup to the final. It's it's technically part one of a final. Well, I mean, it's I'm looking at my. I pad. think you guys are a lot harder on these. I think that no, this if I had a sucks. three on part two, done. and I like oh. that one a lot more, I, I'm coming in at a one and a half on this one. It's oh, exactly. this is atrocious, man. Like I can't even come anywhere near part two because I, I could I'd rather watch that one over this one. Yeah. So uh, one and a half. One and a half. <laughs> who's next? I don't remember. Who's I think next. He, 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 um. Is it me? You. Oh. Yep. Uh, yeah. I feel like this is all just... I think it could have easily been put into one film, honestly. You know, make it a two and a half hour film. And yeah. I think people probably would have maybe been more receptive to it, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to come in at a 2.5. Ooh. Yeah, this one's getting... Definitely yeah. getting a Hall of Pain. There's no way it's not. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, yeah. See, I thought you like you. Wait, you just said we were coming too hard on this. Yeah, but she gave it a point higher than us. She knows it. It's it's like the other one. I think is better. This one's worse. Is it my turn uh, now? No, no. Actually, um, I think you guys will be very surprised at my rating on the next one. Oh shit. Oh man. But, so, um, oh man. We are yeah, gonna differ this, bad. This one, I feel definitely should have just been. I I don't think it should have been separated into two films. Period. Um, it, it doesn't have enough content. Yeah, no, this, is, this should have been one movie. No, this is very... Like, I bet I the books their do. Their wedding kiss was like five fucking minutes long. And it's ridiculous. And maybe I'm very sentimental to this period in time in my life. I don't know. We'll find out. But 2.5. Oh. JP or me, I don't remember. I think it's you, Dave. Yeah, well, it's weird. Me and Moods have the same exact rating. Uh, I, I was at before we started talking about this. I was a little higher. I was like at two, but man, this is fucking awful. I, I hate this movie, and the, clearly they it's padding. It's is an hour. It's like an hour and a half of fucking padding in a two-hour movie, and they and they broke it up so they can make money, and it's the most obvious fucking ploy to make. They're all everything's yeah, there to make money, absolutely. but this is just too much. It's yeah, too much. The, this Fuck is you. just this is like a kick to yeah. kick in the face to and, fans and and and. This movie's got to get one and a half because all those poor souls died in chilies. <laughs> well, that what it took what four films to get in the Hall of Pain, dude. This thing got a three. So what did I rate? Four, the, uh, five and a half that total. Movie that you were giving me shit for Dave. What did you give that JP? What what, what movie? The the, the, well, the movie that you were giving me shit. The GL killer is on the phone. The killer. What did I rate that? Three. Something like that. Okay. I don't fucking know. Yeah, this is this is worse than that. I just wanted to make sure. I wasn't no, I don't think you understood that movie. I, I, dude, I mean that movie's I not great. But it's not bad. It's not I, bad, I, bad. Literally, we talked all about the plot. I understood it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm funny. just, I just like I to say that to you, man, because it's funny to me. To the ratings, yeah. of The climax. So this movie is mostly garbage. Like, and by mostly, I mean like ninety percent of the movie is garbage. It just the only, good, the only good stuff is like how, uh, what's your face looked with the, with the, you know fucking being disgusting because she was like 
malnourished and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then the the father is in the movie and he's fun and he's trying to figure out what's going on with his daughter and stuff and I like him. And that's well, it. That's like, that I guess that would be like 98%. The... Right? Oh, I actually forgot to bring up that. I think I mentioned it earlier, but he does. I think the best part in the whole movie, which I have in my notes, is the fact that he makes the joke about, he's like, what's the deal with all the uh, the graduation caps on the wall? <laughs> it's like some yeah. kind of joke. I actually kind of laughed out loud at that. And I was like, that's pretty sad when that's the, the best moment in the movie. So, um, Is this is this where we find out that dude imprints the, the daughter? Or no. is that yes. in the next? Yes, yes. Um, he yeah, I had to look that up because but, I forgot that they talked about it. Because it shows her at the end with her red eyes, and that's a cliffhanger. Is yeah. it in this one where yeah. they, they announce they the, the imprint, or is it? I, well, it doesn't actually like specify, but no, like, no, you, know, but you, you, get the like point. you see like his visions of him imprinting. No, 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 no. This is but, no, no. They definitely do. No, they do. Out, they, I they remember the, the other vampires no, have to leave because. Or the werewolves. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I but, remember but now. You figure because the other werewolves come up and he says something to them, right? Yeah, yeah like I, you, you, we, he imprinted her, and that's the golden no, rule or something. Yeah. It's like the golden rule, like you can't. That's their number one rule about like the imprints or whatever. Like yeah, because there's the scene where Edward, I think he reads um his mind. That's how it gets outed. Mm -hmm. So anyway. I'm pretty um, sure that's what happens. Yeah. This movie so convoluted to set that up too. Yeah, this movie I, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you two give it? One and a half. One and a half. Yeah, I'm right with you. One and a half. Damn. One and a half plus two and a half. When, when, when I watched the first I three, three, I was like two point five. Four and a half a... total. Oh my god, that's so bad. It makes the Hall of Pain with four four people's votes. <laughs> that happens sometimes. When I watched the first three, I was like, you know what, like. This isn't as bad as people make it out to be. And I would watch this these again. Like, not anytime soon, but if, like, I had a girlfriend or something and she liked them and wanted to watch them, I wouldn't be against it. Um, but after this one, and honestly, the next one, I know you guys are a little higher on it, I just think this series is fucking pointless. Because yeah. the, the, oh, the, you the have trilogy, no... yep. as a trilogy, it's okay. But when you combine, like, the, by the end, I'm like, what was the point of any of this? JP, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of feel like you're what? misleading. I am intentionally usually. <laughs> <laughs> I sandbag a lot. Like I'll say, <clears throat> ask them. Don't I say shit that I don't, that, and then I'll not feel that way on the show. Like, this is I this just, is what happens when you're on troll. a strictly burrito well, diet. I mean, if you listen to you talk about Twilight on his and hers, you seem like you're kind of into it. No. What, what on on his and hers? I sounded like I was into it. Yeah, you said you. Well, it's because he was showing wanted... off to his girlfriend on there. Well, no, <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, I was like making fun of myself for like caring about Jacob and Edward and uh, Bella. Yeah, but you seem like you were like dive deep, like balls deep in these films at the point in time of when you recorded his and hers. All right. Well, I think and I now you're giving the them such three. a low rating. No, I gave it a six, a six, and a and a four or four and a half. <clears throat> and, and then a one point five. Which yeah, because I, it's but I didn't... because it's the film that you're talking about. But however, I think you enjoy these films more than what you're letting on. I enjoy I I enjoyed like the first three, like I just said a second ago. I was like, these aren't so bad. I think that I, you know, would watch them again. And then I watched the fourth one and I changed my mind. Okay, we'll go with that, JP. All right. With that said, that was the Twilight Saga <laughs> Breaking Dawn Part mm. After eighteen years of being utterly ordinary, I finally felt I could shine. I was born to be a vampire. It's so beautiful. We're in the same temperature now. I didn't expect you to seem so... You? All right, so moving along here into the Twilight Zaga, Saga. Breaking Saga. Dawn Part Dux. Synopsis. Also directed by Pil Bill Condon. I can't even fucking talk anymore, man. I'm just... My brain is broken. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm broke. My brain's broken. I, I'm Twilight completely broke. broke moods. I also need to eat. I, I'm very mal malnourished. Yeah, I can't even talk. I can't. I just can't talk right now. All right. So uh, after the birth of Resume, <laughs> Renan Resume, <laughs> that name is just Did so. 
<laughs> Renezame. Renezame. slash Nessie or Nezzy, which uh, Jacob calls her, nicknamed her. The Collins gather other vampire clans in order to protect the child from a false allegation that puts the family in front of the Volturi. Yeah. You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness monster? Is that their attempt at like? I thought, I thought that stuff was kind of funny, but that was so corny. It was just a. It was. It just came off so bad, though, man. And then Kristen Stewart yelling at him and angrily like, "Ah, you're so bad!" He's freaking out, and I'm like, "Dude, you're the most selfish human being in the world. This guy saved your life so many fucking times. Shut the fuck up and shut up." Yeah, please. it's hard to believe that this movie almost made a billion dollars. This movie, this movie almost made a billion dollars. She made a horrible human being. She makes a worse a vampire. billion. Yeah. Didn't know it uh, did. Oh yeah, box hundred. It's it's in the eight hundreds. Yeah. I mean, eight hundred ninety nine million. The budget was one thirty six. Up in two. Yeah, and so we're talking big. big. Like the budget <clears throat> kept expanding on these, and the movies kept getting shittier. It's fucking bizarre. No, Dude. they did not get <clears throat> shittier. I mean, some All right, of them. So like, okay, so one what? and two are bad. Three is okay. Four is the worst, and five four, ruins five. everything yeah. in the last two minutes. I disagree. Absolutely low. Are you talking with... about the dream? Oh, it's so fucking oh, stupid. I it's so PG. Completely. It's so it's, it's such a cop out. And you know how I feel about it, this it, type the of whole bo- movie. The whole movie was I told you this series wants its cake and it wants to eat it too. Yeah, it's just it's the such whole movie a doesn't want to pay the price for anything it does. Dude, I was starting to feel and bad when the wolves start dying in the scene and shit. I'm like, on the show, the finale of this is amazing. I'm sorry, I, I no. know that you guys are gonna disagree. <laughs> it's but not. I fucking love it. It's not amazing it's because they cop until out. they make it a, a little sequence. And, and you know what? It didn't even bother me so much. Like, I know a lot of people are getting super upset about it, but uh, I can't I stand don't, it. I didn't care that much because see, I the, wasn't that invested in the first place. See, so I, I got was, to watch I the was action, starting to feel bad for the CG wolves, believe it or not. I'm like, the uh, wolves no, are the fighting with the vampires and they're starting to the get they're film. starting to get copped out. And I was like, this is pretty. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're all good. We're all fucking good. What, what, what's the point of that? There is no point. It's it's just sequels. because they can't you you can't do that. You can't kill off that many main characters in one scene and that you just it, not in the, like, if this it. was a rated rated R series, it would be totally different, but this is applying to a different crowd, a younger generation, younger people and stuff. You just you can't leave them with all their favorite characters demising in one fucking scene. It's just No. I'm but serious. Really, on I a critical level, how can you justify that? It, but this can't. What's that? Why does Bob Newhart get to get away with it, but this film can't? I don't understand the reference. Bob Newhart was a show. Where it was all a dream at the end, right? Yes. Yeah, Bob Newhart was funny. Oh, well, actually. I'm sure people hated that too. So I'm just saying, um, like, like what the no, fuck just, are they? <laughs> Lacey, like, ju- do you agree with me, JP? How that critically, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's how like... critically you can say that that is a good decision. Oh my god! It's not just a horrible slap because, in the face because it takes your it takes you as a viewer and these characters, some of them completely just get obliterated. But they don't. And no, and that's the best part about it. Well, no, no like, that, that that's a cop out though. It, it's literally no, they, they want they, the they cake and eat it had, too. You had these emotions. Let's these say you're movies. invested in this series, right? You're invested that's, in these characters. You care about them. They just put you through this emotional toll of watching your favorites and these important people that you spent right. five years with dying, and then they're like, and then, and then they're like, have, actually, well, psych, get in. It's literally a psych moment. It's literally Obviously, a psych moment. I've read the book, so I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen too, and that's why I probably took it better than you guys did. Oh, I see, I, I actually spoiled actually it for it me. Was I was trying to give him too much credit at that point. I <laughs> thought like the second, um, uh, what's her face, does the big fucking up drop kick shit. on here. I was like, oh, it's fucking on here, man. It's on. And then shit starts going down. Like people are fucking dropping left and right. Wolves are dying. I'm like, this is crazy. And then. I don't know. I just kind of got invested and I was like, oh, finally, they're finally going to do something with this franchise. Like nothing has happened at all throughout this whole thing. And it comes down to basically this battle Mm -hmm. over, you know, a child, which they think is, you know, going to, you know, that they thought that they had turned because you can't turn. The threat to. Yeah. That's actually a cool plot point is that you can't turn a child thing. I like that. Yeah. I do like. And they do explain that, too. Yeah. Guys, this movie guy. is actually really good. I'm <laughs> very curious to why you guys think it's bad. But the whole the okay, well, let me I'm say a positive. 
thing right here. The main bad guy is actually really fun in this, and he's super cheesy, and he's chewing the scenery. Oh, he's been a great time. Oh, yeah. I like he's that. very funny, and he's like, oh, it's warm, it's warm. It's actually a really pretty solid <laughs> performance among these movies. Sorry, you know the thing time. I don't understand warm, about this, though? And, and again, I will I'll back up the guy who's like this, who's like, oh, thank you, when he dies finally. that part. Those two were very funny. Yeah, that guy actually were, was kind of comical. I and agree. those guys, they got to actually chew the scenery and have fun, and it was rare for them to you know what I mean? To be able to come across as like, you know, genuinely having a good performance in this movie. I don't know. That guy was chewing the scenery. He reminded me of a master of the universe villain or like a Marvel villain. He did a good job. Guys, okay. So they spent more time on the characters that they introduced in this film, no, this, into this, this the whole other films pointless. and you got to know them. Obviously it would have been in a better film. It, yeah. the, this no, this whole movie, here's the thing, regardless it what what you feel about these people, me feeling stronger about the characters would have actually made the film worse because I would have even gave more of a, a fuck about them. And then when they pull the swerve and say, pull the rug out from under you say psych, then I would have been even more mad because I'm like, okay, I care. Actually, I didn't even care about these people and I was still mad. You know what I mean? Imagine if I actually was invested. But the whole thing is, the whole thing is pointless though. The whole, like literally, obviously, the, the, the what the Jake, series is pointless. The, uh, this whole finale obviously is pointless. But I'm just saying, even the whole build up to the fucking psych moment is fucking pointless because when you when you look at the characters in real in this reality, we've got the main Volturi guy who can basically this whole thing could have been yeah. solved. You didn't need to uh, you didn't need to bring in a thousand different. Okay, we're gonna anticipate this fight and stuff like that. But basically, what could have happened here? And it's as simple as day because he basically could have just came down and read the future and found well, he out. Wouldn't. He had to have Alice to do that. No, I'm talking about the the main Volturi guy because he can read thoughts and shit, right? That's how no, he. That's no, how he... he can only he can only get their powers through them. Alice only tells the future. Yeah. Yeah, she shows him. That's oh, why. that's right. He, he can only do with her. That's right. She's like, no matter what I show you, you're still gonna want to fight. So. And until she shows him that his head gets ripped off by Bella and Edward, is when yeah, like, she oh, shows that right false there. that false yeah. premonition type thing exactly. But and, and they kind of allude to the fact that like, okay, the fight's not going to happen today, but it like, will. okay. But my point is, but my point shit. is, even like, though that's you, what I'm confused about, even well, that, no, even that, though I, it's a cop out. Like I, this whole movie doesn't have any any stakes there's no hold, stakes hold in the whole series no one's ever killed no one's ever really hurt they're only yes, people that die or at least killed I, one main they character. should have killed people <laughs> this movie should they, have had stakes there's no stakes this Lacey. movie nothing absolutely happens to bella that is negative she gets every possible thing great to her everybody gets everything they want and it's so like rose tinted it makes you want to throw up now jacob's going to protect them they're going to be together i can have my cake and eat it too. i can have jacob i can have fucking well, um, edward i can have everything i can have a kid day. but the kid is fine it's just so rose tinted. It makes you. But puke. who doesn't like a happy ending? Me. Too happy. There needs to be consequences. No, it's bullshit when you fucking do the big fucking rug pull. That, that's the worst part. That's it's the big rug. Like, that's the Lacey, fucking explain, worst. You said, "How do we not find it cool?" Well, explain to us how you actually you find know. that cool. That it was all a fucking rug pulling moment. I don't hate this as much as the other ones, though. Like, I, I like this better than a couple of them. Because well, this we one has more battle. This like, one has okay, more fun moments you because you get introduced this. to so many Are different characters not and stuff. Fully fucking invested at the time this like war sequence was going down. Right. Yeah. Like, were you guys like, not I was, like? Oh my I was God, like, okay, this is, this is cool. cool. Yeah, it's I didn't think it's cool. I was like, it's fine. We just explained laughing. it though. But just because you feel like it's cool in the moment, if something basically erases that. Then it's no longer cool. How many did the people why? hate Halloween why? 2? Because, Rob because... Zombie's Halloween 2? Remember that? People like, hate it, that scene. like, if you have a really fun time with somebody and it turns out they're like killing people on the side, and then you find out you no longer look back on that time as it was a fun time. They were going to kill me, man. They were going to kill me. Did you really just compare? <laughs> so I'm, just, I'm just to, i'm just um, saying like, just because you had fun in the moment if you find out something about it later that changes how you perceived it doesn't mean that that fun but time doesn't change film and that's effective as a film no it's, it's not, no but we're telling you it's and not effective like it. I'm it's, curious, how do you guys feel definitely. about rob zombies halloween 2 it matters how do you feel Fuck Halloween too. i love it why is that that opening scene upset you because it changes no, everything no, that happens no no 
Not at all. That's not why I dislike that film at all. Yeah, but I'm just saying a lot of people hated that. that. I wish that there had actually been a hospital scene in Rob Zombie's. Yeah, I actually hate that scene. Yeah, see, so that makes sense. And I love the movie. I love it. That's one of my favorite parts. Uh, I'd of accept that it over film. time. It took me about eight watches but, to. You know me. You said, I hate those nightmare scenes. You hear what you scenes. say, Lacey? You said, I wish there was actually a hospital scene. Uh, I wish there had been more of that. You said you wish there was one. And scene. we wish all these yeah. characters would have died. No, we I love the scene. Died. I hate the yeah, outcome of it. I but... them all to begin with. Though. No, that's not why, though. No, I, I didn't hate all of them. I, li- I told you I like the bad guys. It's just because it's meaningful. Well, yeah, it, it, it would have done something I didn't expect them to do. Actually, but, make but people pay is, for their actions for once. The, make people have repercussions. Is, Alice leads you, you know, like she's a huge part of this whole story that everybody kind of looks in the back corner. Like, I can see these visions, you know. I said that, read up from, from the first one. It. And that's what's so great about it is you don't expect it. And then when something happens and you're like, oh, well, fuck, that's. Yeah, but the that's the way it should have went down. It, it no. should it should have ended like that, man. <laughs> I mean, yes, it would have been cool, and it would have been sad, and it would have been tragic. But however, so the whole cool. there's four hours of the build up. Set up earlier. Like, there's like not the things they set up. The there's why, Lacey, why is there's like cool? three hours of build up to this, and they pulled the rug, man. It's not like we're watching a fucking ninety minute movie here, man. And you're just like, oh, whatever, man. You know, so, whatever. So after after the, the you find out that it was like not real, you were like, oh, awesome. Okay, so when Carlisle, Mike Dexter's head gets ripped the fuck off, I was like, Yeah, that was fuck. cool. I was like, yo, that's crazy. I didn't expect them no, to do that. No, no, I was like sad. I was disappointed. Like, because yeah, I, was yeah. invested. I was invested in these characters. Yeah, I like right. when people die I like in a movie. It makes yeah. me feel something. And yeah, I like they have an end. I All good characters have like, an end. This is a very... PG. It's like the Paranormal like Activity the- fa- franchise, man. It's if you're a main character, they all die. Guys. <laughs> So <laughs> after that happens, get, continue. Okay, so as a person <clears throat> that has read the Navalios. Okay, but just like, like let's put those aside for a sec, just as the movie, because we haven't read those, so we don't know the references. Okay, so so just as a movie watcher. Yeah. Okay, so I love when something. I'm thinking it's happening gets pulled out from under me. I fucking love that shit. I don't know why you guys don't love that, but well, I do. Depends. You're we saying like a twist. We like twists. And and it, it it's a huge twist. No, it's a cop out. It's, like it's a cop out. There's a difference between a plot twist and a cop out. I don't think you understand the difference between a plot twist and a it cop out. It is a plot twist, but they can be the same thing. Sometimes a plot twist can be a cop out. Well, maybe it's not a plot twist. It's just, just it's not like a twist. Was. It's not like a setup. It's just. No, I never said this not. was a twist. Yeah, I, I, I was said. Saying it I said saying it could have been a twist. The... Yeah, well. I was thinking it wasn't a twist. I just talked okay, myself. Okay, let's take this. Yeah, for no, an it's, example, it's just a straight okay, up Because cop-out. it does exist. Like, look at, look at a movie like The Devil's Rejects, right? And I put aside it. the newest one, right? But let's uh, say at the end of The Devil's Rejects, after that amazing scene with, with Freebird. The, it, it's just it flashes back and that hadn't happened yet and they turn around and go away yeah it flashes I, I and they haven't and they haven't started driving it to, are you asking me to put into context the fact that the it's ending the of thing. devil's rejects never happened and just to accept free from hell no well, no essentially he's literally it, it would be different if it happened in there's the movie. one major difference here though no, and I, I understand I, what Lacey's I saying. I understand what she's saying. I, the endings of movies like The Wild Bunch and Night of the Living Dead, if they would have changed those endings, those movies would be thrown in the trash and no one would remember because they would have fucked up everything they set up. But in this movie, this is a PG movie. This is made no, for a I different just... target audience, so therefore it's acceptable. But to us, we don't like it because that's not what we like. No. I understand I, it. I, would, I don't thing. accept it. Period. I completely no, I understand. I to clarify PG. his question. No, I will clarify what JP is saying. Basically he's saying if – you have the end of the devil's rejects. We see them driving towards the cops. They get fucking blown away. Right. We get that this whole, the, we get this whole, I, no, I, I know. Scenes. So we get this amazing, you know, if you know, the, the free bird plane and we get fucking, you know, this awesome, awesome scene. And it's so dramatic. It's like this whole five minute scene and stuff like that. And then right when you think the credits are ready to roll, it instantly flashes to them. They haven't, they haven't taken off in the vehicle yet. And then it they ends. get out. And then, and then so, it just ends. That would be fucking brutal. 
You just, okay, so it's, and that's exactly what just happened in this film. No, no, no. It's literally no, the same thing. True. It is literally the, the exact same fucking thing. The same fucking thing. There's I not a difference in the fucking world. Look aside, but I can't because I read it. There is not a difference in the fucking okay, so world between those two. Okay, so what is the about the Those examples are the, the legitimately the same. The fact that I fucking read it so I knew it was going to happen. But we're, right, but, but we're, that doesn't so change what it is. is. But, but we are reviewing the movies, not the books, though. I understand that, but... Me. I also so wait, knew it was going to happen too. I also knew it was going to happen too. And the person who walked in and was watching it, I said, "This is going to be all a dream." Um, and they're like, "No, it's not. No, it's not." And then it was, and they were just like, <laughs> so I, try I, 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 "I try to avoid working things out." But that doesn't mean it lessens the suck. Ending of the movie. I didn't know it was going to happen. I thought they were actually going to pull something cool. Fuck. When I watched the devil, why even trust? That's an amazing fucking goddamn ending. Like such an idiot I am. These movies are different than Twilight. That's why they're great. That's why they're great to me. They're nihilistic movies, nihilistic movies that are either made in that time when movies were made like that, that didn't pull punches. Like like I said, The Wild Bunch and Night of the Living Dead were those ones that kind of kick-started the crazy 70s and stuff like that, along with the other handful of movies. Devil's Rejects was kind of a throwback to the 70s. Twilight is not that. Twilight is a money-making okay, machine. Wait, let me finish. It's a money-making machine. Like They're leaving it open so they can make more that money. that kind of ending from you know, Devil's Rejects, and you can't appreciate it well, because to this whole where movie's a, you know, it this pulls whole, a wool over your eyes. These whole movies have been for money. And almost everything is, but they've been very, very obvious about it. So Even after I watched part four, knowing that and... they're, they're leaving it open for part like fucking seven, they have all these spinoffs. <laughs> I know what was, they're doing. If it was the Lion King and Simba's dad dies, and then it, and then it flashes it's true. back it's, to it's Simba pop like, sitting fluff. on a rock and being yeah. like, and it did never happen. It's the yeah, same thing. Like no matter I what you like, do, well, those are kids' Bruce movies. Willis in the Sixth Sense. It's like, pop culture you know, fluff. This dead, is what this is. That, that's you why Lion what? King is going to be a classic, and Twilight Five is not going to be. <laughs> yeah, this is just fluff. <laughs> it's fucking really fluff. I like this movie, you guys. I like it a lot, and that's fine. It's See, fine, the thing but, is, I mean, Dave is completely right here, man. No matter how you look at it, this movie was going to make a billion dollars anyways, regardless of what what the, the ending was movie. or not. But even there, you know, they just chose to, well, to do. Book. That was the book. I guess, exactly. So I they, they chose to do, you know, take the cop out kind of ending, you know, to it and stuff where even if they did end it the way it would have been better. They probably but they would have had to follow the book, right? They kind of have to follow yeah, the book. No, and if this is in the book, thing. it's cheap writing tactics. Stephen King would be like, this yeah. is bullshit. But I'm just saying, even I if they Stephen did King end did it on that note, even if they did end it on that note, which was cool, <laughs> they, sure they still could have wrote some sequels from that anyways. Right? He said she was a terrible writer. He did. He said she was a terrible writer and that um, people like uh, the people who wrote well, um, Harry Potter are actually really good writers and she was terrible. I think that's well, what she's, he said. Stephen King is a fucking G and I believe him. But his horror movie selection sucks. Okay, that? can we talk about something that was funny to me uh, and get off of the ending aspect? So did you guys find the part where uh, Jacob goes to tell the father like what he is like extremely funny? Oh, when he becomes a werewolf to him. Yeah, and when he starts taking that part was pretty good. And stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't hate this as much talking about the ending. I don't hate the ending as much as you guys because I didn't care that much. I really didn't give a fuck because I don't like this stuff anyways. Well, so if they're the gonna ruin it, I kind of expected that kind of stuff. I don't really expect much out of it. Yeah, I don't look at things like that. I don't look at things. I'm always and, looking and, for the positive in something. So like I was like, oh, they're about to make some fucking you know some gains with me, and then they just fucking just ruin that <laughs> shit hard. Right, and so when I walked away with this movie series, I was like. What the fuck was the whole point of this? Like nothing feels like yeah, it's nothing pointless. feels I like agree. it ha- nothing happened. You know what I mean? I was like so Bella and Edward are together. The cop out with the to keep Jacob around like a little fucking puppy dog because they had to they had no, to somehow she, she they got could, everything they have, she wanted. It's a fantasy. They didn't have a way to um make them just be in all three in a relationship even though they kind of want that. You know what I mean? What? They they want to give that ending so they have to do this like bullshit way where he's gonna marry the daughter which is just weird you know what i mean i used to hook up with your mom and now i'm hooking up with you i love how her fantasy was to be the most selfish person in that world (laughs) and even (laughs) sacrifice her own daughter predestined but um this movie is a fantasy movie but it's not really that it's actually a writer's fantasy it's not a you know what i mean yeah yeah. fantasy that she wrote some weird fucking 
fanfic where she it became somebody it became everybody else's fanfic too this really feels like fanfic right and and like i said i don't hate this one as much as you just because i there's a lot of people that get to have fun in it more than the other ones there's some actors that you recognize like um geez it's got the guy from ruins that was the guy from the ruins and um across the universe in it wasn't it the vampire with the blonde hair and then it's also oh, got Lee. Uh, which I, guy in I the- recognize that dude, but I couldn't place yeah. him, man. I'm pretty sure that's him. He's the guy who doesn't want to join him. And then who is the guy? Ronan the Accuser, Lee Pace, is in here as a vampire. So hmm. there's there's some uh, some recognizable faces. But like I said, um, the Russians, the Russian characters are basically like me and my friends. When we joke around and do Russian accents, that's about <laughs> equivalent to what we do. The, some of the worst acting ever and also the makeup the caked up makeup and the hair they put on them made them look like literal monsters i did not know what was happening yeah man like, especially the blonde one i was like what is wrong with him is he like muted mutated like <laughs> i don't know like it was horrible it felt like he was some sort of human mix with a rabbit from hell or some shit it looked terrible and it was just, i don't know everybody looked weird Lacey, are you all right can't hear you Lacey, did you fall asleep Lacey? I <laughs> gotta get a rating. Yeah. I think she um, fell asleep. Oh, no. No, I did not fall asleep, you little cow. <laughs> <laughs> this time. Yeah, no, it's... I mean, I'm here and I am like I said, the positive... Um, I think I you're just gonna be very surprised at my rating. I really enjoy this movie, and I really love the fact that they pulled the wool over... You know, the fact that you think that Mike Dexter is dead... And, I, I, I'm sorry? No, I was just going to say, I kind of almost just laughed when he died because his face was so <laughs> blown. Like, in the movie, like, the first movie, he's like, I can't age at all. I have to move on. And then by the fifth one, I was like, you age, buddy. You aged. <laughs> well, they all aged. Yeah, and, like, that's and, the you know, funny Edward thing about Cullen it. Edward got so much tanner as the yeah. series went on. But I actually really, this was my favorite out of all of them. And I give it an 8.5. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the the highest other rating you had was a six, mm. right? Yeah. And so I give it an Twilight point. Five is the only great one. The what? The only great one. I'd say eight point five is great, right? Yeah, eight point five is fucking almost a masterpiece. I mean, I wow. really fucking love the ending yeah. of it. Like, I feel like the built up and everything and mm-hmm. the characters they all came together and. I really love uh, the ending credits to where they give acknowledgement. That to... was cool. That was cool. Like they show every character that's been in the fucking series. I, I think that's yeah. kind of a cool thing to do. You know, and I like when they did it in Predator. Maybe, maybe right. I'm kind of, <laughs> maybe I'm kind of impartial because uh, when I got married, <laughs> I don't talk about this a lot. But uh, my first wedding dance was to the theme of this film, which was uh, Christina Perrion's um, I Have Died Every Day, you know, the ending song. So, yeah. Um, So maybe I'm a little bit sentimental or impartial. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I cried during Scrooged. I love Scrooged. No, it's bad. I cry every time. I haven't watched it in a few years. I, this is a product of its time to me. And, you know, when the first film came out in 2008, I seen it with my ex-husband. And the final film, uh, I think, came out around the time we were about to get married. I mean, we were together for like 11 years. We didn't get divorced until 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. But um, the music and everything, it's very sentimental to me. Mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people probably won't understand that, but for me it was, so. Well, the music isn't bad. No, I think the music's decent. Yeah, it's not bad music. It's not, and like, fucking terrible I, or something. I actually, like, wrote a play, and I submitted it, and it got, um, it won um, for the Spring Play Festival. <laughs> it was called uh, The Wealthy Distorted Dysfunction, and uh, this is how big Twilight was at that point in time. Uh, there was a purse grabbing scene in my play. And the girl, I, I said, you have to bring your own purse. And her purse was fucking Edward and Bella. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I mean, 
like th this franchise is very sentimental to me in that, that point in time in my life. So I don't know. I just really, I really enjoyed the climax of the film. Gotcha. All right. Um, is that Dave or me? Dave, I think. Dave. All right. Uh, you know what? Like I said, I did, although it was like, I would have preferred it to end at the thing. It, it really is not that kind of movie. It wasn't that kind of movie. We should have known better. Um, and I don't hate it. This one was better than one. It was about as good as one. Better than two. Much better than two. Much better than four. So I'm going to give it three and a half. Oh! I'm kind of... No, I, I mean, yeah. Come on. Watching a battle, even if it ends up not being there, it's still there, right? Mm. Like, you're still going to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not there. <clears throat> Although I hate, like, the ending. I hate its message and stuff like that. But, like, again... These aren't made for me. I'm trying to be a little bit more objective. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm about to bitch at JP just like I did Jeremy. No, I mean, I, okay. So, like, you said that it sounded like I like these more on, on his and hers. And I could kind of see that. I mean, I think I'd only watched the first one by the, when we recorded that. And I wasn't, you know. And, again, when I said we talked about them, it, uh, my rating dropped because I started seeing even more of the flaws and things like oh, that. Oh, no, you're just a dude. Yeah, but I, I like a lot of stuff that dudes typically don't like, too. Like Degrassi. <laughs> um, but, uh, Who so, doesn't like Degrassi? I assume I, I never watched it. Had Dave watched it, he would that were dudes. it. <laughs> I don't think so. I think what I saw some of it. I, I hate television. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, I don't think this one is the worst of them. That would be the one before this one. Uh, I think that the ending really bothered me and in fact it was not only the ending but like the overall ending of the story i was just like this is fucking dumb and dave is right it's like it's all this like have the cake and eat it too stuff which normally um i like the concept of having cake and eating it too like i think that that saying is stupid um because why the fuck would you even have cake it's a dumb saying it? but you know what it means I, yeah it exactly means. you know but like i always it, it means, like, I, love cake. I disagree with you both I, like, come on. I love well, the, the saying actually is you get to eat the cake but you still get to keep the cake to eat later yeah it's, it's not like you take the cake and you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so like, you um, still have the cake after you eat it it's i just was like so puzzled it, the, the whole thing with jacob and the daughter felt so being selfish like bella to me it felt it's so pedophile-ish. It's real gross. Well, it, I wasn't <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it, it was kind of, kind of like, you know, where you, what do they call that? What grooming? You know, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what Marilyn Manson does, right? Stuff. No, but, <laughs> but like, if you listen to <laughs> like what he Manson says, thing. he actually says it's it's not, not up to him. It's your romance. It's somebody you think that's it's up to. Tech. Hey, they're, this is basically her saying it's not up to pedophiles. What? They, no, they no. Oh. No, that's not what I just said. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yo. No, that's not what I said. No. I, know, I didn't I, say that. I didn't say you said that. that. I, I just, that I can't I, even believe I that they turned Jacob into a pedophile. It's crazy. What the fuck? But they fault. did. He you imprinted on an fault. infant. Moods. It is not his fault he's a pedophile. He was born that way. But yeah, but that, you could say that about real pedophiles, too. They were they were just born that way. It's not his fault. Well, that is what they're saying. But, but the imprinting he's is still a pedo at the end of the day, he's still a pedophile, sex, whether it's his fault or not. Right. But w the fact well, that she well, grows out at a rapid rate, so I mean, she does yeah, freak out for a reason. Like, he imprinted on my sleep. infant daughter, and I'm like, oh my god, this went real, <laughs> real sideways here. Yeah, and that's why I thought it was so funny. Only be a pedophile for seven years until she's full grown. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny because <laughs> seven like, years, yeah, like. Like, she's taking it how we're taking it. You know what I mean? Right. She's pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Oh, that's yeah, that funny, Dave. It is seven world. years like until you're fully dead. grown. So he's it only going to be a half years. a pedophile for seven years. Because you can't be a pedophile. God, for damn it, for... you stupid fuck. Also, D Dave, Edward <laughs> isn't technically a pedophile. Because he might be 100, but he's still within the... the no, he bit. stopped aging once he got turned. So he's Yeah, not but his brain no. is that of a 100-year-old. No! Oh, he's not because he didn't grow. He's yeah, still... but his brain grew. No, and and his didn't. penis is his of that grow. of a hundred ice cubes. Grow. Yes, his brain did grow. How well, did that's it could grow? That's the why he could recite. You, you age. You, your brain is mentally. But he can't age. Yes, your brain ages. You learn. That's how you age. 
I didn't mean he aged in the sense that he was getting like, Alzheimer's and shit. I'm still in this 17 year old body. I can't but, like. Pick yeah, up but he still has the mentality of an older person. No, he's that's very, ridiculous, very... Dave. What? what are you talking about? Wait, hold on. What? That's why. Wait, wait. That's why he could recite Romeo and Juliet in full because he's seen it a million times. No normal person could recite everything like that without listening. He's that. He, you know what I mean? He, he obviously is. is very educated and intelligent. Dave, he graduated. Crazy like 80 no, times. No, that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, well, come on, Lacey. That's insane. So. I mean, obviously, he probably went knowledge... to college. He probably went to a thousand different countries. He's been no, everywhere around the world. This is the most ridiculous different... thing I've ever heard on a podcast. What are you um, talking actually, about? Actually, he's 107 wisdom. years old. They're all highly intelligent. Yeah, they all have See, mad, he's mad wisdom. He's 17. He's no, not he's eating. not. He's not. Okay, his just body because is. he lived for 105 years and that makes him his age, does not mean that he is mentally, like, he's physically still, like, this is stupid. No, he is mentally 100 years old because he's gathered all that information for 100 years. This is the fucking stupidest conversation But it's true, though. I'm done, I'm done talking about this because okay. I literally don't, this makes absolutely no sense. Are you How saying are that you? vampires, if they get bit at a certain age, they stay it's that mentality and do not learn? If, I, if I'm 20 easy. years old and I stay at that age forever and I learn, I, I'm continually learning. Okay. I will learn. What is an age, right? His it's how, long, how many years you have been here. His that mentality. is what age is. Dave, Dave, let me put it to you this way. Okay. He physically stopped aging. Yes. Yes. Did he? But his brain hormones, didn't stop learning. His hormones might stay at 17 years old. But, but his, his brain didn't stop like learning. But his brain wouldn't stop learning. So he'd be very oh educated. Oh, my God. You but guys. it's true, though. He has 100 but years on anybody. Stupid. What are you talking about? It's, 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 it's just, it's just, just logical. Pedophile. Like, huh? is still 17. No. Just because not. he lived for all those years <clears throat> does not mean he's actually 105 okay. years old. No, so you're yeah, saying it, Jack, it literally, Jack it is literally Robin Williams? That, he's four years old, but he looks 40, so he's a pedophile if he has a crush on a four-year-old? Did I say that? That's what you're saying. No, that's not actually because his body is old, but his mind is young, so he's well, automatic. No, he's I, I didn't say that at all. I okay. said, hold on a minute, because <laughs> you're missing a valuable point with with age, right? Age is how many 365 days you've been here. You do realize I'm going to play actually, Aaliyah. Age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> well, but it's my, not my, actually okay. a physical. They age is not a physical state. The thing is, Edward Cullen, we don't know if the vampires, when they get bit at a certain age, if their mentality, they could be educated, but they could still have the mindset, you know what I'm saying, of a younger age, but they could be highly, they could keep learning and learning, okay, but still so have the mindset. Okay, you arguing with me then, if that's one of your points. I'm just saying, we don't know the rules of it, but they would be much more highly educated and interested in things. And there's sometimes there are 17-year-olds that are super highly intelligent. Yeah, but he's definitely... Well, he didn't want to turn Bella, for one. So but, there's but, that. But the thing is, I never really hear Colin do and, that many intelligent things in the first place. he actually didn't want to sleep with her. She wanted to sleep with him, and he denied her until the fact that they were married. No, he's but written like a 17-year-old. I do not believe Edward Colin is a pedophile. He actually no, never no, slept with her on, until she was 18. He's not hold a pedophile. On. It was a joke. Hold, no, no, hold on. That was the whole reason that I brought that up, because the age of consent in Washington or Seattle is 16. So either way, even if he's 100, he still wouldn't be a pedophile. Well, he never slept with her until she was 18 anyways. Well, but no, Dave did saying, has I never really thought of that. I was kind of joking about the Jacob thing. Well, he ne uh, Edward never slept with uh, Bella until she was 18. But it doesn't so. matter because uh, Bella actually, or he never slept with Bella until they were actually married after yeah, she And was she was 18, so right. it doesn't matter. But, but even I'm if just she saying, wasn't 18, he would have been fine. Yeah, but... It's He's also dead, so it doesn't really matter. He's not alive. <laughs> can, can, I, can I weigh in on this real quick? Sure. Uh, I, okay, I think that this, they mention in the earlier films, I think it's the second one, that they can stay in areas longer if they start them out young. Therefore, the uh, the joke about the graduation things on the wall, right? Right, yeah. Uh, so, so if they so, start in ninth grade. Okay, so okay, so they start in high school. So basically, though, they could he could probably pass, obviously, as somebody in his twenties, early twenties, or whatever. Um, but there is a point where they're in school or whatever. So that thought, even in itself, that yeah, like he's a hundred some odd years old and he's still going to school 
hanging around high school kids when I don't even think that's really necessary. You know, yeah, he shouldn't be there. Like we said, right, it's dumb it, that they even go to school. <laughs> but here's here's the div. I, I know I, I hear exactly what everybody's saying. I think that this there's a plot point in here where obviously in the movie he <laughs> he has that reaction to her where she fucking smells. And obviously that that goes to everything that you guys talked about with Bella and her fucking superpowers or whatever. So I think more than anything, that's what brought them together. That yeah, was yeah. Like the not that she obvious, was young. Yeah, right. And and but like the whole thing, yes, in my opinion, is creepy. If he's a hundred some odd years old, vampires' bodies don't age. But yes, you acquire. I mean, we've seen it on <laughs> fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Angel. That's why vampires are so suave because they've been around. So Angel's a pedophile now. That's are what you I'm saying. Kidding? Oh, well, well, well yeah. vampires are not are also <laughs> monsters. I also They're dead too. That, that, that that age, like the 17, 18, 19, I think vampires are just like, eh, around that age, like laws don't apply to me. I'm a vampire. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, it, that, it's that's, not so that, bad when I you see Jerry that that Dandridge do it, because Jerry know? Dandridge is a villain from Night Fright Night. He's yeah. preying on teenagers, but he's a villain. So you're like, yeah, I expect the villain vampire to fucking prey on kids. That's I'm wearing my do. Fright Night yeah, shirt I right now, actually. <clears throat> Dan Chase. Yeah. Uh, he said that I was going to bring up Vampire Diaries a lot. So yeah. Only about uh, twice. You, you were not present for the whole show. So how many times do you think I referenced the Vampire Diaries? I said at least five. I think we're at three, maybe? I think she yeah, only did two. That might be the third time right there. Yeah. I think it's five times. <laughs> Is that because I said that beforehand? <laughs> but no, I, I will say this though. I agree though. I agree with you because I've seen only a few episodes of that and I've seen actually other shows that have done relationships a lot fucking better. So to me, I think that this series more than anything is predicated upon a lot of nostalgia fucking chicks have for the books. And they're like, oh, I know that character. Like, we don't know anything about the cousins or whatever. Let me guess. Like, the cousins have fucking backstories and fucking love triangles between them that we don't <laughs> know about. But even referencing them in the movies is good enough for them. And I'll give them that. Like, I'm a Star Wars fan. Like, I get it. Yeah, I like, guess it's, yeah. it's not that much different from when people freak out when they see Spider-Man on the screen or something for the first right. time. Right. right. You know what you guys don't know about is Dan is a Twilight fan. I'm not a fan. I just I, no. I, I, <laughs> all these films with me. Okay. You were super disappointed. I like no I watched part I like, three without you. I like yeah, because three's the best one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. That was the old cause then I had to sit through the fucking wedding. <laughs> was that's the worst one. One. And I gotta sit through that long ass way and I'm like, isn't this the opening scene? And we're like an hour in. I'm like, we all did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. I don't know what this is. So I, I don't know. And I forgot I forgot about the whole fucking Jacob thing with the young and I and honestly that just fucked with me as you guys were talking about it. Like that's a plot point that I don't even Dude, I about. literally have in my notes I said I sat around for ten fucking hours <laughs> to find out that Jacob's a pedophile. <laughs> he's not though. that's that's what i took away from this whole it's experience it's not his fault though Lacey. he can't he, choose who he Lacey, is we himself. know that you we know where you stand on pedophilia that it's not actually their fault we already understand we know we know it's a psychological we know that it's not their fault to you we but they still must be boiled down and made into dog food it's just right, the way so have you given your rating on this last fucking no call? i have um the last one is uh, I haven't really thought about it. Um, four? You, I haven't four. really thought about it. What you been talking about? Three hours. Hours. Goddamn time at this point, JP. I, I'll give it a four, four and a half somewhere. I, I'll go four. All right. Okay. This one is definitely not as bad as part one, but man, I tell you, the conclusion is pretty off-putting. <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> I'm I'm coming up, man. Two and a half out of ten on this one. <laughs> That didn't make the whole thing. So, we only so have one Hall of One Hall of Is Dan allowed to rate this? Yeah, I'm sure if he wants to. I don't, I don't even remember this shit. <laughs> rate it anyways, Dan. This movie, I, I think the last one, I, I just remember being like, yeah, this series definitely fucking sucks. Like, some are better than others. I do remember liking 
the last one more than others, but that's still not saying much. The, my, my favorite is the third one just because of that battle scene. So what do you rate the third one? Uh, uh, out of what, 10? Yeah. Fuck this, um, I'm dropping it two out of 10. <laughs> uh, I'd probably give it maybe a five. The third six. one? Yeah. Dan, Dan's okay. under me. The last one. The last one, I barely remember, but since you guys brought up that pedophile point, whatever I had, whatever score that I would rate it, it's downgraded. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. No, How does it, this does not make, it doesn't make the Hall of Pain? You rated every film in the series like six or under, and then and then all of a sudden the last one is so much better than the other ones that you're at like an eight and a half, you're giving out shit. <laughs> that's like this, that's like, I'm rating uh, Friday the 13th Part 7 a 4. Then I'm getting the Jason <laughs> Takes Manhattan's an 8.5. <laughs> no, it's not that bad at all. I'm just kidding. And... I think that this movie's better than Jason Takes Manhattan. What? What? It's You're about the same. high is shit right now. I hate Jason Takes Manhattan. I hate you. <laughs> all right. I all right. would take any Friday film over any of these any Dude, fucking okay. day. Horror Here's what I, you, give me your horror Even card. Jason 9 and 10, and you know how much I I'm love those kidding. ones. Dude. I would look at the runtime, and I would pick the shortest runtime when it comes to stuff like that. I Actually, just off the top of my head, Jason Did, did this thing like... seriously miss the Hall of Pain by half a point? <laughs> I gave it a right. point. Dan, uh, are you counting Dan's rating? <laughs> Dude, I don't fucking know. What did, you, what did you give wait, it, Dave? Wait, wait. Three or three and a half? Three and a half. Ah, oh, fuck yeah! Because five then... and a half. And what what did, did I give it? Four. Four. And a half. So that that's and like I an even it ten. Five. You don't count. So I, I'm I'm officially gonna it. drop my rating to a fucking two. I, I, honestly, my my whole you have thing, to you have to watch the movie to rate. I I, well, I talk no, no, I talk it's, myself it's not down. That though, I just think that I I am one for watching these movies and kind of. Um, I like what you guys do. Like you explain the good parts and the bad parts, but it's always been based on like the crazy amounts of hate that it gets. And yeah. and for me, it's like I think there's a lot of fucking just straight schwill out there, just garbage. <laughs> and and this I would take over a lot of that. That's not saying much. Like I would still prefer to fucking take a nap over this shit, but still. <laughs> yeah. No, you're a liar. You're I want to like, take a I nap, I wish baby. I was at home watching Twilight. Like, no, dude, I want to come Lacey out. Lacey is, is like obsessed with trying to make dudes you're like a liar and a fraud. You're a liar and a fraud. I want to eat a nap. You're a liar and a fraud. I like it. Okay. You're a liar and a fraud. And I want some you're chocolate milk. You're a liar and a fraud. And I want some okay, chocolate milk. Okay, I think that I'm taking a nap aside. Wait, I wish I was watching Twilight with you. What'd you give it, JP? Four? Four. Four and a half. Four. So four, three and a half, and a seven and a half plus moods two and a half, two, which no, you just eight point I, I'm dropping it to a two because I, yeah, I, I can't do the two and a half. That it's makes it high. a nine and a half. It's in the Hall of Pain. Yeah, nine yeah. and a half. I realized I was yeah. way too high. That was crazy. Nine three and, and a half? half, seven and a half, eight, nine and a half. Okay, it makes it. All right, that's cool. <laughs> this is yeah, bullshit. but this is this is at least more than half a star better than part five moods. I mean part four. Like. Mm -mm. Okay, I feel like mm -mm. there's a fight scene, like even if it didn't happen. There's a fight scene. Mm -mm. I agree that it's at least a half a star better. Than hey, you know it how, is. I know gave it half a star better. I, I, you guys are pet one and a half owners, to right? two. If you have dogs and like when you take them out and you have to pick up their poop and you're like, oh, that's a good poop or whatever. That's kind of like pick it these up. movies are. Yeah. It's like it's a it's a good poop. Uh, I throw it in the neighbor's yard. Wait, do you really go right. pick up the poop? That sucks. Dude, that's law oh, here, man. That. You get big fines I for just that. kick it in the sewer drain. Wait, you pick up your dog's poop, too? No, oh, I don't I have don't. a dog. I Dude, don't. you I have to. Say, it's law. Know. Like, there's huge fines for it, man. You get... In your, yeah, but I'm saying, like, I'm not saying, like, out in public. I'm just saying outside. Like, in my backyard? Well, I yeah, guess most you guys clean don't... Up the dog I, shit, so when they mow the lawn, they don't step in it, JP. I guess you guys don't live, like, in the place that I kind of do. So no, like, I have a fenced yeah. yard, so, I mean, we do walk the dogs, but take them to the dog park. like... Neighbors get mad when you don't mow the lawn here. Yeah, it's a bylaw here. You have to. Well, honestly, I had a lot of fun not only I... watching these films, but thinking about you guys watching these films as well. well that was the funnest part for me, too. Whenever <laughs> me and Dave were done, and I, I was laughing, thinking right, about who's watching them at like four in the morning, because I would constantly refresh his <laughs> letterbox page to see if he watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a fucking Friday dude, flash sale or something. <laughs> dude, five movies, not one of them over a five for me. That's crazy. Hey, hey. Uh, I want to call out Jeremy here. 
Jeremy, we made the deal that I would watch a paranormal activity movie and you would watch a um, Twilight and we would do it until that we were done with the series. Yep. Right. And you have more Twi- you have more paranormal activity. Yeah, but they're not going to be he nearly more as time. bad as Twilight. He has more time though. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch all the seven, paranormal Jeremy activity. The movies. Do I have to watch the Tokyo movie? Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah, watch that one. That, definitely watch Why? that one. It's terrible. I don't want to watch it. Yeah, it's it bad. Was it bad. is bad. It's well, the worst I one. I mean, if I had to watch it, you have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, but Jeremy didn't have to watch the fucking Twilight movies, and he was he was all crazy about him. He's like, it's going to be so great. I love it. Well, I, I don't think I it was that. I didn't fall asleep great. on this episode. No. All right. I actually don't even think it was that funny, which is normally what you hope out of bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we, we talked about it a lot longer than we should have. <laughs> I did not expect this to happen, man. This is like four right, and a half hours. So at the end of the day, are we team Edward or are we team Jacob? Moods. Well, I got to go with fucking Edward now that Jacob's a pedophile. That's not fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, but Edward's a pedophile too. Right? No, he's in, not a, a in a different They're sense. What you guys no didn't know, hey, it's Edward's okay. That town was actually, they, they went to uh, pedophile high. Everybody <laughs> in that school is a pedophile. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of creepy, right. creepy old men. All right, I'm out. Dave, hold on. I, I honestly wanted to pick Jacob, but then that whole imprint thing makes me not want to pick Jacob. Yeah, see, that's where it fucked me, too. Like, through, like, four of the movies, I was like, fuck Edward. Fuck Jacob instead. <laughs> I want to be you know what I mean? Garrett Graham or Graham Green. Garrett Graham? <laughs> you're you're looking ahead to uh, television next week. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at fucking Bud the Chud. That's what I want to be. What's the father? I love Garrett Graham, man. That guy's funny. Yeah, let's be the dad. Can we be team team dad? dad. (laughs) Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, team dad, 100%. He's my favorite character in the whole franchise. Good actor. Yeah, Yeah. and he was fun. I felt bad for him after Bella fucked him. You actually believed his, like, care and want to... Dude, thinking about this, how he's, like, the only person that you actually believe, like, the emotional, like... Concept yeah, behind and I watched him, him and 40 his... steaks at that restaurant, right? And who doesn't love that? Well, concept? Actually, who doesn't love book, diner food? The yeah, diner I eat a diner every day until I die. Plot point uh, Bella actually cooks food for Edward, and then and in the movies they go to the diner, so <clears> the <throat> diner was a movie thing. Ah, uh. so just another the, the dad was great, though. Yeah, he the was. dad's a good actor. Yeah, I was impressed. That. We yep. all like him. Yep. Well, and and not only with him too, but uh, I loved his little thing at the wedding too. He was like, "I got a gun," and like obviously, yeah, that was funny. They, they yeah, that was char- good. That was oh, charming. He, he delivered those Keelan lines good. He had good comic line. timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. No, Keelan lets it or Kellen or whatever the fuck. Kellen lets. Yeah, he had. He even was like, line. he was like at the wedding. He was just like, "Bella, I hope you got a lot of sleep because you're gonna need it." Or something. No, he's like, like you won't. He's like, you guys won't be getting any sleep anytime soon. <laughs> and it was just like, it was one of the. Sleep. It was so bad, but it was fucking hilarious. Which guy was that? I remember that, but I can't uh, think. What of is that? The, the Jack Kellen brother. <clears throat> yeah. The Jack. Oh yeah, that yeah. It's guy. it's it's a cheap yeah. joke because right. everyone's taking it as they're going to be fucking a lot, but in reality, right. she's going to be a vampire. She's going to be a like, vampire. I just, I, I just thought it was so bad that I just literally burst out laughing at home. Like, I know it was, like, intentionally bad, but, like, that just killed me. <laughs> Their mentality must stay at 17 because that, that they all act like kids. Yes, right. that's why he's not a fucking I think they're guy. just that's around. Well, that's you. how they're living Well, they got to fit life. in, like, man. I don't know, dude. I still feel like a kid. Like, I'm not joking. Like, I, I still act like a kid. Yeah, would you play that. baseball, though? Yeah. What the fuck well, do you mean? <laughs> and a hundred, like, like, I don't know. They seem like they're all excited to play baseball. Dude, hold on. Hold on. Did you just say that they seem, of course you're excited to play. When are you not excited to do something like that? Like, Moots, like, like, Moots, are you excited, excited to play baseball? You love baseball. Hey, no, JP. Absolutely. I thought it was, I thought there it was cool that they were playing baseball. Is when you get unexcited about playing? You don't get that excited. I've never seen no. any, JP, I've never seen you smile in your life like that. <laughs> <laughs> Acting no, like no, you're going to be JP. jumping around to a jumping jack. JP, say you were to go to a movie theater and they're going to hand you out a promotional <laughs> costume. Would you be excited about that? No, JP doesn't get excited. He'd be like, cool, thanks. <laughs> no, I'm I get. Too hype, like, dude, what is this shit? I get hype for the fights, bro. We get fucking mad hype. Yeah, know. exactly. We know. I used to get hype for stuff, people. and then I fucking hit like got old. I'm like, yeah. I gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, dude, let's fucking kill this shit. Yeah, man. All, <laughs> All right, right. y'all fuckers down, done. Dudes. All right, man, uh-huh. that is the Twilight franchise. We are the fuck <laughs> out of here. I'm so happy Jeremy's not here to do his ridiculous outro that no one ever listens to, so... You call me a biatch. He's mean. He's a meanie. He's a meanie. <laughs> That's not even mean. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, well, we don't need to do the outro, so we're out of here. Bye. I think I can. I know I'm sexy. I've got the look. The tribes are cool. While I've got the move. I said chill Up and down this line Just a sexy boy I'm not a boy toy I'm just a sexy boy I'm not a boy toy I make them hot I make them shiver They're easy and weak Whenever I'm around, they see me walk. They hear me talk. I make them feel like they're all piled down. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. It's your heart.